A double pleasure's waiting for you. A double pleasure for double mint gum. A double great feeling, making you realize double mint's the one for you. Double fresh, double smooth. It was meant to be a death blow. Alright, alright, alright! If you want four more years of Donald Trump, let me hear you scream! Ding, ding, ding. And that's what we are, you know, we're conservative, with this, with it, who cares? We're the party of common sense. He's called Make America Great Again. Joe Biden doesn't know. He says, we have to stop MAGA. But he doesn't know what it means to make America great again. <laughs> ding, 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 bomb. Ding, 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 bomb. Ding, 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 bomb. Ding, 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 bomb. Okay. Ding, 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 bomb. Ding, 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 bomb. Ding, 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 bomb, bomb, I'm the MAGA king. Every day the Republican Party is becoming more unified. Vivek, please come here. For Vivek, because he's very big into her. Ding 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 bomb. Ding 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 bomb. Ding 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 bomb. Ding 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 bomb. Okay. Ding 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 bomb. Ding 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 bomb. Ding 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 bomb bomb. I'm the Mega King. You are the Mega. Just sit right back and you hear a tale, a tale, all a painful dream. That started from this just to show a poor a time she The captain by some of his friends and some with a little beer The all dance happy on the floor and Matt came aboard And Matt came aboard The weather was getting bad that night and Matt was not a fight The captain lost the steam control The ship sank and broke The ship sank and broke the fight was still to the shore of the shell shattered the stream With my back and the sky between The millionaire and his The youth of queen And a group of funny old folks in Here is on my fight They're fighting me. I, I'm not fighting Matt. And I had to tell him a million times, I'm not fighting you. You understand? Know I'm not fucking fighting you. Not at all. Like that. And he wouldn't listen. He keeps doing it. I just well, want you're peace. Asking me these I just want peace. How hard is it to just like, sit well, in a... Excuse me of fighting. How hard is it? Like you're fighting Anna, all the time. Fucking starts with me. So He's a power dude that's that's fucking punching this chick. Just off of the book alone, you can assume he has some kind of enhanced strength and like flight. For show, sure. there's there's artwork of him out there, like dude. He probably flight. has power. Hello, he's stalking. He's stalking. He stuck did, did I don't know this nigga. You went to try to go whoop someone's ass and just because you lost the fight didn't mean you attempted to get in the fight. So he does have superpowers? Nonetheless. 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 Absolutely not. We all good over here, homie. So if someone sees something and they go, this seems like a scam or fraud, and they contact a charity, that's something they can do? 
Yeah, they can do that. For sure. Are people allowed to investigate a perceived fraud? You, 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 you. What did I, what it is, what it is that I am saying is that I, we gave them as a company, we gave them money, right? Hello. You, 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 you. I don't know this nigga. I was delivering a book to the charity $17. It was not just $17, and I wish you would, people would say that. That was not the average cost of the book. What was the average cost? The average cost, I think, came out to some closer to like 13 or so dollars. Did you solicit a book, a charitable donation for a book for $17, and the actual cost was $13? That's not what it is that I said. I'm saying that that's, that's what you said. Oh, it's the incredibly stupid woman. He's stalking. He's stalking. He's stalking. I don't know this nigga. Nonetheless. 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 Absolutely not. It doesn't even fucking matter. You know why, Nick? Because we gave them money. Don't show up at people's businesses, man. What you know He is going to get aired. Imagine. And yeah, we would be in the right in fucking Texas if we did. You marvel. Can bring you to the end of your life And you should know by my smile And I look in my eyes That you're about to be massively forced To give up Chicken attack Chicken attack But you are back to fall in face to drink Say my look calm Let's pass them to your mom Chicken ass So chicken go oh, 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 oh. So chicken go oh, 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 oh. Now gonna fly With the power of nature, you're never alone, and you can't let it belong on a mark. Every piece, every tree, follow me to the end, and you're about to be massive, please. Chicken attack. Chicken attack Watch your back to fall in face to black Say my love come, let's pass them Come on, chicken ass Watch chicken go Watch chicken go Watch chicken go Now on the fly You on the fly You're young and you're hungry Perhaps your own money I give to this chicken today it's X for your dinner, it's X for next winter, you won't have to steal a beer. Go chicken go! this back up over here. I took down the uh, poster. It needs to be ironed though because I folded it nicely. I put it away 
Uh, I really like it, though. I miss it. I came across it, and uh, whoever made that, I can't remember if one of you was the individual who made me that beautiful flag and sent it into my post office box. Thank you so much. It says, hop free or die. It's got a cyber frog face on it. Uh, Mike is low. Let me double check this here real quick. Why get into it when uh, default? Default. That's right. Oh, you know what it is? Oh, hold on a second here. I can already tell. I'm getting better at this, guys. I'm not entirely retarded. Uh, there we go. That should do it. <clears throat> Hi. Hi there. What does it say on top? I think it says, don't step on me. I think that's what it says. Um, but I'm not really sure. All right. Hey, everybody. It's me, Ethan Van Skyver, a 31-year veteran of the comic book industry world's most charming, disarming, elegant, eloquent, yeah, humble man, great big spender's fan. This is Trashcast on Thursday, Trashcast number 36. Got a bunch of stuff to go through, tons of stuff, and it's a variety. I got some people going, why go in on Eric July all the time? It's like, that's what people are talking about. I mean, you know, I really want to talk about all of the kind of um, fake culture warriors in our space. Uh, Eric July, of course, and I have had a personal problem. Well, he's had a problem with me. I haven't had a beef with him. It's him. It's all one way. Uh, that's what he always says. You know, whenever anybody's, uh, he's in an argument with anybody, it's that, no, no, no. He's got a problem with me, uh, which is incredible. Uh, I, uh, I feel I'm going to start saying that too. I don't have a problem with anybody. They all have a problem with me. And actually in my case, I think it's, that's actually closer to the truth. <laughs> uh, but, uh, in, in any case, uh, yeah, I want to switch it up a little bit. It doesn't all have to do with Eric July. It's all of these people. Uh, it's astonishing uh, you know, right before I came on the air, somebody sent me over this thing. Matt Walsh wants to talk about Gamergate, you know? Uh, I am not a Gamergater. I was, I remember Gamergate happening when I was working in comics, and, uh, everybody acted like it was, uh, the Fourth Reich over there. I mean, I, I was just like, what is this? I don't understand why, Gamergators, what is that, Mark Wade? Like, what are you afraid of? Uh, he really hated that. Everybody did. Everybody hated Gamergate in the comic book industry. Uh, and I never really bothered to get to know what it was until Comicsgate came around. And then it kind of became clear what Gamergate was. Cody S. says, I, I still don't understand Gamergate. Um, it was pretty complicated. Every time I try to talk about Gamergate, though, some Gamergaters say, you don't know what, you're, what it was. And uh, I think I do. Like, here's my understanding. Uh, my understanding is that, um, and it happened on a bunch of different fronts, you know, a bunch of different fronts with Gamergate. I, I think there are three women uh, at the top of it. Uh, you got Brianna Wu, who is not a woman, who is a man, dressed like a woman. Uh, you've got um, Zoe Quinn, okay, who is super, Zoe Quinn. Zoe Quinn is who all of this kind of, I think, centered around, really. She's at the top of the pyramid. Uh, she... Uh, made a terrible video game called Depression Quest. You guys know this. I mean, if you play video games, there are places you can go to play amateur video games. Like, people are programming all the time and making these video games. Listen to my boomer speak. I pol I know, you're going to call me boomer. Anyway, um, she created something called Depression Quest, which was essentially like a cheap choose-your-own-adventure style game. From what I understand, you know, it was entirely text-based, and it would be like, you get up in the morning... And you think about putting a shotgun in your mouth. Do you pull the trigger? Or do you go have breakfast? A, if you pull the trigger. B, if you go have breakfast. And it's a simulator. It's a depression simulator. Shit. Just utter shit. That no, who, who would want to play that? Anyway, the game was getting rave reviews. And all the comics, uh, comics gaming, uh, video game media. Okay? Getting all these great reviews. Like this was like the greatest thing in the world. And for people who actually worked hard and made decent games, i.e. men, guys in the uh, field, uh, you know, they didn't understand why she was getting such favorable coverage. And then her boyfriend came out, Zoe Quinn's boyfriend came out uh, with a scathing like letter uh, that basically des described the fact that his girlfriend, Zoe Quinn, had fucked every single person who gave her a good review. She was sleeping with all of the, the video game uh, journalists. And this outraged a lot of people because they weren't getting fair treatment. Obviously, you could fuck your way into a good review in the video game space. It was completely corrupt. 
Uh, and then on top of that, you got Anita Sarkeesian who comes forward and starts writing all these treaties about uh, how, uh, you know, uh, uh, Donkey Kong is racist or not racist, but, uh, you know, misogynist because, you know, all these tropes about women in gaming, like, oh, you got to rescue a woman and she's the prize. She wanted to make all these changes. Um, and it was gay. And a lot of people, uh, it got, it became, as these culture war things become, vicious. And it became dangerous. And a lot of people were deplatformed over it, called bigot, racist, debanked over it. A lot of people rose to uh, prominence uh, on YouTube. Okay, YouTube, why does my nose itch all the time when I start? Only when I go on camera. Um, a lot of people rose to prominence uh, through, through Gamergate. So um, it went away. <laughs> because it devolved into uh, people will tell you they have theories about why Gamergate went away, but it just kind of lapsed in relevance. It's unclear to me who won. You'd have to, I think either side probably says that they won Gamergate. Although people like Brianna Wu, that was actually an episode of like Law and Order based on Gamergate, in which like Brianna, the Brianna Wu character was claiming the Gamergaters were trying to kill her. I walked out of my walked out of my building and there was a red dot on my chest and on my head. God, there were snipers. There were Gamergate snipers trying to take me out. It was that gay. It was super gay. But uh, anyway, that's Gamergate. It's over with. But I think it's going to come back because of uh, Sweet Baby Incorporated, Sweet Baby Inc. Uh, and uh, that's gaining a lot of prominence. A lot of people are talking about that. Uh, so we'll see uh, what happens there. But Matt Walsh, who talks about, uh, you know, this stuff. I mean, Matt Walsh is talking about the culture, but the broader culture, not just pop culture. He's interested in pop culture, too. Uh, he came out with a video talking about how, in his opinion, the video game industry is completely corrupt. And uh, I'll watch, we'll, we'll watch the video. Uh, but the, uh, the whole video game industry is corrupt. And he feels like uh, parents just shouldn't let their kids play video games at all. And his commentary... And I haven't watched the whole thing. I just watched a one-minute clip that was pulled outwards by Jeremy from Geeks and Gamers. And Jeremy threw like a shit fit. Like, you don't have the right to talk about this. You don't even like gaming. It's as though nobody else was ever talking about this, right? You know, we've been doing this for years. Who the fuck are you? We're not going to let you into our little space here. And uh, it's retarded, so uh, I'll show you that. It, it is really, really weird. I, I, I can't imagine trying to uh, gatekeep social commenters from talking about anything. Like, if they want to, if Matt Walsh wants to show up and talk about comic books, we're not going to come, we're not going to show up and go, you can't talk about this. This is our subject. You're not allowed to talk about this. Anybody's allowed to talk about anything. But I think that this whole thing is their grift. And what if. Imagine being so threatened like Matt Walsh is going to come on board and suddenly become like the next Geeks and Gamers. No, he's just passing through. He's got other things to talk about. Matt Walsh made a very invaluable movie called uh, What is a Woman, uh, which, in my opinion, uh, reached a lot of normies, a lot of conservative normies, about the gender movement. Um, it was really fun to watch him walk around and just ask people, like, what is a woman? And everybody's terrified to answer that question. That's where we are right now. Uh, so uh, anyway, Matt Walsh can talk about whatever he wants to. I'm going to look at his video. We'll talk about that. We'll also talk about the reaction of people like Jeremy Griggs. Heel versus Babyface. Also on the docket tonight, we're going to EFAP. Um, somebody asked me to EFAP Critical Drinker and Neurotic on the Piers Morgan show uh, about the Oscars. They said that my commentary might be interesting uh, on that. I, uh, I looked at it real quick. I was like, oh, what does this look like? I don't have time to watch these videos. So I saw it and I went, what does this look like? And I clicked it and watched about 15 seconds of it. Uh, something about like the two of them both answered that they, they like the classics, Marilyn Monroe. I think they meant like what Hollywood actress would you want to fuck? I don't know. But uh, the two of them answered Marilyn Monroe. I went, okay, that's enough of this. And I turned it off. But we'll watch the whole thing tonight. Bunch of other stuff, some fan reactions to the Yaira trailer, which still... I mean, they took it down. The, the Ripaverse Twitter appears to have removed it. Or, or, like, I thought people genuinely, like, I, you know, I, I, I always kind of think that, like, people disagree with me. Uh, and I, I'm still going to say what I want to say anyway, even though I think people, I think it seems like I'm getting a lot of heat for this stuff. 
Uh, and, uh, I, you know, part of me wants to just go, all right, guys, I don't have to do this. But then like the other part of me is just like, no, but I'm, I'm right. <laughs> so I want to keep like, maybe I should just keep talking about this stuff anyway. Uh, but, um, I think other, I don't want to hurt any fans feelings. That's the one thing that's kind of like making me sad is there are a lot of like, um, fans that are just like, Ethan, you've really fallen off. This is just terrible what you're doing. It's like, no, I draw better than ever. Um, you should see, uh, how a uh, dark harvest looks rainbow. The brute looks amazing. The comics that we're doing right now, you feel sad because I understand you feel sad because I'm saying mean things about Eric July and, uh, you know, um, heel versus baby face and these YouTubers that you really love. And I mean, part of me, like the mean part of me will just laugh at that. But I mean, the, the, the part of me that's paternal and a little bit, uh, like I've got kids and everything. I understand hurt feelings. I just like, I feel bad about it. I don't want to hurt the feelings of the fans at all. But on the other hand, um, you know, being a father type, being a, an actual father, uh, someone's got to tell these kids the truth. I, I got to do it. It's me. Uh, but this is interesting. Amoral, uh, fat 40 ounce, uh, who is always in the chat. Hello to you. Uh, says, uh, this used to be, this is Ripoverse right here. Um, and they took down the, uh, trailer by the way, uh, Mr. H reached out to me and said the doc, uh, director X wants to come on the show. <laughs> that's what that was. In case you saw a little message, there's a director X. I said, that's great. I like talking to him the first time. Uh, so, uh, anyway, they took down, why would they take down the trailer? Can I just ask guys, you can't bend that easily. And certainly like taking down the trailer from the, the rip comics, as you can see on the other side here, rip comics, Twitter. Uh, that is, that is not good. That is not a good sign. You need to leave that up. And if other people laugh at it, you've got to pretend you don't hear them. Right? I mean, wh why would they take it down? It's crazy. Uh, all right, hold on. Let me, <laughs> they actually removed it. Uh, they had to hide it from bullies like Ethan. That's the feeling that I get F in the chat. That is a nice uh, avatar, by the way. Really cool. Uh, all right, hold on. Let me read your super chats uh, to get started with the show. Thanks for sending them. I appreciate it. Of course, one of the things that people say is, uh, Ethan's doing this for the money. And that's true too. Um, this is all like all the money that comes in from super people need to understand another thing. I'm seeing people go, Oh, Ethan's broke. What the fuck are you talking about? Like I'm, I'm, I am run a multi-million dollar business too, guys. No, you know what it is? This money all goes into my pocket. <laughs> that's why I do YouTube. I do YouTube because that's the business's money. I'm not allowed to touch it. This is the money that I get to spend. So uh, that's why I do YouTube, guys. Uh, Leon K says, it's literally pie day. We call on me, pie man. Thank you. I know, I, I did see everybody telling me about pies. And uh, either why are you... I don't know, man. There are all kinds of conspiracy theories. I'm just like, oh, guys, every, settle down. I, I know, I'm I feel like I'm causing chaos. I understand that people are crazy. Uh, or people are upset. Like I, I, like I just started the show saying, I'm sorry that I'm causing chaos. I'm sorry. But when you speak the truth boldly, it sometimes it causes chaos. There's nothing weird going on beyond the fact that I feel like some stuff is out of control and there's a little bit of, there's a discussion that needs to be had. And some people are not going to like the discussion, but the discussion is going to be had anyway. Uh, EVS, I've invested in PyCoin. I wish I invested in Bitcoin. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> All right, hold on a second. Black Lives or Black Lives goes, no, you aren't. You don't think I'm causing a chaos? I feel like I am. Uh, All right, hold on a second here. Let me get back to this. All right, so uh, I, I'm not eating a pie. Everybody said, are you going to eat a pie today? No, I'm not. I'm, 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 I'm a balloon right now. I'm not, I'm not eating anything. I had a little bit of um, uh, a little bit of steak for dinner tonight, but also some rice. I'm trying my back. I don't know why I'm getting so fat. I'm not eating any more than usual or any less. Uh, H is for heretic for $5 says you can fool some of the people some of the time, but it's impossible to sleep with a lobster who steals the covers. Goo goo gajoob. Uh, Diamond G says March 14th. Happy steak and BJ day, everyone. Oh, well, okay. Well, uh, there you go. Interesting. 
Uh, I did. Uh, okay. Uh, Michael Fedor Show says, Happy Pi Day, Uncle E. Have fun celebrating. Uh, Lord Tatman's Comics says, Hey, what's up for $2? Uh, <laughs> Get a Robo Shin Wound says, Cyberfrog the movie. Let's go. Oh, dude, thank you so much. Like, I'm really excited about what you're doing. I'm really loud in my own ears right now. I'm really excited about what you're doing right now. Get a Robo Shin, uh, Shin Wound. I didn't know that you were somebody who could make uh, C like CGI movies, but uh, I did see your, your trailer and I saw that you started to put something together. And I mean, look at this. <laughs> Bro, <laughs> that's fucking cool, man. That is cool. How do we get, how do we do a little bit more of that? How do we get that going? Did you guys see that? <laughs> that was great. Like, do you want me to do it again? Okay, everybody watch this time. I'll play it again. Here we go. That is cool. Like, that's pretty good. That'd be a fun style of uh, animation for Cyberfrog. But the whole thing would have to be animated if it were like that. Because it's like, it's still very cartoonish. So Heather Swain would have to be a cartoon too. She'd also have to be like a built-in model. Salamandroid would have to be a model. Uh, again, again. All right, one more time, one more time. Because it's only eight seconds. Here we go. Ready? <laughs> I like it. I'm really happy about that. Very happy about that. So yeah, I mean, tell us, uh, get a Robo Shin Woon, if we, we, if we could make, I mean, I don't know, can we make two minutes of animation? How much would that cost me? Uh, and, um, and can I help like, uh, you know, I know you're doing it just for fun, but can I get involved in it somehow so that, uh, you know, it can be used for something? Uh, it would be really cool. I, I, I thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed that. I thought that was really fun to look at. Somebody else made one too, like, um, uh, who was it that made one of Cyberfrog landing and then leaping away and a Vespa shows up or something like that. And then it, it was like the coolest rubbery kind of animation, CG, like computer generated. In it. I watched that thing on a loop. I, I didn't save it, I don't think, but I, I, cause I, I watched that thing on a loop for like 50 times, like, <laughs> like so excited about it. Uh, looks like the Geiga, uh, the Geico lizard. Yeah, a little bit. Um, let me see. 21 minute episode of animation should run 21 minutes, 130, 150 K. I don't need that much right now. I would just like two minutes, you know, but 21 minutes is that's all that would be 150,000. Uh, he says, yeah, we can talk. Yeah, let me see what you can do because I know that that model, that model isn't yours. Somebody else made that model and gave it to you. Can you find the person that made that model and then can they make a matching set? Vespis and then, you know, whatever else. Human characters. Man, it's exciting. That's not like really where I want to go, but when you see it, you can't help but go for it, right? You see that on the screen and you just go, I, I want to, I want that. Uh, Katie did channels here. It says important clip. I just sent you if you want to watch it. Hail chat. Uh, I got a lot already on my plate, but let me, let me take a look at it and see what you sent over. You sent it. Uh, okay. Hold on. Uh, who's this guy? Okay. Hold on. Something about comics. And it's only like a minute 30. All right. Let me take a look, Katie. We'll watch it right now. It's the uh, Geeks and Gamers. I think that's Drunk 3PO. God, man. And all that hate. And, like, finally yesterday we got something new. It's like, oh, okay, we got Ripperverse news. Like, something new on Twitter. Yeah. Um, so... Uh, this, is such, this, is yeah. su this is such You're a right. retard. This is just such a retarded narrative out there. Finally, uh, somebody's being critical. Like, I mean, I don't... I, I, I've, bought, I've bought so many fucking comics from from indie creators and i've never been asked to criticize any of them except for isom and when you tell me that i have to criticize something like it when i when i got cyber frog I, I i can't tell you how many times i held it up on camera going i got cyber frog guys ethan van skyber signed it i've done that a thousand fucking times nobody's ever asked me for my review of cyber frog nobody's ever asked me my review of the like uh anna's cover 
the thing, the Vampirella or whatever, uh, or Tug's book or any of the books I've supported, supported, nobody's ever asked me for my opinion. But suddenly I saw everybody's like, you got you to gotta criticize it. It's like, dude, I never respond to demands from mobs. Not going to happen. It's just not, not going to happen. In fact, in fact, I'll do the exact opposite. Um, if, if that's, you know, I'll never be forced into anything. I've never done a fucking comment. What, what is the opposite of uh, not... Wh what? All right. Anyway. No, I guess he's right. I'll do the exact opposite of not criticizing it. Wait, I'll do the exact opposite of criticizing it. Okay. This fucking channel ever. <laughs> like, I, I literally have all the new G.I. Joe comics that, I, that I'm very much enjoying. It's not like I have a full fucking breakdown for all these G.I. Joe comics that I'm reading. I don't do comic reviews. I've never done that shit. Um, so, it's retarded. So... And okay um i guess that's interesting i don't know uh yeah jeremy like uh it's i don't know if you're the guy to even uh, accuse of this thing but it's not that um uh, nobody's asking you to uh well you didn't promote cyber frog you bought it you held it up i appreciate it but i think the point that some people are making is that you actively promoted ISOM. You know, you guys all got together, and everybody did. Everybody got together and told the audience that they need to buy ISOM. And then nobody talked about it. None of us talked about it. Nobody read it. Nobody reviewed it. Nobody gave any opinions of it. It was just like, buy this piece of merch and then put it on your shelf and then we're not going to talk about it, but see, the thing about it is, is that it's a piece of artwork. It's media. And even though you don't criticize uh, comic books ordinarily, it is a comic book that you guys promoted. You actively got involved. You, you made it your own thing. Somebody like heel versus baby face now is officially a shill. You guys are, are shills. And the, the thing that you accuse John, what's his name of who's that retard that, uh, you know, works for Disney. Uh, you know, it's like he's he's always going to promote, 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 but he's never going to criticize uh, Disney because he's on the payroll. So w what I think um, people are saying to you is not that you uh, uh, need to uh, uh, do a critique video, but you have become a shill for another piece of, like another media group. You become a shill, and you become a shill without even really liking it. You know? <laughs> like, listen... If uh, David Chase wants me to become a shill for The Sopranos, I don't have to lie. Like, I'm a big fan, and I'll sit here all day long, and, uh, you know, it's like, and I'll tell you how much I like The Sopranos, and he can pay me or not pay me. It doesn't really matter. I'll criticize some of the episodes. I think that episode, Christopher Sucked, the one about Christopher Columbus Day, uh, was kind of a little bit on the nose, but... Uh, the entire, I'll, I'll talk about that all day long because that's what I truly believe. And I've seen the media and if I need to criticize it, if I need to criticize The Sopranos, I can. And I will give positive reviews for most of it because I really, truly love it. You guys are selling something and uh, it just really feels like you guys have become a shill network. Is I think that's the point of all this. You become a shill for Ripaverse without even really liking it, right? I mean, do you like it? <laughs> say that you like it. <laughs> read it. I would say read it and then say that you liked it and talk about maybe why you liked it. Not a full review. Otherwise, yeah, you've become shills just like, uh, what's the guy's name that I'm thinking of? Uh, John, uh, he does a, he's like a Disney reviewer. I think he works for Collider. Uh, Kyan Rennell says, g and versus Matt Walsh was the gayest thing ever. It was super gay. John Campia, thank you. Yeah, they, like John Campia used to be Jeremy Griggs' like arch enemy because he called John Campia a show. Somebody who actively promoted Disney seemed to be on the payroll in some way. And that didn't used to be true of the Geeks and Gamers crew, the Friday night, maybe not Geeks and Gamers. I don't know what Jeremy's doing. I don't. I think he's out in his own. But the Friday Night Tights guys... Um, and Ripoverse, they're all in bed together. They, they have a business arrangement. So they promote, they tell you to buy their, their shills just like John Campia is. And uh, I don't think any of them read this stuff. It's a business relationship. They become kind of what they, I hate that. It's such a cliche. You've become that which you hate, but they have. <laughs> I mean, they just have. 
So uh, anyway, uh, that's the whole thing. It's it, it's okay to be like uh, to promote, promote, and be happy and talk about something, but in order for you to do it effectively, you really need to actually like read it and be able to talk about it and explain what it is about it that you like. Uh, we're not talking about a full review video, and nobody's telling you that you have to review all the comics, Jeremy. Just uh, the ones that you're the ones that you and your friends are wearing the shirts. You're wearing the hats. You're on the live streams. You know what I mean? Those ones. Uh, all right, hold on. Let me get back to these. Did that make sense or was I way off base? Uh, Michael Ferraro for $20. Uh, thank you for this. Uh, says, salute trash man. Not sure if you saw my tweet. Probably wasn't clear. I received a salamandroid binder instead of a heather... F uh, salamandroid binder instead of a heather... F fucking motherfuckers. Instead of a Heather figure. Who should I contact? No complaints. Just want to ensure somebody gets their binder. Uh, yeah, call, uh, write to us at cyberfroghelp at gmail.com. A lot of fuck-ups. A lot of fuck-ups. I don't know what those guys are doing up there with their vape pens. <laughs> Meredith Jate. Gamergate was feminist using whisper networks and false allegations to take over an industry. Media covered for them because of corruption. There you go. That's a really good sum up of uh, Gamergate. G Dash for twenty dollars says so. Same as how Geeks and Gamers gave Eric trailer rave reviews. I wonder if he slept with them all. <laughs> when I saw the trailer, I thought, how much did EVS pay the Twisted Tent Twins to do that to Eric and make Trashcast money? Yeah, that trailer is something else. The more you look at it, the more there is to enjoy. Mark Collins says Geeks Gamergate got bodied. Why does Sweet Baby Inc. exist? Oh, that's a good point. Uh, Gosu says, where is Sheer Davis, our glorious reader? No, I didn't send him the link. Um, Trick Ron says, hail Frogfather, because it's Thursday. Hail Frogfather, can you get Lord Doomcock and Nina Infinity on a future show? Uh, maybe. Um, yeah, I got a couple of guests lined up. One of them is going to be, I'm hoping to get Director X in here. Uh, I'd like to talk to him. I <laughs> First, I got to watch one of his shows so I can see how bad it sucks. And I can talk to him about that because people are saying it's terrible. Um, but uh, I, it, I promise you it's better than the uh, Yaira trailer. So uh, most definitely. Uh, Dark Low Comics says, really? Next time we'll let Donkey Kong banana you. Uh, banana you. I get it. Okay. Um, uh, Barb Rogers says, why do they call it Sweet Baby? Are they pedos? Uh, G Dash says, did you see Doomcock asked to stream with you? It was your all caps comics Twitter instead of EVS. I didn't see that. Tell him to where I am. I'm at Ethan Van Skyver. Uh, Trick Ron says, can Johnny Brennan be the voice for Trick Ron moving forward? Yes. Also, please do a crowdfunder to make your Cyberfrog TV your movie. Yeah, I will. Um, yeah, I definitely will. But I mean... Yeah, I will, when I do it, I will do it. I will because I mean, one hundred and fifty, like a twenty twenty one minutes. If that is an accurate figure, twenty one minutes is like a full, like that's almost a complete episode of television. If you put commercials in there for one hundred and fifty thousand, I I can't just cut that. I mean, you know, I can't just uh, I can't pay that myself. I can't. Um, I would have to, uh, or could I? I'd crowdfund it probably and make DVDs. I think that'd be the best thing to do. Trick Ron gifted five memberships: uh, horseradish power, Night Thrasher, four control equals horseman art. Night Thrasher four control number one equals horseman art. I don't know. Uh, low watermark twenty dollars. Yes, Mister H and Director X. Yeah, both of them. I think Mister H will come on here too. I talked to Mister H once. He seemed like a nice guy. I really liked him when he went after uh, Uche. Uh, the way he handled uh, Uche, the late Uche, <laughs> was really good, man. John A. says three simple words. EVS, explain why you're able to say and do on Trashcast, especially about uh, Eric July. Skill, baby, skill. Uh, Nap, gifted 10 memberships. Thank you. Uh, Low Watermark says, yes, do it for the Super Chats, of course. Uh, James Gartner, uh, $20. Here's some because you broke. Love, love the trash. Thank you very much. Uh, Pastor Flash, PTP's drawing of Yaira, looking for a job. Uh, yeah, he did a video of himself drawing. <laughs> it's so sad, man. These guys, I think, oh, I think Narwhal did it too. I, you know, guys, 
Hold on a second here. Let me find PTP's drawing video, if he did one. Uh, Riot Press, Yaira. Riot Press, Comics and Toys. Oh, here it is. Okay. Uh, let's take a look at uh, Patrick drawing. Uh, trying his hardest to get noticed in a serious way. I mean, you know, uh, he is working for um, Ripiverse. But all he's doing is he's doing like some trading card layouts. Uh, you know, Eric, don't you under? Ugh, I should I should like totally support the idea of PTP going to work for Ripiverse. <laughs> yeah, don't you know, uh, Eric? I want to introduce you to my friend Patrick Thomas Parnell. He's a really great artist. You should definitely hire him. Here he is. So guys, you are watching Riot Press Comics and Toys. PTP here, and uh, today we are doing a little bit of a drawing. You got to uh, speed him up. Character. We're actually doing something from the Ripiverse. Um, Eric July and the Twisted Sisters have just launched Yara, and that book is kicking some major A. Uh, and it inspired me to do a piece. So I'm going to be doing a little bit of a demonstration here. Look at him wearing like a, a uh, satanic t-shirt. Uh, stick around. Uh, watch this video. <laughs> you think that's it. on accident? Give the channel a thumbs up. And then also subscribe if you're new here. Um, stick around. Watch the video. Let me know what you think. And leave a comment below. All right, guys. Uh, let's get to work. He's getting better on camera, though. You think he's reading a script? Well, I mean, all you did, we didn't get to see you draw, dude. The blue line was already there. You're tracing it. Bullshit. I love how old all of us look when we have our glasses on. You're just tracing, dude. <laughs> I like the multiple cameras. We've seen it. What is with him and noses that are like dark? Papa don't preach, I'm in trouble deep. Papa don't preach, I've been losing sleep. But I made up my mind, uh, keeping my baby. Yeah, Papa don't preach, I'm in trouble deep. Papa don't preach, I've been losing sleep. 
But I made up my mind, uh, keeping my baby. I'm gonna keep my baby. Yeah, keep my baby. Yeah. Uh, well, that was good. I don't know, Patrick. Uh, <laughs> kick Ethan. It's my show. You can't kick me. All right, hold on. Let me get back to these super. Ch <laughs> Uh, all right, hold on. Thor Rodinson, I uh, heard you guys watched a Star Taze, but I can't find the live stream. Oh, what did you think of it? I did. I watched it on the um, live stream where I had to edit it. Uh, there was some uh, stuff in there that I didn't think was uh, was going to go over too well with YouTube, so I had to go through it. Now, when I when I went through it again, I clipped that part out. I didn't talk very much about it. I just showed it because a super chat asked me to show it. What did I think of it? It was extraordinary. Uh, one guy made that on his own. It was extraordinary. I really loved it. I, I would I would love to have something like that. Moonbase One says, "Hey Ethan, if you do a Cyberfrog animation or live action video, would it be possible if you could get Vic Mignona to voice one of the characters? Uh, he's a talented voice actor, and I'm sure we'd be uh, honored to have him." Yes. Um, Val says, "Peeps want him to review Isom because it's terrible." Uh, yeah, it isn't good. Uh, and bad says, did the eBay toys not deliver to the UK, Ethan? Um, somebody else said that to me too. Do I have to click a little switch or something like that? We will deliver them if you want to pay the shipping and the taxes or whatever it is to get them in. We will deliver them from eBay to you. Um, let me go over them a little bit later and, uh, I will, uh, I'll see what I can do to make them international. Val says, e, you also effed up my order. Give me my blue froggy. <laughs> I know. I saw every every morning. I go pay attention, pay attention to what the orders are, and then the quantity of items. Because some, I think, like you had two uh, electric blue cyber frogs, and they just put one in there. I said, look to see that it says two. I want two of those. They're going so fast. I mean, it's. I understand. I work them pretty hard, but they can't be making these this many mistakes. They're just they're kids, but they're like they got to be better than that. By kids, I don't mean they're like uh, 13. I'm not using, uh, you know, uh, child labor. They're 24, 25 years old. They're kids to me, but they, uh, they're they adults and need to be making, uh, doing a better job. Suit says, Ripa's store doesn't have a direct link to Yaira. Still promoting Alpha Core, been this way throughout the entire Yaira campaign. They don't have a direct link to, what do you mean, the trailer? Enrique the Squirrel says, did you see the new Crow trailer? No, send it over. Uh, suit says, mean the Ripa store front page under current campaign. It's still alpha core. Oh, uh, Q Revere says, uh, Val, mine too. Did you get my silver PVCs trade? Um, you guys, I'm going to yell. I'm really going to yell. Uh, EFAB J and Ryan Cannell watching the trailer. Send me the link. Send me that link. It's normal. 11 are you send it to me, please? Or somebody send it to my, uh, I, that's something I definitely want to watch. Send me that link, timed up and everything. I would love to see that. Uh, well, well, well says, hi, I'm new here. Have you moved on from illustration videos and portfolio reviews, or is that stuff on another platform? Um, yeah, I've moved on. I haven't really done uh, illustration videos in six years. I, I mean, not really. Sometimes I'll do a little bit of uh, illustration now and then. Portfolio reviews, I'm doing comic book reviews. Uh, tonight, we're going to review um, John Delarose's uh, manga. I finally read a manga because uh, you guys love the manga. Uh, and so uh, I'm going to be reading and reviewing my first manga. Um, and you guys, uh, again, you guys like it. You're telling me that I should be reading it. Um, here it is. This is called A High School Girl uh, in the Crusades. Okay, so we're going to read this together. John Delarose did this. Uh, you know, he's a he's a he's a comic book uh, reviewer or a comic book writer. He didn't uh, he didn't he didn't draw this, but he did uh, he did write it. All right, let me position this a little bit better, and we will uh, we'll take a look at this. This should be good. I'm expecting this to be pretty good. It's John Delarose. All right. <clears throat> a high school girl in the Crusades. Uh, I did back this campaign. Uh, I thought uh, I thought I would do that um, because um, I like uh, John Delarose. I support John Delarose. 
Uh, here in the back, we have a typical um, drawing of a, um, a manga girl, female character. Uh, I don't know who the mangaka is here yet, but this is like typical work of a, a Japanese mangaka. Uh, in the name of God and Pope Urban uh, II, I'll punish you. And she's doing this, like, you know, with her hands. All right, here we go. Uh, oh, yeah, uh, let me make this clear, too. Uh, we got uh, Riververse Goalpost. Uh, JDA is a successful businessman in the comics industry. Vast experience, great journalist. Yeah, but I'm not talking about um, his business. I'm talking about his art. I'm talking about the his creative work. Why, why whenever I... How come whenever I want to review a comic uh, and, um, hold on, how come this happens? Like a rip reverse goalpost or somebody will show up and talk about bidness. I don't want, I'm not talking about the bidness. I don't know if he's a good businessman or not. None of my business. None of my business. I'm just talking about the comic book. All right, got it in focus. We're all good. All right, so here we have a nice shot. This is called an establishing shot. Uh, and, uh. <clears throat> yeah, and we got on guard, as you can see. Yeah. Uh, I don't have the script to this. I'd like to have the script. Nothing on this page here. I've done this too before. I've left this blank. I'm not going to do that anymore. Uh, you know. Uh, point. Raiko Fuck You Hara is the winner. So this is Raiku, uh, Raiko Fuck You Hara. That's a, I mean, that's a, you know. Great job. What are you holding? Yeah, I mean, this is the thing, like, uh, the manga art, uh, oh, I have to read it backwards? Hold on. Uh, objection. Naomi, ace attorney, dazzling juries with her passionate defenses when her real life is filled with endless cases and boring Zoom calls. Can Naomi achieve her dreams to be continued? No, it doesn't seem like it. It seems like that's the end. It seems 3D Robin seems like that's the end. So we got some. Uh, it's easy to read. I mean, you can see very clearly uh, the uh, the artwork here. Great job. What are you holding? And I don't know what she's holding either. See, this is what I mean. Like the Japanese uh, style. Like uh, I know you guys all love this, but to me, like it, it's an acquired taste. It's it's an acquired taste here. It's not necessarily for me. Like I'm gonna I'm a guy who uh, I grew up with an American comic art, so uh, this is a, a little bit. Um, it's a bean bag my grandmother gave to me when I was little. It's silly, but I use it for luck. She said it wards off demons. That's a bean bag, a magic bean bag. She's holding there. It's actually is she like tossing it in the air? Uh, here we have our first usage of 3D assets. Um, you'll notice the bicycles look uh, really well drawn, and they are. I mean. They look great. These would be very hard to draw. Very hard to draw. Like if, uh, you know, I was working with uh, a writer and they said, uh, Ethan, uh, there's a sequence here where uh, all four girls get on these kind of bicycles with baskets and they're going to ride away. I'd be like, oh, that's going to take all day to draw all those bicycles. These are 3D assets, though. Somebody else drew them uh, and you turn them around and you just place them down there. And then the figures are real, though. So you drew the... Uh, uh, yeah, um, uh, see you in class. I won the high school fencing championship. I've never been so happy in my life. It's like a religious experience. So this is a uh, JDA's pros. Whoosh. What? And here you can see, like, I think a portal has opened up and down there, there are like tents and a fire. Uh, and then, uh, she falls in. And as you can see. Uh, the title pops up, a high school girl in the Crusades. So there she is. She like landed in the desert and then this is like a camp here. Fire, some tents. A uh, story by John Delaraz, uh, or by Dachu Akamoto, um, who is, uh, I would assume a mangaka. Probably a proficient one and a well-known one. I don't know. I'm not sure because I don't know manga. I don't know this culture. I'm trying my best. I'm trying. I'm trying new things. You guys are like, oh, you're stuck. You're stuck where you are, like uh, in American comic superhero cape shit. Like, why don't you try reading some mangaka? I mean, some manga. 
Uh, that's where the, the kids all are. So I am. Here we have some knights, I think, and they have a bicycle. They have the bicycle wheel here, which appears to be drawn this time. It's not a 3D asset. Did you see the flash of light? How could I miss it, says the other knight. I'm going to be late. I'm going... I have, I have school tomorrow. Let me go. Good, that's believable dialogue from JDA. As you can see, there's a shadow cast over her. I think this would be done... Ordinarily, this would be done with Zipatone. Zipatone, back in the 80s, um, I was able to buy some Zipatone uh, myself. I used to go to uh, uh, art supply shops, and you could buy sheets of Zipatone, which were stickers of various sized uh, and spaced um, dots. You could make a gray tone. You'd have to cut it out with a razor, paste it down on the page like that. And I've used it a couple times. I think it's in some of the early Cyberfrog books. Uh, so, uh, is this a demon? Idiot. She came from the sky. She is from the Lord. Fear not, uh, fair maiden. And he takes off his mask and he's like one of these, like, again, this is the style. In Japan, like, this is the idealized man who looks like a woman. I mean, he's, he's very feminine, you know. It's weird because the women look like little girls and the men look like full-grown women in uh, manga. That's my opinion. I am here. I must have died and been resurrected in some kind of game like in Isek Isekai anime. And then this is a uh, Isekai anime here. Uh, if I'm going to level up, you'll need to take me on as a guest, she says, par like parenthetically. He says, uh, you'll have to come back to the camp and talk with the priest. He looks surprised. Uh, this is Manga. Uh, shouldn't you tell a lady your name before taking her to your tent? Apologies, I am Sir Richard of Britannia. Uh, what a hunk. Is this the Lady of the Sky? Call me Reiko. I can be use a sword, so level one monster should be no problem. The Lord is giving me a vision. As you can see, he's getting a vision here. Uh, what the... They use a lot of speed lines in Japan. Uh, a lot, of, a lot of like speed lines. So you can see that well drawn speed lines here. Like oh no, like there's a lot of stuff going on in here. A lot of speed lines. Uh, could it be? Um, what is it? It's the sandals of Saint Paul. I don't see anything. Legend has it that. Uh, the apostle wore these sandals during his missions, and they're stored in the Jerusalem church. Uh, so uh, you got to go get those uh, sandals. Anyway, uh, I did read this, and I, I I liked it. I thought it was really good. How do I look? Uh, I thought this was uh, something that... It's interesting because, you know, um, you would think in Marvel's... The way that Marvel works, they only let... Um, they segregate books like this uh, to be drawn and written by uh, the people, representatives of the audience that they're seeking, right? But uh, that's just, I mean, that's Marvel. Marvel's bullshit. Uh, this, this is clearly for little girls. And like John Delarose, who's a man, he's roughly my age. Uh, is he like, how, how old is John Delarose? He's in his 40s anyway. Uh, he drew this, I mean, he wrote this, you know, so... I think it's cool that like full grown men can uh, write material that's um, you know not for them specifically. You know, it's uh, could be for a little girl. I've said that before, and people don't like it. You know, it's like I say, I, I think manga seems to me to be like for girls, and like full grown men reading this stuff uh, is uh, sus. But um, I support JDA. I, I back his comics, you know, and I, I was just like, well, I'll read it academically here and just try to figure out what manga even is. Uh, so, uh, lead me, hunky knight, she's saying. Uh, JDA wrote that, lead me, hunky knight. Um, anyway, I guess they fight like a monster. There's a, um, look at this guy. Yeah, he's like, like a Friar Tuck kind of character here. Uh, and then we have, um, oh, and then her panties, you can see a little bit of her panties, their tentacles coming at her. 
this is a Japanese culture. Um, in Japan, and correct me if I'm wrong. Are you guys, when I'm wrong about stuff like this, uh, you uh, you guys always send me messages telling me that I was wrong. Uh, so I, I want to say, uh, if I'm wrong about this, let me know. From what I hear, uh, you're not allowed to show, if you want to show erotica, this is like hentai or something like that. If you want to show that, you can't show penises going into women. So they came up with this other great idea to create monsters from hell with enormous tentacles, like octopus tentacles. And the women, because the women would be, you know, graped, as it were, by these tentacles, because no, no woman wants tentacles. So every time there would be uh, sexual intercourse, I guess by default, it's like they're only showing grape, but that's just like a cultural difference. I saw it on, um, I saw it on La Blue Girl. Oh no, that don't want to come for the monster. I did, that's the one anime I saw. Well, I've seen, I've seen a, an example of that. So there were tentacles there. All right. Anyway, I think all's well. She gets the sandals. Not just, I don't want to spoil it. I don't want to spoil it, but you know, it ends pretty good. And then we got Naomi Ace Attorney. And a nice, nice shot here. I like if, you know, a little girl might cut this out. You know, pin it to her wall. Uh, this is uh, JDA's comic book, um, High School Girl in the Crusades. Uh, and I give it an A+. Plus. Okay, I do. I give it an A+. Plus. Uh, that's my review for today. Uh, JDA has a video. We're going to watch JDA's video. JDA's become uh, something else, man. He's got a... Uh, uh, JDA has like his own, um, message board now, not message board. I mean, he's, he's got his own, uh, website now called Fandom Pulse and, uh, Fandom Pulse, uh, is, uh, is great. I mean, it's a really good website. So he's running that now. Uh, he's got to be kind of, uh, he used to be a little bit more kind of, um, uh, acidic in his commentary, but I think he's really kind of mellowed out a little bit. Uh, his new, uh, uh, his new, uh, videos, I, I think show this kind of, he's got a new video that says, so you hate Eric July. Oh, fuck. I have a feeling like this is going to be about me. I don't, I don't hate Eric July. I don't, I mean, I, I really, I promise you, I don't, I don't have feelings like that on a day to day, on an everyday basis about Eric July. Usually when I, he does something, when I'm like reading his stuff or watching his videos, I come to hate him. I, I like over time, few minutes takes to listen to him. And I'm like, oh, I fucking hate this guy again. But I forget about it right now at this moment. I don't hate Eric Joel. I have zero feelings about him at all. Like a banger or hatred or anything. I'm just kind of like, hmm. Um, but I hope this, I don't want this video to be about me. If it is, I'm going to be suitably chastened by the author of High School Girl in the Crusades. So... Comic book tribalism has to be about the dumbest thing out there. But it's been something that's been across the entire history of the medium. If you look at the last several decades, Marvel versus DC has been something that's been so wildly hyped up that, of course, people would kill rather than read a Marvel book or rather than read a DC book. It's kind of been the way things are out there. Now it's being done in like a microcosm. This is why I don't use this chair. If you uh, the like wheels. their July book, you are dead to comics gate all of a sudden. It's ridiculous. And of what? course, people should be able to like whatever comic books they like. It is called an independent movement because we're supposed to be independent people. But a lot of people are not independent in this sort of thing. But I've got something for you guys. If you hate Eric July so much and you think his comics are so bad, uh, there are alternatives out there. And the best thing you could do is to promote and uplift something that's a lot smaller and, of course, make it even better. Uh, wouldn't that be cool? I know, of course, uh, nobody who's making those kind of complaints will do that. It's just a tribalism thing again. Uh, and so it's just about that. It's about showing your allegiance uh, on, on YouTube or whatnot. But this is the way, and this is what we're going to try to do. We're going to do something positive today. Let's check it out. Make sure to hit the like and subscribe button, everybody. I'm John Delarose. I'm a number one best-selling comic creator and a award-winning comic creator also. So I've done a lot of work here in indie comics. Never going out there to try to work for Marvel and DC. Very happy with where I'm at and just having creative freedom. And that's could, what this whole movement's supposed to be about is creative freedom, 
uh, and I'm talking about comics gate as I you know kind of coined that term. Uh, it's about creative freedom away from the wokeness that's going on in the mainstream media. It's away from the corporate culture of Satanism and things like that. And we're trying to do something different, of course. And that's what yeah. we've been building over the last several years. So if you don't know me yet, I've built uh, over 12 graphic novels. I have a whole superhero universe, science fiction universe that uh, right now is one book and it's is being uh, expanded upon and a lot more and I want to give you a couple of ideas just to like go check out just so you can see for yourself like what kind of a difference is now you're going to look at things and I'm going to say for one thing I'm really not that guy who's like the 90s was everything I think the 90s was really start the start of the downfall of the trash era of civil of our civilization uh, everything kind of got edgy at that point. Everything had to be subversive at that point. That was really the tipping point, which led to woke in one way for storytelling. The other thing that happened in the 90s is that, of course, uh, a lot of just like overly over the top uh, kind of drawing style uh, took over when it used to be a pretty nice Marvel and DC house style in the 70s and 80s, which I think are just strictly better. Now, I like to take things back even further, sometimes to the 40s and 50s and the golden age before, of course, the comics code was made in EC Comics. If you see, I've got the whole collection of EC Comics right behind me. Uh, that's the kind of stuff I love, and I love uh, Steve Ditko work. I love stuff with good morals and things like that. So I try to take things in a storytelling perspective to a different level. I actually just had somebody who was a, uh, a one of the, like, you know, I'd say the haters or detractors or whatnot, uh, bought my book, said he was going to savage it, messaged me yesterday. I said, this is actually really good. It's That's kind of what that I just 80s style, but it's, I had a lot of fun with it, and I want more. And I really appreciate it. Anybody who buys the book, uh, whether it's to savage it uh, intentionally or not, uh, thank you so much. Uh, but that's the thing. Like somebody who went in just actually thinking that they were going to have find something they don't like ended up me. loving it. it and I that. find that more often than not, just now. it's just an uphill battle getting people to check things out and see them in the first place. And that's cool. I love that 80s style. That is exactly what I'm going for. If you look at my writing, 70s, 80s, 50s, and 60s, that's kind of like where I try to write. And so if you understand from that global perspective of our culture, and if you actually look at what I'm doing from that perspective, uh, you'll see actually something pretty uh, energetic and awesome that's coming out of uh, my publication houses here. So let's check some of these out uh, right now. The first one I tell people to check out all the time is Overmind. Now, Overmind is uh, my second bestseller out of comics. And Overmind, uh, actually Overmind best, yeah. it is my bestseller by, by just single book dollar amount. Uh, but it is my second bestseller in terms of units. Um, and so this one is a science fiction epic. And I tried to do this in the style of like some of the Euro comics, uh, com like uh, Valerian. All right, uh, hold on, JD. I, 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 I want to skip past the. Uh, so this is a. Hold on, I want to skip past the uh, show part idea. of this and get back to the meat of the video. Actually, flies the blue. Oh, that's another universe one here. Out, uh, Klaus is actually. A oh, this is a. Well, and of course, yeah. expanding love okay. for this book to get funded. I, yeah, yeah, this is some that which is a little more cerebral. Wait, oh, when yes, do we get back uh, to the okay. video about Eric July? Some, you have a mission, support, uh, but you know, and everything that he's done, we learned a lot from him, legend, and Flack these days, just for really appreciate you guys being there. See what the fuck? Hold on a second. It didn't seem like there was much about Eric July in that video. It seemed like it was mostly, uh, well, I mean, I, you know, to be fair, uh, now you know more of, uh, more of his stuff. Uh, if you want to um, uh, support uh, uh, John Delarose, he is on uh, that. That's his website, John Delarose, and uh, he is the guy from uh, Fandom Pulse. Terrific, terrific writer. Uh, <laughs> hold on a second. Chuck Finley says, "Picture pages, Patrick tracing the business." It is. Barb Rogers says, uh, "I'm Yiris sworn at me. <laughs> Are you lost in eternity? Is a new member." Old Man David says, PTP's art sucks. Poo, turn it off. Uh, Alfred Bimban says, looks like shit. What does? Oh, JD is, but I think it looks good. Cage Superman says, manga and anime suck. Uh, why do you have to insult a, a manga every time he says you're asking Ataru? I didn't. I said, I don't, I'm learning about it. I don't know anything about it. Uh, this isn't manga or even close to the quality, says Yurashima Ataru. Uh, well, I mean, you have your, your, you have a right to your opinion. I mean, I don't know. Period says a high school girl in the crusades. Sounds like the title of a grade school scholastic book. Hmm. Uh, Matthias, Matthias Belmont says not manga. Looks more like those trash how to draw manga books they sell. 
Uh, can you please bring Leem on while you review JDA's book? Uh, I got a video from Leem up here for today. Pie Fighter says, hello. You probably talked about this, but will you eventually have the honeycomb box for sale on its own? Uh, or is it not what it was? Um, oh, wait, or is it not what it was? I'm good with that. <laughs> uh, we'll see. I don't know if I have any. I ordered 200 more honeycomb boxes uh, than we had up for sale. But they're for replacements for like broken, damaged, missing. Uh, if there are any left, obviously we'll, we'll liquidate those. Uh, no, we're not going to liquidate them. We will we'll sell them for more, for more money. Don't worry. Tony Donut says you should enter a rip of fan art under an alias. Lol. Ugh, I'm really busy. Uh, Q Revere says not first. Go back to page one. Uh, the bail thing it is. Here's uh, $20 from Trick Run. Just wanted to say thank you. You have created an iconic historical character like Eastman and Laird with tur uh, Turtles and McFarlane with Spawn. Cyberfrog will live forever. Cyberfrogog uh, will live forever as your legacy, sincerely. Uh, thanks for saying that. I really love Cyberfrog, and I agree with you. I think Cyberfrog is has the potential to be a character that great. And, you know, I'm just I'm so happy about things like this. <laughs> I mean, that looks so cool. That looks really, really cool. Thanks for whoever made that. Q Revere says, you misunderstood us. E. We said a manja. Uh, manga is almost as pathetic as JDA's brown nosing. So it's Lord Tatman's comics. Uh, Trick Ron says, sorry for the spelling errors. No, it's okay. Uh, Val says, you trolling? How is this manga? This is Tumblr art. I don't know the difference anymore. Uh, Enrique the Squirrel says, the microaggressive shade you were throwing at this book, hilarious. Uh, huh? Opinion nerded said, for $20 says, sorry I'm so late to the game topic. Matt Walsh needs to know video games promote neuroplasticity and increase gray matter volume. His kids would benefit from games. His whole real men don't play game stance is misguided. Um, I don't know what his stance is. I haven't heard him say that. Gab says, Jay's been consistent that he's not a comic book guy. Who's Jay? JDA? Hmm. JDA is not a comic book guy? Sure he is, isn't he? Oh, uh, who do you mean by that? All right, hold on a second here. Oh, I got so much. I got so much to get through tonight. Guys, get comfy. Phil Moore says, when people say they like manga, they mean berserk. Uh, DCAM AAG says, Ethan, this is like recommending people to read DC Pride for people that aren't familiar with comics. No uh, wangas. Uh, testing 2741 says, as a comic and manga reader, that was a uh, trash level manga art. That was manga with the level of artistry typical of a hundred yen store book. Uh, that's uh, 80 cents. Is that 80? Uh, garbage. Low Watermark for $10 says, are you pied that your chair breaks beneath you? Uh, J Vom fan says, uh, don't know how JDA ignores the Devilment twins. Yeah, I don't either. Uh, he should like, I, I don't, it's a double pleasure is waiting for you. A double pleasure for double mint gum. A double great feeling making you realize double mint's the one for you. Double fresh, double smooth. If it's meant to be a death blow. <laughs> uh, yeah, I know. I Like, I don't get that. Like, you would think JDA would be... Like, if that were Marvel uh, doing shit like that, like, he would be reacting. Uh, and Actually, Marvel did do that. Uh, Ken, uh, Kain Rennell says, Today, as retweeted the uh, Alex Ross Joker Harley Quinn reference. Uh, he did. Um, photo and drawing and is too stupid to realize. You used it to dunk on ISOM defenders and 3D assets. Um, yeah, well, I don't know what the context was that as retweeted that, but, uh, people say, oh, don't you understand that even the great Alex Ross uses photo reference and they say he traces photo reference, but he doesn't trace anything. What he does is he sets up lights and everything in a, a you know, photograph session, a photography session. He gets models. Sometimes he uses himself and his wife or girlfriend or whatever, uh, and he poses the way that he wants the he wants the painting to look. 
He, you know, he has a uniform. Like if he has to paint Superman, he's got a Superman costume and a model that he uses for Superman. And he'll come in because Alex Alex Ross gets paid like that. He can afford to do this. He'll come in, put on the costume. Uh, he'll um, pose in the pose that uh, he needs with the proper lighting on it. Alex Ross takes a picture of it and uses it for reference. He paints from it. He doesn't paint it. He paints from it. He, he makes something new with the information that can be gleaned from that photograph. That is a far cry from using 3D assets. That is a far cry from tracing uh, something that already exists that you didn't come up with. It's a far cry from that. That's He's working, Alex Ross is working the same way. Norman Rockwell, for example, worked the same exact way. Uh, Super Sly 75, he says, getting my detractor on. Oh, I got to look at your video. You had another dude on talking about like uh, whether um, uh, me and Eric fighting was good or bad for the indie scene. And I wanted to watch it, but that guy talked so slow and I have no idea who he is. I have no idea who that guy is that you had on. Another black guy, and he was like, uh, listen, I know people in the industry who can make things happen. I was like, I don't know who you are, and I would know. We all kind of know each other. For the, I mean, there's a new group of people, new younger people that came in since I've been canceled, but like, that guy's m like roughly my age too, so like, if he's a mover and a player in comics, like, who is he? Uh... Hold on a second. We got Matt Barr causing trouble. Yeah, Ross really equals Rockwell. <laughs> what, are you, what are you doing, Matt? What, how you doing? Matt, did you like your new video? The Popeye video based on you? Oh, I got people arguing with me all the time over nothing. Anyway, I don't know who that guy is, and uh, I would like to know. I'd like to know what he does, and he says uh, he's he's got a big uh, a whole, a whole. He's done a lot of things in comics. What has he done? Victor says, I think Barb Rogers gifted me this membership. Uh, good guy. Uh, let me see. Uh, Ellie, first herald of Coomer's Gate. If you hate Eric July, was to pull in for the JDA detractor so he could recommend better alternatives. Classic marketing technique. Oh, well, it's funny that all the alternatives were mostly him. And I agree with him. I mean, his book, listen. If, you, if you're like, I don't think I'm going to buy Isom or Alpha Core or... Um, Yaira, uh, you know, I would say that like, this couldn't be any worse. So if you want to, if you want to buy JDA's work instead of Eric July's, this is not, this is, there's no way this is worse than that. Okay. So, uh, that's my recommendation. Uh, that fearsome page you showed was great. The character with gold armor and luminescent skin looks sick. Yeah, I'm telling you right now. Oh, you got it. Yeah, I got uh, I got some uh, good stuff up today. I want to show people like what we're doing. I like to work in silence, but every now and then you got to show people like the artwork and show people what the books are and how it's going. Uh, let me let me share my uh, Twitter here for a second, and we'll, I'll show you this. This is great, David Williams. Oh, by the way, somebody pulled up an old drawing I did of Matter Eater Lad. Eating the bottled city of Candor. Uh, he said, I just want, I want Matter Eater Lad to be eating something, you know? Because that's what he does. He eats things that are not edible. And I, I just thought, well, I think it would be good if, like, he ate the bottle city of Candor, which is a, a whole city from Krypton that has been shrunken down and is, like, with the people still in it. And are, it, like, is stored in a bottle. And one day, you know, we'll, I don't know, bring him out of there. So, Matter Eater Lad eating that bottled city of Krypton would be a mass, like, it'd be, it'd be you know, it'd be amazing. It would be, uh, he would be murdering uh, perhaps hundreds of thousands of ex extinct aliens. Uh, <clears throat> anyway, endangered aliens. Rainbow the Brute. I put up two pages from Rainbow the Brute, uh, colored by Kyle Ritter. So, we can check on progress there. Uh, this is interesting. Elephant by Scotty Richard. A lot of people are upset by this. <laughs> They're just like, uh, I, uh, yeah, I, I need vengeance now. Just from looking at this artwork, um, uh, people say, I, I need, uh, I need vengeance. Uh, this is, uh, these guys here are the mobsters that took over the circus from this guy, the guy in the front in panel one, uh, he gambled his, uh, he gambled and he lost his circus and all the animals that he loved. And these gangsters are just whipping the shit out of the animals abusing them, uh, letting the monkeys drink some uh, whiskey, 
beating the poor baby elephant, look, flaying the skin, whipping the shit out of the baby elephant while the mama looks on in the background, like worried for the baby. Baby's crying as, uh, the, you know, the baby's being uh, whipped to death. Uh, people are horrified by this. Great. Uh, guess what? Um, now you know why they're the villains. In one page, actually three pages, this is page three. Three pages and you know why they're the villains. It isn't hard to, it isn't hard to create a villain. You, you just have to show them doing some sick fucking shit that you know is illegal or immoral or evil, dangerous, scary, uh, any of these things. And then um, they're the villain. And so now anybody who opposes them is the hero. That's storytelling. Isn't that great? Uh, so uh, <laughs> dedicate the book to Larry um, Shungite. Yeah, this is really, really good. So um, I'm working on that. I, I got a bunch of books that I'm working on right away. I'm not going to crowdfund them yet. We're paying for them. The business is paying for them to get made. And then hopefully they'll sell when we crowdfund them, like when we're ready to print them. We'll get our money back. Um, but we're doing this. We've got Elephant. We've got Heather Swain being drawn right now. We've got Dale Keown's Salamandroid. Uh, and we've got Lynx, which Lynx hasn't really gotten much of a start yet. EJ's working on fixing up Heartsick Horror Deluxe. And then hopefully we'll move on to Lynx. So we got that. And then the other thing that we got going on uh, is... Uh, where is it? Right here. Okay. Sure, this time. Uh, this is fantastic. Fearsome. Fearsome. David Williams artwork. I, I wanted to show this because I was so delighted by it. Um, uh, you got this uh, terrific scene here. All right. So you can see like the superhero action of this book. And David Williams is in top form right now. Look at this chick. This is badass. She is fantastic. She's got, um, she's got a blazing sword. <laughs> I described it that way too. I said they have like, it's like Voltron. My favorite aspect of Voltron is, is like uh, when Voltron would form blazing sword. I love that as a kid. I thought that was so cool. Um, so she's got a blazing sword uh, and she is great. This is uh they're fighting in the land of Nod here. Uh, and, you know, I'm going to get, this book's almost finished. The first issue is almost done. The campaign is going to be issues one and two. So you're going to get, I'm going to offer you both books. You're going to get issues one and two, or you can just get one. And I figure, like, I'm, I'm experimenting. I'm, I'm messing around a little bit. I'm trying to figure out what a good way to, to do these books in the future might be. So you'll be able to back Fearsome 1 and 2, or just 1, if you're just like, I don't know. I don't know if, I, if I'm going to like it or not. So I'm just going to try 1, and maybe I'll come back and get 2 later. Um, uh, but, but we'll have both books, 2 books, double reading uh, opportunity, one, 1 campaign. Uh, and hopefully you will, uh, hopefully we'll get your money for both of them. That's what I would like to see. But I want to have the first one completely done before we launch the campaign. We're paying for it first. Also, we've got the uh, Fearsome preview book. The link for that is in the description below. If you want to get a little head start on reading it, it's going to have the first 11 pages in it, uh, lettered and colored and everything. You can, you can even sample the book that way if you'd like to. It's going to be a nice collector's edition. All right. Let me show you back to, uh, back to look how great David Williams is. Uh, anyway, that's uh, Nolan Lockhart brought that up. Yeah, thank you. I think she looks great too. Uh, Wonder Girl 60s, thank you for $100. Uh, that is so nice of you. She said, uh, get you some of those fancy Tama Bahama swim trunks for looking cool out by the pool this summer. Yeah, we got to, um, that's another reason why uh, I'm sitting here looking for, uh, 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 what are they called? Super chats. Oh, yeah. We have to redo the electronics by the pool. It's old. It's outdated. Guy came over and he's just like, yeah, um, we're going to reinstall um, new stuff for your swimming pool so that basically you can control the temperature and everything from your telephone, from your iPhone. I'm like, that sounds expensive. He's like, you motherfucker. Uh, G Dash says, and thank you for $100. Wonder Girl 60s, thank you very, very much. That is so generous of you, and I just want to say thank you. That will go towards the pool. And uh, taking Ava to Disney, too. G Dash says, is it bad that I like David Williams' art the best? Uh, no, it's great. Great for me. Uh, Jedi Knight of the Snyder Cult says, can we get chickens in the chat for D-Day Cobra's stream? 
Uh, Jeremiah M says, uh, just ordered a Salamandroid Mega Mug and the total shipping was $37.37. Is that a clerk's reference? Good evening to you in the chat, Hail CG. You must be out of the country. And no, I, I, eBay decides that. I, <laughs> it's not me. Uh, Rev68 says, my 10 eBay orders arrived. Thanks, but had errors. Clearly, your guys are overworked. There are four of them. How can they be overworked? Can you add a stretch goal to get a forklift for the warehouse? Send over all errors. Uh, Rev68 will take care of them for you. We'll get it right. Chicken Lord of Hawaii, new member. Thank you for joining. Low Watermark, thanks for $10. We need uh, Nick uh, to eat like Matter Eater Lad. Yeah, Nick is... Uh, I know everybody's talking about it. I don't know... Like, are, Am I allowed to talk about it? Am I allowed to talk about how worried I am for uh, Nick Ricada? Uh, I'm sure he's sick of hearing it. But, uh, boy, he doesn't look well. I hope he's not, like, really sick. Uh, I hope he's just tired and drunk. I don't know. What do you guys think? Is Nick okay? Um, send Nick food, EBS. He can afford food. He's, he's a wealthy guy. Um, hire more kids for the warehouse. Says maybe human. Ricada is rotting, says John A. Shut up. Uh, Ethan looks like he would eat Nick. <laughs> yeah, Haitian Ethan. Uh, Camelot knows what's wrong with him, says Blarful. Does he? Why? What? I don't know. You guys all know something I don't. Looks like a lack of sleep, says Perth Comics. Yeah, get some rest, Nick. Take a break from uh, YouTube and just, uh, you know, get some rest. Last night I went to the casino with Hunter for his birthday. I uh, said, so what do you want for your birthday? You're 25. You're not getting much. I'll tell you that. Uh, you're 25. Why am I still asking you what you want for your birthday? Uh, he said, Dad, what I would like to do is I would like to, uh, he's like, I'd like me and my friends uh, and to go to the casino. I want to go to Hard, Hard Rock uh, Hotel Casino, gamble. I said, uh, okay, go with them. And he said, no, I want you there too, Father. So I want you to be there with me calls me father, which is like, I think he's like busting my balls. Um, anyway, I said, all right, I'll go. So I went, uh, hung out with Hunter last night and, uh, it was, it was really cool. I enjoyed hanging out with my son, 25 years old. And to think like, it's like, I don't even, I, last night I had this realization because he said to me, you know, he said, um, it's, he's like, it's, are you ready to be a uh, grandpa? And I was like, uh, yes. And he said, um, it's, it's looking like a couple years. He's like, uh, things are going real well uh, with uh, his girlfriend. So um, he's like, uh, he's like, I want to have two. He's like, we're, we're talking about maybe two. So two, two grandkids, you know? So uh, I, at that moment, like, at, I, you know, this is gay. I told this on Twitter, but I was just like uncontrollable. Like I was, we were leaving the casino. Fortunately, it was at like four in the morning and nobody was around. And I was like, just crying. Like, I was like, I remember, it doesn't seem too long ago, when you were little and I was holding you and you peed all over your mother and all this stuff. I, I just remember holding you as a baby. You're a man now. You're 20, 25 years old, telling me that you're going to make uh, make me a grandpa. Unbelievable. Opinion uh, opinion nerded says, I love Alex Ross's process. Tim Bradstreet, too. They hire models, set up photo shoots, do tons of prelim sketches. Not the same as throwing a filter over um, free 3D objects from Turbo Squid and Daz 3D. Dazed, is it Dazed or Daz 3D? I've heard of that, yeah. No, of course it isn't the same. It's the classic way of doing things. I don't know what Matt Barr would have to say about any of this. Yeah, I'm ready, dude. I, it, you know, Time goes by real quick. I, it like hit me last night that I was like, this is the little kid. This is the little kid that, like, you know, uh, <laughs> 25 years ago. Unbelievable. Well, I've still got Ava. Ava's still little. She's eight. She's going to be eight next week. Um, but she's still fairly little. Uh, Ethan is gay. Men don't cry. He says, Normie Nerd. That's what I was thinking, too. I was really trying to hide it. But, uh, yeah. Once I got in the car, I went ahead and cried. <laughs> I was sitting there waiting for the valet to bring me my car. He brings me my car. I'm like, thank you. I gave him I gave him a tip. Got in the car and then just... uh. Uh, just thought about everything and cried. I was very, uh, I was, it felt so good. I was like so excited to, oh, just family, man. All right, it's gay, it's gay, it's gay to hide it, it's gay. No, it's gay to hide it like at a, like at a casino. It's, you don't, no, you do want to hide it at a casino. You don't want to cry at a casino. The last thing you want is people to come over and say, you okay? 
Uh, men don't cry, their eyes leak. That's what was happening. It was, yeah, it was like that. And I was like, and I had this look on my face. <laughs> All right, we got a lot to do here. Uh, wait, is Jeremy live streaming right now? What are you guys doing? Join the fight, send chickens to Jeremy. Do not do that. Don't do that. That's against terms of service. Don't do that. Okay? Do not send chickens in the chat to uh, Jeremy over there in Geeks and Gamers. Uh, here's Shane Davis. He says, gay. Shane, do you want to come in here? What are you doing? Are you doing a uh, Jack show tonight? <laughs> I'll send you the link. I don't know what's going on with the Jack show. You might want to go over there and do that, but I don't think that's going on right now anyway. Um, yeah, send Shane Davis a link. People like it when Shane's in here. I'm putting it in the all caps official room where we've been discussing the decorations for the C2E2 booth. And I'm also looking at what other people are doing. What are people sending me here? Ripa store doesn't have a direct link to Yaira. Still promoting Alpha Core. Okay. Uh, is Gyra using the Vaseline Power Punch on Isom? Oof. I don't know. Uh, General Piggy. This guy has a block. Uh-huh. Uh, um, what the hell? All right. So I was just reading everybody's message. Um, all right, let's let's watch one of these videos. What are we doing here? Let me take a look. Let me get all oh uh we got it we got some people uh who are fans of the Ripaverse making videos. I wanna watch some of those too. Uh I have no time to watch anything. I'm, I'm like drawing my face off. Not literally. I'm just look at the size of my hand looking pork roast face. But yeah, I see these and I'm just like, oh, I want to watch that. I just don't have time to pay attention. So we'll watch it together and see what this guy's talking about. Talking to the haters. Yaira is awesome. Isom 3, Rip Ascend, etc. This guy's going to be talking to the haters. I'm going to speed it up a little bit. Want to get on here, jump on here to talk about the hate, the hate I'm getting from the detractors of Yaira campaign, Ripperverse, Yaira live action video, <clears throat> Lyra, Lyra, Yaira live action video uh, trailer for the comic. And you know, you in the know, you know, there's going to be a show. Ripper. Ripasen does not do anything small time. They do it big. Okay? So we know there's going to be a Yaira TV show, Yaira movie, Alpha Core cartoon, ISOM cartoon, ISOM movie, another ISOM comic. I'm just watching Yaira videos. Two comic. Good Ying is coming out too. Horse Mian is coming out. Horse Man. Um, and all, and Salvage private investigator guy like he's coming out too like these books are happening okay and these books are essentially taking the comic book world by storm okay i like this guy i think he's busting my balls but, uh, rip reverse, rip this is a this joke, joke. Rip this guy's trolling because a represent is one of the best comic creators in the whole world <laughs> this guy's trolling and the thing is is that we found a troll because the great thing about the rip ascend yeah, I have a trailer is no he's a troll he's like, kidding it's is not quality it's top i see some people in the chat are telling me right now like you don't know what you're talking about ripa send verse is just not like, this guy's no cool as fuck no you know what it's called ripa verse and ripa send okay <laughs> so sorry sorry detractor sorry okay right? this guy's based now and so am i okay so we're going to get all those things. And first of all, we know they're going to be top quality, right? That's a no-brainer. That's a no-brainer. Because Isom... I have a new best friend. ...proved to us... Like, A, it showed us what the next level of comics are in this world, right? We've got Marvel, DC right now, right? You guys go subscribe right? to this guy. Right? Hold on. What are they doing? Old Man David. Putting out bad books, right? Yeah? Well, he's only got so five subscribers, books. guys. Warriors? Go over there. Sorry. Subscribe to this guy. I'm not reading that to my kids. That ends gay now? What? <laughs> Wonder Woman? 
is Wonder Woman's black woman now? I'm sorry. Not on my watch, okay? Yaira is gonna kick... First of all, Yaira... Yaira could kick Wonder Woman's ass. We know that, right? Because remember when she's like in the trailer... Look on his calendar. It says Dune 2 really big. He's gonna go see Dune 2. Right? That girl that she punched, the one that's on the ground doing nothing, not bugging anyone. I mean, she's got a blue laser beam going in the sky. For, and honestly, like, how cool was that? Right? <laughs> that was cool. laser going into the sky? Uh, hello? That's what all the superhero movies do. So you know, that's how you know it's quality. If everybody else is doing it, then you know Old man the David. Quality of and look up like Yaira, I guess. Where they're at. This is, Yaira is the new MCU. Yaira is MCU phase six. Yes, in case you're not getting it, he's because a very like subtle troll. He's making fun of Ripaverse. Phase four. Sorry, detractors. <laughs> it's taking everything great about phase four and it's putting it into Yaira comic. We know Yaira is a powerful science woman. Doesn't matter. Like, she's just going to be like one of the guys, right? She isn't going to be like a blue haired. Very subtle, yes. Whale SJW cancel pig. <clears throat> Saskas are awesome, obviously. Mm -hmm. They're totally good. No, they're, the chat's trying to tell me that they're grifters. No, they're not grifters. No, no. They love comics. Didn't you see the 10 minute behind the scenes segment for the two minute? Yaira live action comic book uh, trailer with Isom in it. For, Shout out. Like, Isom was in it too, right? You got Isom. The story doesn't connect. Like, yeah, Isom and Yaira in this trailer d doesn't make sense. I mean, but it doesn't have to because this is introduction to the world. And the way Eric July tells stories is that he's not telling you everything. No way. No way. He's not telling you all. He's not telling it all to you. I'm so glad I found this guy. He's going to let you figure it out. He's going to let you answer some questions. And you know what? What? What a way to write. Yeah. What a way to write. Because A, it saves him time. Right? He can get you more books out if he doesn't have to have all the answers. He can just keep writing the stories. Well, the, whatever's happening in the books... He doesn't have to tell you everything about it or anything. That's why he keeps it vague so that the books can keep coming out and you get to fill stuff in with this. Hello? Your imagination. That's, this is what the leftists don't want you to use, by the way. So, um, Eric July is, like, helping you think critically. You know, it, it's just embarrassing to see how you detractors are just detracting to be honest i mean you're you're, you're detracting for no reason yeah every trailer live action for the comic proves a this is top quality b sasuke sisters number one comic sellers in all of um marvel right like number one stories. everybody remembers them yeah i'm not storytelling hello movies right so you know uh the Yaira doesn't look like amateur art at all, right? It looks like professional art. As good as CW. It looks professional. Colors look professional. <laughs> Everything looks so good and so real about all of this. No, see, you know, these people in the chat trying to tell me you can't understand what Yaira is saying. Baloney, I just proved it in my other videos you could. It was meant to be a death blow. You took that like a chomp. You took that like blow. a chomp. Move out of my way, police officer. I got this one. I'm Yaira, the hero. All right? Okay. So there you go. You know that Yaira is the hero, right? She's blonde. She's blonde. She's got a blue dress and she's blonde. So check it out. Move differently this year in 2024. Buy Yaira campaign. Buy Good Ying. It's coming out too. Good Ying is going to be like one of the best comics ever. We don't even... Like, we don't even have to say it because we know it. It's because it's Ripperverse. Ripperverse only makes good comics, right? So we know, like, we've got all these good new comics to look forward to. 
Rip Averse, Rip Ascend, Rip Ascend, Yaira, 1 million. Yaira's going to 2 million, by the way. Yeah. Don't kid yourself. Yaira's going to 2 million detractors. Sorry. Everybody's buying Yaira. Oh, and then fuck. Good Isom 3 is coming out. I shouldn't be telling I shouldn't be telling you guys, but Isom 3 is coming out. That's because I'm not a detractor. I get some of this information to have you guys. And listen, I'm sharing it with you. I'm sharing it. I'm not buff. I'm not holding on to this. Yaira 3. No, Isom 3 coming. Okay? 2025. I'm so excited. That's what I heard. I've heard that. Right? Yeah. You know, as Johnny David says, Eric July is the black poor man's JJ Abrams. Hmm. You know what? Some other people are on here and some other people are getting the info. We're getting eyes on number three and four and five. You heard it here first. Yeah, I wrote two and three will be coming out. Good Ying is coming out, right? Yeah. Horsemen. Horsemen. Not horseman. Horsemen. Horsemen. Is coming out. And that looks like the best book that's ever been in a comic book. Mm -hmm. Hello? Batman, anyone? Oh, thanks. Horseman is coming out. Horseman. Horseman is coming out and it's going to be the best book that anybody's ever Horseman. He's got the power of the horse. That's what I heard. He's got the power of the horse bit by a radioactive horse. I'm telling you this. They're not telling you this. The detractors are not telling you this. We're afraid to tell Horseman you. Horseman is bit by a radioactive horse. Anyway, I, I'm just I'm so tired of the haters and the detractors and trying to tell me that the Yaira video makes absolutely no fucking sense and that the comic book art looks like total, complete fucking dog shit and Isom 1 made no sense. Tired of it. And Alpha Core is like the most boring superhero team book that's ever existed that doesn't make sense to you. I'm tired of hearing all that, okay? Right? Me too. I'm tired, tired of hearing myself say that. You, obviously, because million dollars right million dollars in a day sorry hey evs are you doing a million dollars in a day no i'm not no 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 you're not well, never happens rip averse is rip send is killing it in the comic space and you are the old news <laughs> and eric july and rip send verse is the new everything the new we hotness. Be getting Yaira one and two and three and Isom three is coming out. All right, I'll you get them. Believe it, and you know what? What? Suck on it, man. <laughs> Yaira action figure coming up soon too, and uh, Yaira um, uh, sex doll. Okay, thank you. Uh, Yaira uh, sex have a great, doll. Have a great. Have, have a great reverse. Have a great oh reverse. shit! Okay, thank you. This guy rules. Go subscribe right now to Old Man David. Uh, what a great video from this guy. Let me just see where we're at now. Uh, he was at five subscribers. He's at 139 now. Old Man David. See this little logo right here? Uh, go give this guy your sub, uh, your sub man. <laughs> it's fucking great. I love it. We got another video by him, too, that we got to do. But uh, he talked a lot about detractors, so we're gonna we're gonna get into. Uh, is Ripaverse goalposts in here? Hold on a second here. Let me stop sharing this. Is Ripaverse goalposts with us tonight? Geek Bro says, "Nah, I'm good. I'm good, asshole." All right, fine. Old man David worked in the animation in industry. Says uh, Joe Juxtapose. Is that right? Hmm. Yeah, 137 now. Suitable Cecil replacement, says 3D Robin. Yeah, he's funny, man. I liked him a lot. The sex doll line was great. That was a nice throw-on thing there at the end. Very clever. I Like, I really thought he was uh, an actual fan. I thought we were going to be listening to uh, read his chat. Oh, I already closed it down. We'll be looking at another video uh, by him in a little bit later. Like, a little bit later tonight. Uh, oh, <clears throat> somebody reached out to me and, and asked me an art related question. I just want to answer this. Um, some people saying, I want to draw my own comic book, but I don't know what kind of paper to use and where to get it. Uh, and I, uh, like lined comic art paper. Uh, and this is what I use if, if like it's of interest to you. Uh, this is the, uh, Strathmore Bristol smooth lined for pages. See how it says lined for pages. Uh, you open a pad of this up, and you, can you see it's got blue line already on it? 
um, so that you know like the measurements, you know uh, where to draw the panels and where the lettering should be, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, you can get that here um, on Blick. Dick, I think Dick Blick, uh, their website. Um, just so you know, uh, this is a place where you could get this stuff. It's it's like on sale right now for seventeen, almost eighteen dollars a pad. Uh, so um, those of you who want to make comics and you're wondering, you want to you want to draw them by hand and you don't want to do them digitally. You want to actually like do the kind of tactile by hand comic book artwork the old fashioned way. Uh, this is the paper that I use. Uh, is that good for outside the U.S.? I'm not really sure. I would think so, though. Um, but in, in any case, Strathmore... Um, let me blow this up here. It's so small on the screen. Uh, you can see uh, Strathmore 200 Sequential Series Bristol Pad. 11 by 17, smooth. Uh, and it should say lined for uh, pages on it. Let me see. Uh... Uh, what does it say? Lined for pages. So if you if you look that up, you should find it somewhere, even if it's not on this website. They used to sell it on Amazon, but I think I bought them out. I bought like a hundred pads of it at one point, and then it disappeared. I think I bought them. I think I bought all of them. Uh, I have enough paper now to to draw forever. Like if I'm, you know, uh, when the when the nukes come, when Russia finally nukes us, uh, I'll be prepared in my bomb shelter to do uh, comic book pages the entire time. Uh, Comics Exposed says, uh, here's the link. Um, can you, can you, yeah, but can you um, put it on Twitter? Because I can't, oh, yes, I can. Hold on a second, I can get it this way. I That's something I want to take priority. I got a lot of stuff to do, but that really sounds fun. I definitely want to, I definitely want to watch that one. Okay, hold on. Yeah, get some of that paper. I, I really think um, I think you'll you'll enjoy it. All right, here we go. <laughs> All right, I'm already excited. I'm already excited by this. Hold on, I, I found it in. Uh, okay, Jimmy Kimmel triggered by Trump. That's the name of the video. Oh God. Oh, you two guys arrived with a couple days to spare and the pre-order campaign for Yatter number one is now live. Please enjoy this first live action trailer from Ripaverse Studios. <laughs> the suspense is killing me. This is gonna be tough. This is the good part. Do things that people like me shouldn't be able. Is that ISO? But unfortunately I think so. for me, flying aid one of them. Don't follow me. <laughs> is that Brandon? <laughs> <laughs> An archaeologist who we feel is going to be an undeniable asset here at Projexus. Won't you please join me in welcoming her to our team, Dr. Sally Rodell? Adopt or die. Secure the area till off. I'd start. <laughs> It's starting to hit them. The truest law of the earth. Very few things have the ability to survive the test of time. Though we may not be around to see them to their full fruition, the beast brutal crit now will be the triumphant echoes from the past. Help, Corp, be here five minutes. Hold the line. Five minutes? <laughs> Thanks for the heads up. I was here. I lived. I am still here. I'm on you. <laughs> Blank faces. <laughs> is that struggle? Is the friction of creation? I would like to thank Mr. Eusebio for allowing me the opportunity to discover and create 
alongside my esteemed colleagues at Projectsus. Thank you. Dave Filoni. <laughs> look like David Hogg. Uh, David Hogg. It's a bit archaic, isn't it? She's well studied, Jerry. But if you want to question her credentials, be my guess. That's not what I was saying. It's just an unusual area of expertise to pair with biology. Well, Dr. Rodell, from my understanding, is an unusual woman. Don't be threatened, Jerry. You better love She's it, guys. Side. Stop laughing. Ah, congratulations. Photo? <laughs> it's so bad, dude. The trailer's so bad. There you go. <laughs> Executive produced by Eric July. Yaira, the first live action uh, Ripaverse Studios trailer. But there you go. Yaira is now live. Oh, a comic book, man. That's different. That, I was not expecting that at all. I wasn't either. I was like, is that Brandon playing ISO? <laughs> they just see. pushed him out of a window. I'm still waiting in the queue right now. So we'll see where the, where the campaign's at. But, uh, but there you go. Shout out. Go check out Yaira over at Ripaverse. It's wild. Uh, yeah. And uh, going back to the Oscars. We don't want to talk uh, about that trailer, ask, guys. Telling Ryan about tweets like this are appearing everywhere for the Oscars. Is that it? Is that all they do? <laughs> Say what you think of it. They won't. Like, you would think they would talk about it and be like, that was fucking amazing. That was incredible. I can't believe we could do something like that. They're like, Ryan's face was blank the entire time as he watched that. I think he had to know it was shit and he was a little bit worried about it. Uh, Jay couldn't help but laugh because <laughs> it is funny, dude. It is a funny thing. Oh my God. Horrendous. Absolutely horrendous. No, they do not talk about it. Why not? Uh, that is their statement, says Super Milk Chan Bitches. Why wouldn't you talk about it? Hmm. Man, I don't know. Interesting. Very interesting. Uh, all right, let me see here. We got, uh, what do we do first? I don't know if we're going to watch that. Oh, yeah. Uh, I wanted to see if Ripaverse Goalpost was in the chat, because uh, since we're talking about detractors... I want to talk. I want to look at this video that he made, real quick. We're just a piece of it, and we're going to go through this every single day. Uh, this is called uh, "Detractors of uh, Eric July," uh, made by Ripaverse Goalposts. It's basically a profile of every Ripaverse detractor, and it's done as though this were like the FBI. Like this is the top ten, like most wanted by the FBI. This is great. I love it. Rip over skull post. God bless you for this. Welcome. In this video, I present to you the top detractors of Eric July since the summer of 2022 to May of 2023. <laughs> there are many more, but these are the most consistent <laughs> haters. This is Eric July's Rogue Gallery. <laughs> <laughs> Why did you do this? Oh God, what a self own. The Fandom Initiative is a group of woke people on a mission to counter anti-woke sentiment on YouTube. They feel as though the YouTube algorithm pushes harmful content to fans who are at risk of indoctrination by consuming repetitive right-wing rage bait videos. The Fandom Initiative members are Actual Fandom, Organized Chaos, Turf Nation, Willis Gredia, Eric's Reloaded, Pop Counter Culture, Lil Movie Perp, Blurry Films, along with several other people who occasionally collaborate with the group. The initiative says, We are passionate fans of film, TV, comics, and video games. We'd love to make YouTube videos about the things we enjoy, 
but the culture of YouTube fandom makes this impossible, thanks to certain networks and clusters of content creators who depend on outrage, deception, and harassment to drive clicks and bring in revenue. More and more people are fed up with that toxic content and culture. Fed up. <laughs> Actual fandom. <laughs> Actual fandom is one of Eric July's biggest detractors. He goes by Dane or Dane AF. Used to go by actual context. Oh, look at his drum adversity. set. He's got a little he electric drum with the name set. Actual fandom. And that oh, is how I will refer to him in this video for consistency for purposes. He is a co founder of the Fandom Initiative, <laughs> writer, musician, father, progressive, pragmatic humanist, lover, fighter, anti bully, anti fascist, and several other virtue signal buzzwords. Anti cucumber, he said. Actual fandom started his YouTube channel at the end of 2019 and focused on a variety of topics including Marvel and DC Comics, movies, shows, pop culture, social issues, <laughs> YouTube tips, and crying about former DC Comics artist Ethan Van Skyver. Crying For the first me. year and a half, actual fandom <laughs> wore a mask. He spoke about difficulties with social anxiety. Oh god, I'm gonna cry. It took great effort to figure things out as he experimented with multiple names, masks, personas, styles, and video topics. Not a good hairstyle. Eventually, there. actual fandom found his calling. Be the voice that counters the fandom menace. Whoa, he's got a gun there. He said, I started my channel to bully the bullies. I'm using my privilege as a white man to stand up for marginalized <laughs> people who are targeted. He began making videos about several content creators. I'm using my privilege as a white man. Jeremy Griggs, oh, Geeks and Gamers, I love him. Heel vs. Babyface, Nerdrotic, Ryan Cannell, <laughs> among others. One content creator that actual fandom took a special interest in was Eric July. Oh, no. After the massively successful Ripaverse Isom number one campaign, which generated $3.7 million, actual fandom could not believe it. How does Eric July, a person he deems transphobic, sexist, queerphobic, homophobic, ableist, and a traitor to his own people, achieve this much success independently? There is no way this fake libertarian employee of Glenn Beck's far-right Blaze Media organization can sell this much in comics. He's a fake nerd. The only explanation is that Eric July fans are a cult. A cult who follow everything their leader, Eric July says, and they buy anything he sells them without question. That's what actual fandom had to tell himself to cope. Actual fandom believes Isom was not sold based on merit or quality. It is merely a tool used to own the social justice warriors. The left. The campaign made $3.7 million because of I had to go get my inhaler. I was having a little asthma attack. Without half a million followers, the campaign would have failed. This is how actual fandom rationalizes Eric's success. Pure cope. Actual fandom loves to make memes. He is an expert, highly skilled. Check these out. I love these profiles of these villains. It's a rogues gallery. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> Look at these memes. Good job. St. Patrick T, I'm not laughing at my own jokes. These are my jokes. These are someone else's jokes. Where am I? Oh, I'm in there. Actual groomers, it says. Shit. Groomers. You're just a comics tourist. <laughs> Rip first goalpost, you are the best. <laughs> I used to make comics, it says on my hat. <laughs> I've never seen these memes. These are great. Actual fandom is not going to stop. He hates Eric July with a fiery <laughs> passion and truly killing. sees himself as a hero. Yeah. He makes images with walls of text. 
<laughs> describing in great detail crazy conspiracies. Only he These are crimes that he's committing. Up. It's laughable. <laughs> he's not going to stop. Believes that he makes critical content that affects Eric's bottom line and literally peeled customers away from the Ripiverse. So what? Actual fandom locks replies on Twitter because he can't handle criticism. Oh, this is so good. <laughs> Ripiverse goalpost, you are the best. Oh no! <laughs> it's Bob. <laughs> Organized Chaos is a well-known detractor of Eric <laughs> oh, July. Well known. He goes by Bob. I'm dying. Started YouTube back in 2014. I only meant to show one, but I'm stuck now. Subscribers I gotta total watch of these. 8.8 million channel views. He is a father. Some type of engineer. There's that he no does way not he's specify. a father. You mean Massive a motherfucker? Nerd. Movie lover. <laughs> this guy did not get any woman pro pregnant. Pro LGBTQ plus rights. <laughs> pro choice. Pro LGBTQ rights. Initiative. Bob supports the Black Lives Matter organization. Preferred <laughs> pronouns. Pro are he, union. Him. I'm a leftist, Bob has been around everyone. For a while, almost 800 videos. He started by oh, uploading God. gaming videos, then moved on to top five list type content, switched gears to Marvel versus DC <laughs> comparison videos. Viewers enjoyed this content. Bob, I like my favorite part of this rip of verse goalpost. I love this so much because it's like you're describing serial killers, like like all of these people. And I, I know you're doing this on purpose, but it's like um, I think you are. But it's like, he started by killing, he started by burning ants with a magnifying glass. Then he went on to torturing cats and small animals, killing birds. Uh, people noticed that uh, he was uh, often sullen and withdrawn. He'd get in fights at school. And then before you know it, he tasted human blood for the first time and murdered his first woman on the banks of a lake. Uh, and it, it all sounds like, he's not going to stop until somebody stops him found some success and <laughs> it's so great and i Marvel love the DC tone of this for the next few years which proved to be his most popular videos on the channel what i like hold on he a made second. regular movie reviews at the same uh are ripetards do they watch this and do they get really angry like are they like seething at this like these fuckers these mother these detractors like is it meant to like make them like really angry uh, cause to me, it's, it's like, this is really funny. Same time to try and find an idea to transition to. I wish I was on this Marvel list. And DC movies to compare since he could not do it forever as there are a limited amount. The regular movie reviews were not doing well and views plummeted. Bob ran out of ideas and went into a slump. He needed something new to revitalize the channel. So in 2021, he dived headfirst into the culture war and went after Ethan Van Skyver, comics gate, nerdrotic critical drinker, and centered on anti-woke content. How dare he? he went Bob me. received a slight boost in views, but that did not last long. What? He Subscribers went after me? realized the lack of quality content and stopped tuning in. Bob's videos were no longer thoughtful. He takes clips from his lazy and boring streams where he rambled about successful content creators he disagrees with and despises, then uploads those clips. <laughs> Nobody watches that low effort garbage. <laughs> Bob plateaued. He found a toxic comfort zone that was far too difficult to escape. He plateaued. So he doubled down and used clickbait titles and thumbnails in an attempt to grab the attention of his targets. Bob got what he wanted when EFAP, a podcast consisting of much larger content creators, reacted to one of his videos. Bob got destroyed. They ripped him to shreds. Highly entertaining. However, nothing changed. He continued making videos on the same people. He didn't die. Ripping at their ankles. It wasn't until the Ripiverse Isom number one campaign that Bob turned his attention to Eric July. <laughs> Unlike the majority of detractors, Bob purchased Isom. I give him credit. Respect. <laughs> he His purchased early criticisms Isom. were not Cur disingenuous. He was honest and did not enjoy the book. Nothing wrong with that. But then he turned into a reply guy on Twitter, taking shots at Eric July nonstop, then bragging on YouTube about his Twitter interactions with Eric and his fans. Bob enjoyed the attention but was outmatched and needed help. So he joined forces with actual fandom. Couple months go by and Bob finally accepts Eric's invitation to a debate. Majority of detractors reject the offer because they are cowards with no real arguments that can hold up to scrutiny. Well, I don't know. I mean, we, we watched the Vito um, debate and it was uh, not good. Like it just was uh, Vito saying, I think this, this, and this. And I this is my opinion of what you're doing. And Eric would basically say, well, you're free to feel that way. I don't really care. And then he would mute him all the time. So uh, he'd hit mute on Vito. So if that's how all of these went, 
Eric July saying, you're free to your opinion. You're free to think that. You're free to, but, you know, I don't really give a shit what you think. Uh, you know, there's no point, man. No real point. Eric and Bob both streamed the debate. It was incredible to watch as Eric dismantled all of Bob's arguments. Bob tried his best. Gotta give him that. Actual fandom was feeding Bob questions to ask Eric in an attempt to expose Eric. That never Eric happened. threatened him? Of course, Bob acted like he won the debate afterwards oh, yeah. and celebrated. One of his latest attacks is a 40-minute video clipped from a stream where he calls Eric July a token of the blaze. To summarize the video, Bob says Eric July is an Uncle Tom for the far right-wing blaze media and is used as a black mascot for racist white conservative people. Um, yes, and? Oh, no, Eric! Oh, my God, they're coming after Eric's Reloaded, too. Eric debunks. Eric's Reloaded <laughs> is a new detractor. He did not attack Eric July during the ISOM number one campaign like all the other detractors. He is instead, a homosexual. kept to himself. Eric started his YouTube channel in 2007, has 22,000 subscribers, total of 1,700 That's videos, and 8.2 million channel views. He uploads weekly videos and hosts The After Party, <laughs> a podcast covering the Arrowverse, a shared universe centered around the following DC comic shows. Arrow, The Flash, Supergirl, Legends of Tomorrow, Superman and Lois, Black Lightning, Batwoman, and Stargirl. Eric also hosts he likes the them. Weekly Geekly Roundup podcast and talks about weekly the latest Marvel geekly. content. That's good. Eric initially started by uploading random videos, then moved on to reviewing Marvel movies, sharing his reactions to new episodes from DC Comics shows, discussing fan theories and speculation. He has been a hardcore fan, consistently pumping out fresh content, primarily revolving around the Arrowverse. Consistently Eric slowly grew pumping an audience out fresh and gave content. channel updates and held question and answer sessions. Impressive how consistent he has been all these years. Eric watched the culture war from a distance and avoided putting out any political content on his channel. He would participate in other people's podcasts and vent his frustrations that way. He became friends with actual fandom and organized chaos. <laughs> Convinced of their mission to counter anti-fan content on YouTube, Eric joined the fandom initiative and got fed up with watching from the sidelines. So he created a second YouTube channel called Eric Debunks where he could be free to fully express his emotions as the queer man he is. <laughs> oh, did I not mention that part? He's gay. Eric is queer and makes sure to let everyone know. I let everybody know about him, too. I say he's a homosexual. Wow, 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 hold up. That was not me, okay? I'm using a text-to-speech program for the commentary. I promise that gay-ass voice was not me. Ha 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 ha. Eric came out guns blazing, what the firing hell? on all cylinders in an attack against Eric July over a two-week time period. He got upset after watching Eric July's video about the Protect Trans Kids flag and the Spider-Man across the Spider-Verse trailer. Eric said, Eric July thinks he's the hero when in reality he is the villain of the story. We are protecting trans kids from you. Protect trans kids. In another video recorded on the same day, Eric says, I'm very angry and trying to calm down. I'm so tired of these cishet ignorant bigots targeting marginalized people for content. You are stirring up violent tendencies in your viewers. We just want to live our lives. Eric uploaded this on his second channel. This was his first ever full video dedicated to Eric July, and it's only the beginning. Eric goes on to say, How is a flag on a wall, in a movie, out of context, indoctrination? What you do on your channel is indoctrination. Your viewers repeat everything you say. I get Eric July clones in my comment section. You are spreading misinformation and advocating for violence against us. Stop lying about us and telling people to not listen to doctors and teachers. I'm going to keep speaking out on it. Eric July responded to Eric's video, and like always, destroys every argument the detractor makes. Eric informed Eric July on Twitter that he will react to Eric July's response video once he has the free time, but he does not care. He really does not care. And is a busy man. Changing beard <laughs> colors every few days is time consuming work. It is. Ask Once me. Eric found the time, he posted a video on his second YouTube channel and said, I am not like these other people that you have effed with. I don't give a F about you. You're a disingenuous piece of chit creator on this platform who makes money off other people's tragedy. I won't debate you. I don't care. I don't like you. I don't like your content and I'm going to keep speaking out about it. You're not going to silence me. 
Every time you give a bad take that endangers the queer community, I will make content about <laughs> endangers it. Endangers the queer I don't community. I care about you. Eric was very angry in this video. Eric, lighten up. Ending it with both of you. Eric July is a transphobic terrorist, queer terrorist, who makes a type of bigotry <laughs> content that incites genocide of people. <laughs> it incites Eric genocide. What? The video was hilarious. Oh, Eric. Have you noticed that Eric wants you to know that he does not care about Eric July? <laughs> Eric continues to make more videos. He can't stop. In this YouTube short, he says, I love this. Eric July is the face of transphobia and queerphobia on YouTube. <sighs> I've been dealing with harassment and terrorism from his followers. Channels like his stoke the flames of anti-trans, anti-gay, and anti-queer rhetoric. It's getting weird at this point. I have only presented a fraction of the total videos this detractor has made attacking Eric July. He unknowingly repeats the same talking points that previous detractors have spammed. It's an endless cycle. Circus show. Eric refuses to debate Eric July because he believes Eric July does not see gay people as equals. Eric has made it his duty to call out what he believes is harmful indoctrination on YouTube by people like Eric July. He promised to continue making videos and will not be intimidated into silence. I personally enjoy watching this guy cry about Eric July. <laughs> he is more entertaining than actual fandom and organized chaos. I enjoy watching this guy cry about Eric July. <laughs> energy into everything. Whereas the other morons are boring NPC bots. Oh, look at him copying my beard color. Doesn't work on you, pal. Oh, shit. Turf Nation. All right, I can't. I got to take a break from this. This is ridiculous. How many of these are there? Oh, God. <laughs> I enjoy watching this guy cry about Eric July. Uh, like and share. Crybaby D-Day Cobra might pass us. Uh, says uh, Doug 1985 VA loves horror. Could happen. Read this one. I recommend for review. Bruce Dickinson, Iron Maiden singer, the Mandrake, Mandrake Project, comic and music. Looking forward to Washington in July. This is Unglued Arts. I don't think I'm going to Washington. I think they uh, silently uh, yoinked my uh, invitation. I'm getting invitations for uh, conventions left and right, mostly right. And uh, it's interesting. I don't know, like, I, whenever I get an invitation for a convention, I just say yes, because I know it's not going to happen. Uh, as soon as my face goes up there on the poster, they're going to forget I exist, uh, because they're going to hear from SJWs. So, I mean, do you want me to go? Yeah, I'll go. I don't have to go. No, nobody's going to make me go. Opinion Nerded says, put teardrops in the chat. I'm going to have to do that. Uh, Gab says, sorry, man, Geeks and Gamers, Jeremy always said he's not a comic book guy behind in the stream catching up. You've advertised comics before, uh, plus don't have to review them. No, but uh, something different. Uh, I don't think you need to review them. But those guys are promoting a brand. You know what I mean? And they don't talk about the brand. Uh, they promote a brand nonstop. One would call them shills. That, that, what they're doing is shilling. They're no better than John Campia at this point because they're all in for access. They're in bed business-wise uh, with Eric July. All of them are. They're going to make comic books. Eric's going to ship them. So um, they are literally shills. They're literally John Campia now, praising him, promoting him, wearing the T-shirts, wearing the hats. They don't read the comics. They don't review the comics. Uh, they should probably. I'm not saying I want them. I don't give a fuck if they do or don't. I'm just saying that like they are... And have become little John Campias. Uh, Tom Tuttle says, uh, Grandchildren are the absolute best, brother. Hunter's a terrific kid. Thank you, my friend. Victor says, Wow, the pages you got done of Helifant already, and this fearsome girl design is the best. Guys like Snuggy or Student of God will never understand. That's not even my art. Those are uh, uh, artists that I've hired. Uh, you know, listen, um, I'm going to be putting out more comic books. Uh, but I can't do them myself. I am a slow artist. My art takes time to do. I'm very meticulous. And that's why it looks the way that it does. If you like my artwork, I uh, think it looks better than somebody else's artwork. It's probably because I'm very meticulous about it. Um, if I want to put out more books, I've got to hire other artists. I will write everything. Uh, and I will make sure that it all conforms. Except for Helfin. Helfin, I'm not writing. Helfin, I just plotted. I said, here's the story. 
and I wrote the story from beginning to end. And then we hired um, a scripter to come on board uh, to, to do the dialogue and to write it out. Uh, and then, of course, um, you know, the artist, Scotty Richard, he is taking the plot and drawing it and breaking it down. You know, it's an interesting process. So far, it looks great. Um, I, I, uh, I got to say, uh, we're trying different things. Ghetto Finger Gaming says, greetings, man. What's your favorite video game? Uh, my favorite video game is Dead Rising 2. Uh, for the Xbox 360. Spike and Madness says, We need the CG3 Stooges here now. Ethan, Shane, Cecil, Malin, and Shemp, lol. Uh, I put the link out for them if they want to come in. But don't forget, uh, tonight is, uh, they, they've got a show. So, Swindog712 says, The Wreck Planet trailer with the female voice actress delivers all of the story and info and has emotional impact. The Saskas should watch it and take notes. Um, yeah, just to, for comparison... Uh, here is uh, here's the Cyberfrog 2 Wreck Planet trailer. This is this is how a comic book trailer should probably be. My name is Heather Swain. Philadelphia has always been my home. Life was good until it happened. I'm friends with a cybernetic enhanced human-like frog created to save Earth. Nobody appreciated or understood him, but I did. We were good friends who enjoyed hanging out with a bucket from the chicken fry. Just me, Cyberfrog, and his very large brother, Salamandroid. Until the invasion hit. They rained from the sky. These space invader giant hornets attacked everyone. Killing more than could stay alive. And covered the earth with giant blood honey hives. They can't fly near trees. So we hid in the woods. Burning endless fires to keep them away. Wearing red so they can't see and kill us all. The last time I saw Cyberfrog, he told me he'd track me down. But it's been decades. And there's been no sign of him. Yet, I can't shake the feeling he is not gone. I believe he will return again. We need Cyberfrog and his brother Salamandroid to return and fight off these invaders. To take back our wrecked planet so we can live without fear. If you see my friend Cyberfrog, tell him I need him. We need him to save the world. You can get Cyberfrog right now, Cyberfrog Rec Planet, right now on our eBay store. The link to uh, our eBay store is in the description. There are a few different variant covers that you could choose from. Get the book and read it, okay? Thank you. I, I really appreciate uh, your letting me show that trailer. That's very nice of you. Uh, all right, let me see. Going, moving on. Is that JDA's father? Says Lord Tatman's Comics. Lyra Lol Gotham says BG Illustrations. Uh, Q Revere says, do you have to fail an IQ test to be a fan of EJ? Um, uh, testing two, seven, four, one says, so this is what a nice on fan looks like. He's being funny. Or is this peak parody he says testing two, three, uh, seven, four, one. Yeah. He's a parody trick. Ron, thanks for $20. What would you say is the best written story? Alan Moore, Neil Gaiman, Jeff Johns. Who would you say was the best author? Uh, I want to say Jeff Johns cause uh, you know, but I, I can't say that that's true. I mean, I really enjoyed from hell by Alan Moore. 
And I could sit down and make a list of books where I just couldn't put them down. But From Hell was, and the artwork was like ugly. Uh, and it took me a while to get into the artwork where the, the, the kind of scratchy ink blotches became real art that was moving like images. It was, it was an interesting experience. Um, I would say Alan Moore out of all of those is the best. I'm just sorry, such a whiny guy, man. I, I, I want more from him, but he, um, he's, uh, he, he, last I heard, he like hates that he ever made comics ever. That's your entire identity. Your existence was in making comics. that meant a lot to a lot of people. Um, and I, I wish that you took that more seriously. I never read a Neil Gaiman book though. Never did. I, oh wait, I did. I read a uh, death, the time of your life back in the nineties. And I thought it was good. You know, I thought it was really good. Uh, I now find this man amazing. It says testing two seven four one. Grogu says, "Look up FF 8s uh, triple triad. It's a card mini game. Imagine a CG trading card game with heroes, villains, and monsters. You get the cards with campaigns. We'll do that next year. Next year." Uh, Johnny David says, "Eric July is the poor man's JJ Abrams." Um, uh, old man David says, "I can't believe you liked my video. Thanks. Oh, there you are. You're in our chat. Awesome." Uh, third party intervener on behalf of the client says, "So wait." Horse Mian's superpower is horsepower? <laughs> yes, Eric Wimberg gifted a membership. Thank you. Some other character for $5 received all 10 action figures yesterday. Perfectly packed. The boys did great. Well, there's some good news. Uh, Geek Getaway says Project Sis equals Project Jesus. Isom has Jesus blood. That's what people are saying now. Yeah. Uh, Suit says uh, Fix the Yaira trailer for you in your DMs. Uh, some degree of sundown says bioanthropologists are both biologists and archaeologists. Yaira is dumb. Uh, Uncapped Turtle says um, Friday Night Tights and Geeks and Gamers equals Twilight Zone with the God Powered Kid. Opinionated nerd. These guys are not his friends. Friends don't let friends make shitty film trailers. Uh, Chris Topher says Goalpost Video was also directed by the Saskas. $20 from Logical Mail. Did you know The Blaze this morning started promoting Yaira Ripaverse with the executive producer of Glenn Beck and Steve Dace on a conservative Christian who produced a movie about the devil called Nefarious? Um, with, ex with the executive producer promoting Yaira Ripaverse. Oh, well, that makes sense. Uh, guys, it's not going to happen because there's no story. I mean, there, it can't happen. And if it does happen, it's going to bomb because there's no story. You can't build a you can't build a castle. Uh, people say uh, Eric's empire building. You can't build it. Oh, fuck. You can't build an empire on sand like that. You can't. You you have to have a story first. You have to have a story. You have to have characters. You have to actually make something that the people enjoy, like a story that people are interested in. All the other trappings, the raising money and, and all this stuff is interesting. It's neat. It's fun. But it's uh, it's a YouTube gimmick. It isn't, you're not, what are you going to do? How are you going to make a movie of Isom? It doesn't make sense. The story doesn't make any sense. This is what I would say to Eric. Eric, how are you going to make a movie out of Isom? It, it doesn't make sense. There's nothing, there's no story. It doesn't, the story doesn't make sense. Like, that's what I would say to him about that. If I, you know. Try to help him. My beautiful dark twisted faggotry says, stop pretending you didn't watch this video late last year. Alzheimer's much? Uh, no, I remember seeing some of it. I did not watch the whole thing. Uh, Enrique the Squirrel says, in your opinion, is EJ a lol cow with money? I don't. That's not for me to decide. Uh, period says, we cannot hope to comprehend the mind of Ripaverse goalposts. Uh, <laughs> cars in depth. Uh, if you're the drama farmer, you need detractors, of course. Uh, Carson Dub says EJ's fans give off Mark David Chapman vibes. Well, I mean, that's one of the main problems is that, you know, uh, Eric turns his critics into his enemies. He calls them detractors. Uh, he turns his fans on them. He makes his fans into bullies. And his fans become stupid, stupid bullies uh, who uh, talk a lot out of pocket. I mean, that's a phrase I learned from Eric. Uh, straight bussin'. They, they talk a lot out of pocket. Uh, these guys, uh, and they're extremely disrespectful and they're, uh, fucking little psychopaths, uh, on behalf of Eric. They think, uh, I think they learned that from Eric. Like, how do you talk to people? You talk to them like they're just, they're little fucking creepy bullies. 
uh, in his audience. Uh, and uh, that's a shame, man. I don't like to see that. I don't, you know, I don't like to see it. Uh, Hamilton Burger says, Goalpost video needs the classic Dragnet music. I agree. I like Ripper vs. Goalpost. So far, every video I've seen of his has made me laugh. Uh, I don't know if he's real or not. <laughs> Sometimes I just think he must not be real. Concrum Gaming says, D-Day Cobra will not divide us. Uh, Kai and Renault. Jeremy is mad because Daily Wire never asked he and Ryan Cannell back when he did a video for the Daily Wire called Why Have Sales Crashed for These Top Gaming Franchises. Um, oh, never asked them back. Oh, I see. Oh, he's got to be looking at, oh, uh, he's got to be looking at uh, Nerd Roddick. Oh, going on Piers Morgan. We got to watch that. And that's got to bother him a lot. Yeah, like, why is, uh, so somebody is going to speak out on behalf of, like, Daily Wire about video games, and they're not coming to him. They're going to Matt Walsh, who doesn't know a fucking thing about video games. I see now. I understand. God damn, dude. NC Pork Barbecue says, Old Man David literally just made a video for you, uh, EVS, uh, said seven min minutes ago. Okay. Uh, Jonah Von Doom says, Dale Keown is the goat. Any new art you can share? Uh, yeah, he's still working on page one. <laughs> I don't know how long this book's going to take to do. I don't care. I'll, you know, it's, it's only 20 pages that I'm asking of him, but, uh, yeah, he's still working on page one there and he sends, uh, what he does is he like, he's, he like goes in there and he'll draw a panel and then redraw it, redraw it. Oh, it's something else. He'll send me a picture of the panel, not the whole page. Uh, John, but he sent me a picture of the, uh, the whole page laid out and then he'll get in there and draw the panels. It's going to look gorgeous, but I don't know when it's going to happen. I have to structure all these stories. Like the story, the Salam Android story is connected to Lynx, the Lynx book. Uh, EJ is slow. Dale is slow. And the two stories are connected together. And fortunately, uh, they're not connected directly to the ongoing Cyberfrog story that I'm doing. So I guess that's the right thing to do. Uh, Phantasmagorical says, Hey, Ethan and chat love trash cast. You're one of my favorite people on the interwebs. Uh, this is one of my favorite chats. Hail comics gate. Much love. We love you too. Phantasmagorical opinion nerded. Uh, <clears throat> Eric's been blessed with some good cards, but he refuses to learn from experience, experienced players offering to teach him the game. Uh, he's learning from us. He's, he does everything that I say. He does. He literally does everything I say, but not without, uh, you know, saying fuck you first. Uh, Robert Adams says, got the gold trash can special in. Looks great. Oh, cool. They're still available on eBay. The gold trash can, uh, trash cast special uh, available on eBay right now. Um, let me see. Yeah, you should check it out. Oh, this is the silver one, too. I got a silver one going on. Uh, I'm going to do this while I read. Okay. Yeah, go over here and check out the Cyberfrog silver trash cast special. I guess we still have 17 available right now, so you could get one of these. They contain like three awesome books, uh, the PVC set, the Mega Mug, uh, and a Cyberfrog uh, Magnetic Box. <clears throat> Great stuff. Really, really good stuff that you should have. Uh, I'm getting exhausting. It's getting exhausting dealing with EJ's cultists on X. It's the same old thing, and then suddenly one of them says something so stupid, it rattles in my brain and causes a brain bleed. It's opinionated news guy. I try to uh, ignore them as much as I can because they're fans. I can't, I can't be here. Like, I'm not here trying to beat down the fans too much. Um, some of them are really grotesque. Like, Sturgis is grotesque, and he needs to, you know, he's looking for attention. He's looking for negative attention. Uh, Thermination 2011 says, read uh, Alan Moore's Swamp Thing Run, one of the best. Yeah, I never read it. Everybody talks about it. He's like the, yeah, everybody talks about it. Like it is one of the most important and seminal runs in comics, but I, I have not read it because I was not a DC comics fan when I was obsessed with comics. When I was like 12, 13, 14, 15, that was like the sweet spot in my comic book collecting. I was telling Andre this. I'm like, when I was a kid, I'm trying to put myself in the, in the headspace of being 13 years old. Um, when I was 13 years old, all I wanted was old comic books. It's I dreamt about them. I used to have dreams, like literal dreams, where I would uh I'd rake the leaves for some old lady, and she'd be like, um, <clears throat> uh, "I have a box of comics in my attic if you want them." 
And I'd be like, yeah, let me see. And it would be like all the best comics. Like <laughs> all these Silver Age Marvels that she'd be like, I don't know. You can have them. You rake the leaves. And I used to have dreams like that. And they were the best dreams in the world. Uh, my dad would take me to Comic Crypt, Fat Jack's Comic Crypt, Comic Museum in Mount Holly, New Jersey. Uh, and just give me 20 bucks. And I, I would buy old Avengers, old X-Men. Um, and just, you know, just love them. Now I can have whatever I want. I, I, I was, <laughs> now I'm an adult and I can have all the comics I want. Uh, but, and they don't mean the same thing. I, I, you know, somebody sent me a nice issue of Champions and I appreciate it from 1977, Black Widow, Ghost Rider, Angel Hercules. And I took it out. I, you know, I read it and I enjoyed it. And I was like, you know, when I was a kid, this would have sent shivers down my spine trying to put myself back in that headspace where now they're, they're just, they feel like newsprint stapled together. And I can see the young John Byrne developing as an artist. Um, I'm not overwhelmed by him the way I used to be. Uh, it's a, uh, it's strange. Um, but anyway, it was all Marvel for me. I, I never read DC stuff. Uh, Death Trout says, who's the voice actress for the Rec uh, Planet trailer? Um, Death Trout, I don't know her name anymore. She's, um, uh, she was a, a friend of Ascension Cinema who made the trailer and is making the new trailer now. Robert Adams says, uh, also, when is our car name email going out? It's got to go out tomorrow because the uh, car is, the car wrap is done. Uh, Enrique the Squirrel says, you keep saying EJ can't make an ice on movie because there's no story, but I'd like to remind you of Mags Visaggio's Vagrant Queen. Oh, wait, <clears throat> this is going to hurt your feelings. Max Visaggio is a better writer than Eric July. I know, I know. And I don't want to make everybody mad, but you, you don't understand the level of incompetence that Eric July has as a writer. You, you don't understand it. Max Visaggio has been, I'm sorry, Brian Visaggio, trans woman, man. Um, has been doing this and Max Visaggio has taken feedback and criticism and lessons in writing from people like Scott Snyder. I want you to understand that Max Visaggio was a terrible comic book writer. He is a bad comic book writer, but he is better than Eric July because Max Visaggio can still tell a story. Is the story good? No. The story's creepy and full of weird bullshit but it's still a story. I can't, I, I can't say this enough because I, I really want to get through to people. There's a lot of razzle-dazzle uh, in ISOM where there's some interesting dialogue bits that, are, you know, are mask, they kind of mask uh, the fact that there's no story structure underneath. There is no story in ISOM, none. And it would be... Uh, There are no writers working for the mainstream that are worse than Eric July is. None. They all know how to write comic book stories. Eric doesn't, and he doesn't want to learn. He wants to tell people to shut up. Uh, and that's the way it is. You know, I don't want it to be that way. Uh, but it is that way. All right, let's watch um, uh, Let's watch Matt Walsh here. The dark side to the, comic, the video game industry. Look at him. <laughs> Matt Walsh. I like, I like Matt Walsh. So here's a statistic that, at least if you were born at any point prior to the 1990s, might be hard to believe. By revenue, the gaming industry is bigger than both the movie industry and the music industry combined. And for the past several years, it hasn't been especially close. The difference is consistently more than $100 billion per year. <clears throat> so video games are a massive market, one that's <clears throat> mostly targeted at young people, of course. But despite those numbers, for the most part... Right, but you know what, Matt? Uh, you don't have any right to talk about it, okay? You know why? Because we already have people who talk about it. And those people, those peeps, uh, are uh, geeks and gamers. So we don't need you. I don't know what you're doing. We don't need you talking about this stuff because uh, Jeremy's got it covered. How dare you? Uh, all right. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Are the games industry has avoided mainstream scrutiny. You'll see far more discussion about, say, Sydney Sweeney or 
Taylor Swift than you'll ever see about prominent video game voice actors and directors who pretty much no one knows anything about. Everyone's heard of Lionsgate or Paramount, but almost no one's heard of studios like Don't Nod Entertainment, for example. And that's significant because these no-name studios are behind the single most coordinated effort to indoctrinate millions of children through entertainment that's ever occurred right. in this country. This effort is maybe more powerful than the teachers' unions, if only because these propagandists mostly work in secret. Even if you homeschool your children, they're not immune to it. You might have heard of something about, uh, you might have heard something about one of the companies behind this indoctrination effort called Sweet Baby Inc. or SBI. And in a moment, no, I haven't heard the details about what exactly that came to the right place to hear about it, though. It. But first, uh, I want to get the good news out of the way, which is that if there's any silver lining, it's that this effort to indoctrinate children is incredibly ham-fisted. Some of the dumbest people in the world are behind it. So take that studio I just mentioned, Don't Nod Entertainment. They're behind the very popular Life is Strange video game series, which has been played by tens of millions of people. And to give you an idea of how overt the propaganda is in Life is Strange, here's just one mercifully short sequence involving, what else? A racist white guy. Let's There's go. some backstory about how he kidnapped an innocent Hispanic kid or something. Uh, and, and then this, watch. Gonna tell the police you kidnapped me. Nice try. But I know who you are and what you did in Seattle. I saw it in the paper. Maybe I should call ICE to make sure you're a citizen. You hillbilly. I'm American. Mm. Right in the head. Punk. Whatever. You're going to jail for this. Pretty sure the local police are vouching me over. He looks like the guy who told me that I traced Skate Man comics. Where's my brother? Wish I knew. Little sh took off. I'll find him. Don't worry. If you touch him. You think I'd hurt a little boy? Guess you didn't have any second thoughts about leading him out into the middle of nowhere, though. That's real safe for a little kid. If he's lucky, he won't end up like his criminal big brother. Just let me go. Please. You're the reason we need to build that wall. You build the wall. Now, I guess I lied. I said that it was mercifully short, but that felt like uh, three hours long. And I will say also that, you know, this is um, neither here nor there. Well, maybe it's not, but, you know, when I, obviously I don't pay much attention to video games. When I started looking into this story we're talking about now and watching some of these videos, I was, like, I, I sort of expected the, the, the graphics and just the overall quality to be better now. Um, and then it didn't look it good. Is because really low quality all around. But he says... Uh, we need to build a wall. Uh, that's according to the white racist kidnapping the innocent Hispanic boy. And this is a game that, if Wikipedia is to be believed, received generally positive reviews upon release. Critics praised the story. So we can conclude that the bar is incredibly low in this entire industry. All that developers have to do is beat their audience over the head with rote left-wing propaganda, and their game will be well-reviewed and well-received. The more recent game, Suicide Squad, is another prominent example. They decided to write a story about Batman's toxic masculinity, which ended with a girl boss shooting Batman. Girl Spoiler, boss. Spoiler, I apologize for that, should have warned you. Anyway, here's part of that sequence. You had a good run, Brucey. Flying around Gotham, punching bad guys, clean up the streets, causing long-term mental and emotional damage to everyone you knew. It's our turn now. After all we've been through. Oh. But you didn't think it'd be me at the end. Hobbits! Are we done with your bad stand-up routine? Almost. But you always gotta end on your best joke. Yeah, that's... I can't watch any more of that. Uh, that's... Uh, Okay, well, you can imagine just how many purple-haired women must work at that studio. I mean, they probably provide the hair dye on tap uh, in their Horrible. Company. Absolutely now, horrible, game, Matt. I haven't played any of these games. Uh, I'm not a video game fan or player, as most people, I think, know by now. But the point is that these clips were all over the Internet because of how awful they are. They're just terrible in every way, even just from a quality perspective. Again, uh, they're bad, even if you happen to agree with their politics. But the fact remains that... For children of a certain age, the propaganda doesn't need to be subtle. All they got to do is present it to children, and it can be effective. 
And that's why some anonymous people using the games platform Steam decided to figure out exactly who's putting this garbage in games and why. And they found that the company I mentioned earlier called uh, Sweet Baby Inc. I have to say no relation to the Sweet Baby Gang. I swear off any association. I would file a lawsuit for copyright infringement if not for the fact that I don't have a copyright. And also Sweet Baby Inc. existed first, technically, but never mind that. Anyway, these people on uh, Steam found that Sweet Baby Inc. has contracted with major publishers to push print the principles of DEI in video games as aggressively as possible. Sweet Baby Inc., or SBI, uh, worked with the developers of the game I just showed you, Suicide Squad, and they've also had a role in several other major releases recently. On their website, SBI boasts that they're committed to installing principles of diversity into games, and they do it forcibly. In fact, the founder and CEO of SBI, a woman named Kim Belair, recently spoke to game developers and instructed them to threaten their companies unless they comply with Sweet Baby's DEI mandates. Watch. And if you're in development and you are part of like that dominant voice, you're like a cis hetero white dude or just adjacent to that, do not wait until the end to call your consultants. Bring them in at the beginning and instead of asking them, hey, is this very racist thing we did very racist or is this deeply offensive thing we did, deeply offensive, are you hurt by it? Ask them what they want to see, like ask them what would thrill them, what would bring them joy, and if you have a team lead, put that request to them very, very early. Um, if you're a creative working in AAA, which I did for many, many years, um, put this stuff up to your higher ups, and if they don't see the value in what you're asking for when you ask for consultants, when you ask for research, go have a coffee with your marketing team and just terrify them with the possibility of what's going to happen if they don't give you what you want. Hmm. Hmm. So this is how DEI works in every industry, of course. The goal is not to improve the company's product in any way. It's to blackmail companies and threaten them into submission. And in this case, they're just saying it out loud. Pay the DEI tax or we will destroy you. Only in the games industry, where everyone is dumber than they are in every other industry, do they just come right out and say it as directly as that. Along these lines, as you might have guessed, so-called games journalists are somehow even dumber than journalists in other industries, too, which, I mean, is really, really saying something. They're just completely unable to hide their real goals or display any hint of subtlety whatsoever. For example, in response to clips like, like this surfacing, games writers have, uh, have produced uh, several articles portraying SBI as the victim of a harassment campaign, by which they mean people are noticing what SBI is doing, and we know that on the left, the worst thing you can ever do is just notice. Noticing is the greatest crime of all. I'm here today oh, because my mother chose life. Based. You're here today because your mother chose life. Based. The miracle of life is a gift. Everybody noticing. He's becoming a noticer. That's why we've partnered with Preborn's network of clinics. Preborn He's becoming a noticer. Did you hear that? To their mothers through ultrasound. After hearing her baby's heartbeat and seeing her precious baby, she could be twice as likely to choose life. Through love, compassion, and free ultrasounds, Preborn has rescued over two. Every day is a nightmare. Babies, and every day, their clinics rescue 200 oh, what is this? Babies. Now that is a miracle. What is One this shit? Is just... Hold on a second here. This is stupid. Uh, Eric July. God damn it. Comics gate drama. Uh, Eric July responds to Ethan Van Skyver's observation that Yaira is taking on increasingly masculine traits. Uh, yeah. Eric responds, <laughs> wait, Ethan said Yaira looked masculine instead of feminine. Um, and then he just posts boobies there. <clears throat> uh, anyway. <laughs> uh, let's move on. Let's get back to the uh, the show. $28, the cost of a dinner, or you can sponsor five ultrasounds for 140 bucks, helping to rescue five unborn babies' lives. Any amount will help. All gifts are tax deductible, and 100% of your donation will save babies. To donate securely, dial pound 250 and say the keyword baby. That's pound 250. Say the keyword baby or go to preborn.com slash Matt. That's preborn.com slash Matt. 
Grand Canyon University is a private Christian university located in beautiful Phoenix, Arizona. GCU believes that our creator has endowed us with certain unalienable rights, life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. They believe an equal Skip this ad. This is an ad. Was given by purpose. GCU equips you to serve others in ways that promote... All right, let's get Rivera. back to... ...has responded to people who are concerned about SBI, quote, uh, he says, quote, in a just world, these clowns would have their Steam accounts turned off, their PlayStations bricked, and get booted from any respectable social platform. So, in the games industry, the journalists just come right out and demand that you're deleted from the internet if you dare to look deeper into their narrative or to question anything they say. Mm -hmm. So, let's look deeper into the narrative in that case. In a recent podcast, Kim Blair explains that her company's mandate is to make every game political. There has to be diverse representation in all contexts, even in, say, World War I. Watch. A lot of the time, that kind of sensitivity work results in, you know, cuts of certain things or slight changes. But what I prefer to do, and, and I don't really call it sensitivity, reading, but I think of it as just, you know, bringing representation to something, is trying to build a narrative um, and a story that include moments and elements custom made to bring representation and joy to people. Yeah, I gotta say, kind of, kind of Matt, he, lands on it. he is the best speaker on this topic I've ever heard. I don't know why uh, we don't just appoint him as the uh, spokesperson for woke in video games. Back then, because my understanding of it was that this was a, this was a homogenous time. And so I think I, I look at it like that. Homogenous. Or they make excuses for it, like, yeah, well, sure, okay, maybe there were some women in World War I that were on the front lines, but it was only in these specific situations, so we shouldn't show it in a game. Exactly. It's, you have so much of, of that happening, and for me, Homo there are so many genus. leaps that we already take with history. There are so many things we decide. Is oh, what is this? So what the fuck is our, this? Our games are exceptional. What is going on here? Oh my god. What's up, guys? You are watching Riot Press Comics and Toys. I'm PTP here, and uh, today we are doing a little bit of a drawing, uh, but not a Riot Press character. We're actually doing something from the Ripperverse. Um, Eric July and the Twisted Sisters have just launched Yara, and that book is kicking some major. Chickaverse. Gyra. Rats and our tacos. Oh, Patrick's going to draw Yara. Chicaverse. Oh, there's a penis there. Oh, what the hell? Oh, he's tracing. <laughs> we already saw this video. Nice shot. So where is now in my heart? I still love you. Don't you need to be dreams, children? was that what is going on why is everybody like this now uh yaira was initially depicted uh i says on twitter i says how come they didn't show this like my illustrations uh yaira was initially depicted as a curvy 
uh, feminine Starfire type uh, until Eric July was love bombed and hired by the woke intersectional feminist girl boss Saska sisters. They did what woke intersectional feminist girl bosses always do. They turned Jaira into a, a masculine expression of feminist rage. She's He-Man now. SJW Marvel is happening in a Petri dish right in front of you and you're coping with it. You're paying for it. Uh, here's the way that she used to look. Do you remember this? And you're like, oh, yeah. yeah. I like looking up your shirt and seeing a sports bra. I like the angle. I like looking up your shirt and seeing a sports bra underneath the black one. Uh, you know, that's nice. Hot stuff. But then we introduce ourselves to the Saska sisters. Thank you, Tarana Burke, for the Me Too movement, they say. Uh, I hope people start to embrace intersectional feminism so that brave women like you have your praises sang in the notes of history for all time. Thank you for what you've done for my life and countless others. God bless. Uh, other people getting a tan off a of black woman's sunshine. Uh, and uh, here we go. Um, oh, no, me too, Trump, blah, blah, blah. I ah, hate Trump. Hey, Trump, hey, Trump. Creep shaming, feminism, and geek culture. Mm -hmm. Go in there. Saska sisters are going to um, speak about geek shaming, feminism, and the culture. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. How is this any different? Like, this could, if you told me this was Anita Sarkeesian, I'd be like, okay, uh, I believe you. That same kind of, same kind of look on the face there. It's Anita Sarkeesian. No, no, no. It's one of the Saska sisters. And now, here is Yaira. Oh, look at her big titties. That's the first thing I notice is them big titties. Oh, yeah. Some big titties. Shut up, Ethan, says Trey Chester. No, you shut up, Trey Chester. I'm trying to teach you something here. You listen to me. Uh, let me see. Oh, uh, come on. Uh, Dave Savage. Come on, man. You're telling me the woman that plays Yaira in the live-action trailer is not hot? What is going on with men these days? What kind of man? Compared to how Marvel... The only way that like you should be looking at that woman is if you yourself are like Hulk Hogan. Like, that's it. Uh, if you're not, if you're this guy about how he looks, like this is a woman who would dominate you, smack you around. Uh, compared to how Marvel has drawn Captain Marvel over the last few years... Yaira actually has curves in all the right places. Hell yeah, says David Savage. Hell yeah, curves in all the right places. Backfire says curves in all the right places usually doesn't refer to biceps. How did you realize that you're gay? Uh, and I couldn't have said it better myself. Like um, the biceps, you know, on the uh, on the woman. Oh, but by the way, um, today. Look at them big. That's the first thing that jumps out of you. The titties. She has titties. She literally has the unipec going on here. Costume stretched uh, across uh, the... I don't know. Maybe it's just me. I, I, I don't want to criticize anybody. If that's what you're into, I said to them, you know, to each their own. To each his own, Tony. To each his own. Um, but yeah, it's like seriously, like, <laughs> curves in all the right place. <laughs> It's American Gladiator, says Apple Fitz. Uh, curves in her pants, says Ted Cigar. Well, we don't know that. We don't want to say that. But, uh, yeah, them titties, says uh, TJ. He's in the chat. You know, you can't get between a black man and his titties. Read some super chats, Ethan. All right, I will. I will. Hold on a second here. Uh, Adrian Stone. I just looked it up. A dream about raking leaves <laughs> means you're gay. Every dream means you're gay. Adrian, you and I have to get together and produce our dream journal for Amazon. We could sell it on Amazon, Dream Interpretation Journal, and we'll list every possible thing that you could dream about, and we will interpret every single dream as you're gay. So that uh, <laughs> you dream about this, it means you're gay. Uh, super. I think that'd be a good gift. Sir Wacky uh, Wabbit. Leapfrog special delivery is at my PO, and I've been notified it's there. Why would you torture me so? I'm at work for two more days. Harsh winter. Wow, I'm sorry to hear that. It's uh, Vinta is here. Vinta is here. Uh, Buddha Bear. For Trash Cast Specials, any chance of getting the sketch card and binders bundle reopened or some signed Tramadeus card? You know why? Uh, sometime soon. 
Well, somebody reminded me that tomorrow is the Ides of March. What do I do, man? Do I do something for the Ides of March? I should. I should have some cool thing that I'm doing. The Ides of March. Some special? Some sale? Should we do an Ides of March like wrecked planet sale? Like, um, uh, oh, Vinter is here. Vinter is here. Uh, don't get killed, Caesar, says dude, man. It could happen. Tomorrow could happen. Backstab somebody, says Wilberforce Wooster. I've already backstabbed everybody. Who else is left? Uh, we got a toga party. Hmm. Ask Andrea. Well, I mean, I don't, you know. Uh, Vint, Vintier is here. Yeah. Uh, eat a Caesar salad fat. So I ate one like two days ago and it was like, I did, I did eat a Caesar salad and it gave me like acid reflux. I'm not eating those salads anymore. I just want to eat steak. Just give me steak, steak, never steak and lobster. Never. I never like, uh, uh they're always good. Rack planet for less than forty dollars, please. Says uncapped turtle. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. Stop eating salads, Eve. Yes, I know. I'm not supposed to be. I'm only supposed to be eating red meat. Your body is rejecting the salad, says Perth Comics. I believe that's true. It's saying we don't want this. This isn't what we want. Oh, what the hell is this? Oh my God! What the fuck? Uh, hold on a second here. Uh. So, watching the uh, trailer again, and uh, just the fight scene, the fight scene, right? Like, <clears throat> the fight scene, you know, when after Yara punches that girl who's good or bad, I don't know. I mean, she's not doing anything bad in the trailer, but that doesn't mean that she's not bad. She could still be bad. And then she's like, she's like, after she punched her, she goes, you took that like a chomp. And I'm like, of course, like, who takes punches better than chomps? And um, you can really get the sense of, of the power of, Yaira because she made another like she punched a woman and made that woman bleed you took life like a chomp was that punch supposed to hurt me and then she goes yeah it was meant to be a death blow mm. and I just I can't get over this action sequence it's crazy like if this is what's going to be in the comic and the and the show this might be a show right if this is what we see in the comic and the show, this is top notch, guys. Like this is top of the line entertainment. It's gonna be awesome. Obviously, I'm just putting positivity in the world. Yiver go, Yiver go, Ripperverse. And to the detractors out there, I say, you know what? This this isn't a grift. There's no way that this is a grift because this trailer, it makes too much sense, right? Like you can totally understand everything that Yaira's saying. The words that she's saying are very clear and they make sense. So when she's talking, you're listening and hearing. And you are hearing this story being told to you. And you're understanding it and you're getting it. And you're like, I know. I know what Yaira is. Yaira is an archaeologist who wears a very blue dress. But that's for us, right? Like, that blue dress is for us. Because, like, no woman in the world would wear a blue dress like that. I disagree with but him. But that's for us. Because then we know. We know that's Yaira, right? Like... Actually, I don't know if like all of you are getting. Oh, it, I see what you're saying. Right? That the the one in the blue dress, the, and she's speaking at um that thing <clears throat> where she's like, "I'm very happy that Projectius has hired me to be the lady scientist here." That's Yaira. 
Oh, right? that's Yaira. So you see Yaira doing action outside, totally disconnected to this scene in the trailer. Like, n- like there's nothing connecting the two. There's no what we call connective tissue. That's called mis- mystery, right? It's called mystery. So they're creating a mystery. But here's the thing. The blue dress lets us know, the viewer. The Chira. You know what I'm going to say? That's Yaira. Right? Yeah, I know, I no, know. No, like, right, seriously? That's Yaira. I so, know. So you're trying to tell me, like, detractors out there trying to tell me that this trailer is bad? Let me put my glasses on. Sorry. This is the best Yaira trailer that's ever existed. There's never been another No, there's Yaira never been another one though. The whole damn that, world. There's never This is Ripa time. Remember that when you Rip it hard. Go buy the campaign because it'd be great and I'm talking about love. This is Yaira time. And that trailer made sense. It doesn't make any sense. Oh, I don't understand people. Sometimes I'm just like, I feel like everybody's taking crazy pills. Uh, oh my God. Oh, what the fuck is this now? Jesus. I got stuff popping up on my screen like you wouldn't believe. We got Liam Gray uh, up here. Eric July destroys Liam's expectations. Um, well, uh, well, anyway, they were making estimates for how much Yaira would make uh, on the market. From what I'd seen of Yaira and from what I'd seen uh, with Eric July's performance, you know, overall and sort of diminishing returns and the feedback that I was largely seeing, I uh, estimated that Eric July would raise about three, I think it was, I think I said 270 to 300 or something thousand dollars on the campaign. That's what I expected realistically within, you know, uh, probably the first week. Uh, in the first day, he's achieved over $1 million. Uh, now, one of the worst things that any creator can do, and this is, everyone's got to get used to this, is counting other people's money. It's it's not what you should be doing. Uh, but I'm human, and it is a little bit uh, of a wake-up call that not only am I so out of touch with uh, the marketplace, but also what people want. I've been working very, very hard to produce expensive, high-quality comic books and manga. I've received acclaim from everyone from PewDiePie, to uh, the top Japanese mangaka in the world, including the late and great Akira Toriyama. Um, It's been very flattering and very humble, humbling. Uh, I was able to break over 2 million views in just a a week with with my Xenotype Pursuit series and uh, novel, you know, uh, and uh, I have a huge following of people that were very, very excited for me to do more of that, but I can't produce free content just off the top out of nothing you know no i can't do it that's not how it works i have to uh and advertising dollars aren't paying enough to produce manga and work at the quality that i am so i've been stuck with crowdfunding unless i go into back into mainstream publishing and close my production company now looking at what eric has done uh has been difficult for me and i say this with all due respect eric you know i've got a mad amount of love for kanan he did the diner king cover there which is available on indiegogo the link is in the description um but just uh i'm gonna say some stuff that's not gonna be very popular but everything i've seen from yara looks like garbage and i don't say that to be nasty or to be uh, one of eric's detractors and it's got me a little bit shook up because this is my business you know and um as i look at this i can't see the value in it that other people do um and that's not to say that eric can't create something great or hasn't i just look at it and i don't see it it seems lean on me it seems like it could be better um i'm not sure what the hook is meant to be maybe it hasn't been marketed to me correctly um but you know i owe an apology because look at the end of the day you can strap a banana to the wall and sell it for two million dollars call it up it happens you can't get caught up about it um but as someone who has literally gone sleepless nights and sacrificed and done everything humanly possible to grow as an artist when i was a writer you know i gave up on my dreams of being an artist i love him too as an artist to grow as a writer as a creator 
uh, and to watch Eric say so many of the things that I believe. I agree with him. Uh, and mark it on that. To see uh, him use taglines like adapt or die when my, the whole premise of my xenotype line is evolve or die. Of course, they're two very close with different things. It's hard. You know, I don't want to be a narcissist. I don't want to say Eric's copying me. Clearly, he's not. What he's doing is he's doing everything better than I could as an individual. And uh, where he is succeeding, I'm failing. Not only myself. I'm Let's go, Lean. That's the five, brother. Works for me. I'm failing my family. And worst of all, you know, uh, in, at least in regards to the business, I'm letting down my customers. Because if I was uh, living up to the expectations that other people have had for me, then I would be able to do the same thing. And I have been completely unable to do so. Worse, uh, you know, I have looked at what Eric is doing, and I was really excited for for Kanan to come on board because I thought he would allow him to be more successful and grow. Uh, but now I'm sitting and I'm looking and I'm thinking, well, you know, I don't know if it was just before Yara, but if I'm going to be perfectly honest with you guys, when the artwork was first released and we had that shot of the woman with her head twisted all the way around and it looked like, again, very amateurish artwork with some 3D jail cells thrown in there, I thought, yeah, okay, yeah, this will probably do about 300,000. Uh, this it looked... I thought it looked trashy, I thought it looked bad. But it is now critically more successful than anything I have ever done. Probably will ever do in my life. Um, Akira Toriyama has passed away, and that's going to make things interesting for not only myself, but a small group of other uh, Western mangaka. Um, but we'll see. I'm not going to say more about that now. It's more about Eric. Um, that's a hell of a hat. It's small to compare yourself to other creators and think, oh, well, what if, what if? But it's very hard with, if you follow what Eric has done from the core tenets of his his uh, company and his speech about continuity uh, to fighting the mainstream to, uh, to everything, it's hard for me not to sort of see my own sort of drive in there and what I wanted to accomplish being done better by someone else, being done more successful than someone else. I've been... Working myself Liam, just to, barely. It's it's only death. it's only been just Four barely better years. than <laughs> trying. So, I mean, don't take it so hard, Liam. Uh, it's uh, it's okay. You don't understand what's going on here, and if you're watching this right now, Liam, and I know that you are, and you're going to watch this later, uh, I want you to not take Eric July's success uh, to be to mean something about you. It has nothing to do with you. Liam, what you need is you need a bigger audience. That's all. I don't know how you get it. I mean, uh, but you need a bigger audience. If you had a bigger audience, like my audience is pretty big. If you had a bigger audience, you were here selling to that bigger audience, you would sell more comics. If my audience were bigger, I would sell more comics too. And that's just kind of how, how it figures. It's not a philosophy more potent or interesting or complicated uh, it isn't um, any more, uh, you don't need to decode it any further than that. It's not cryptic at all. If you have a large audience, you sell to the larger audience and you sell more books. In fact, you're right. I mean, the Yaira stuff looks like shit. It does. Maybe the finished product will look better once it's finished being drawn. Um, but right now, it looks like shit. I agree with you. Uh why did it do so well? Because he's got a big audience. Don't worry, Liam. Don't compare it to yourself. You need to compare. The only thing you need to do is do better. I tell this to myself all the time. I'm like, Ethan, the only thing you need to do is do better than your last Cyberfrog campaign. And then I look and I see that my last Cyberfrog campaign made $1.47 million. And my current one is like at six and 600000 And then it... Then I start to cry, Liam. Uh, hold on a second. Uh, the chat doesn't even know who Liam is. Liam is uh, <laughs> uh, Liam is a comic skater. He's an Australian comic creator. Compare yourself to someone on your level, Liam, like JDA, says Young Butternut. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's true. You know, think about it. We all need somebody. To Liam on. Liam, cheer up. That's all I would like to say to you. Just cheer up. Uh, all right, here's what we're going to do. We're going to go ahead and we're going to watch the uh, Oscars. 
starring uh, not the Oscars. We're gonna watch. <laughs> we're gonna watch two guys uh, who have YouTube channels to complain about Disney and say everything sucks. Uh, we're gonna see what they have to say about the Oscars uh, with Pierce Morgan. We live in that kind of a world right now. We live in a world where people are. Pierce Morgan. Uh, is uh, interacting with YouTubers. I guess that's a good thing. Let's see. The Heimer beef dominated Hollywood all year, but last night's Oscars saw a knockout blow in the cinematic tussle of our age. Oppenheimer sweeping the board, winning Best Director, Best Actor, Best Supporting Actor, <clears throat> and Best Picture, and others. Barbie, on the other hand, dying like a dog, winning only one gong from eight nominations. The solitary win was Best Song, with Billie Eilish's What Was I Made For? But you could have said about the movie itself, in my estimation. It was made, it was made to make over a billion dollars. Managed to show this wasn't even the best song in Barbie, with a barnstorming like performance of I'm Just Ken. So did the dreaded patriarchy have the last laugh in this battle of the blockbusters? And is this the year that finally proves we've had enough, 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 I like what they've done there, of woke Hollywood? Joining me to debate the biggest night in Hollywood is my Oscar super fan, Esther Cracker and Ava Santina, and two titans of the YouTube movie community, the critical drinker and nerd Well, hey, Ethan, We are honored to going? have you two gentlemen. Thank you very much indeed. Equally honored to have you two ladies here, my resident Yeah, parties. I'm good, I'm um, good. Hey, listen, start, uh, did you know Star Wars you. is dead? So yep, Star Wars is dead. Star Wars is dead. Star Wars is dead. Star Wars is dead. MCU. MCU. Star Wars is dead. Yep, Star Wars is dead. MCU. Star Wars is dead. Yep, Star Wars is dead. MCU. Star Wars is dead. MCU. Star Wars is dead. MCU. Star Wars is dead. Yep, Star Wars is dead. Okay. Uh, on with the show. So, this might be heresy. But this is too fast. I absolutely loathed everything about Barbie. I loathed what it stood for. I loathed what it was. I tried to wade through it and found it unwatchable, man-bashing <sighs> tosh. Oh, but God. I also found Oppenheimer, and this might be heresy, a, a beautifully made film, brilliantly acted film, but way too long and bordering on boring. Your thoughts? Well, I think that's pretty much par for the course when it comes to Christopher Nolan movies, but uh, it, it seems like it's just a sign of the times in that um, perhaps if Oppenheimer had been released in a, a different year when there was um, stronger competition, it might not have fared so well, but it just seems like... Uh, that was that was really what it it's was a good movie against. you know it was uh it was a sign of the the low quality the low bar that hollywood had set for itself last year that oppenheimer really was the best of the bunch yeah it probably was a bit too long and um possibly a bit too self-indulgent in places but it was not a great year for movies and so i think um the oscars this year it's probably an example of playing it safe and picking the logical choice because it was pretty much the best that we got last and, year and i mean if you extend the safety thing he called him nerd rotic you know, if you compare it to when Ricky Gervais hosted The Globus, for example, and spray gunned everybody. You know, Jimmy Kimmel was pretty tame, I thought. Um, the show itself was fine, but I found having five previous winners coming up for all the main categories and paying unctuous homage to the new winners uh, and, the, and, the, and the candidates, the nominees, I found all that got very, very nauseating quite quickly. And it kind of, it kind of said to me that with that and the fact that no one dares make any speeches now which are remotely political, with one exception, I think, of a director, uh, other than that, everybody stayed on safe script. It's just, again, that the Oscars have got very safe and, I would argue, boring. They had John Cena walk yeah, out with his the, dick the out. What are you talking about? It's just a slog. And, uh, yeah, the, the five actors coming out, and it was so pretentious and cringe, I couldn't get through it, and I had to actually stop watching it at some point. And it's, and it's really hard for Hollywood uh, to fight this giant disconnect they have with their audience when you come out and do something like that. But that, honestly, least offensive thing they've done in a while, and it's clear that they had a talking to there was because this is a let's just it's a pretty hyper political year and for them to be quiet was uh yeah. definitely the producer saying tone it down until the end when they completely blew it and told half their audience that uh to f off anyway which is the biggest problem hollywood has uh and they they just don't understand uh yeah, to this day those. that uh that, that their their disconnect is something that it's never mentioned in the press it's never mentioned uh, anywhere really with the audience and and how many people they've driven away uh, I think, the, you know, I don't know if the ratings are going to be great for this. I think they'll be minimal, but it was just boring and pretentious. And I think it's a dying old model. It's a 20th century model that's just had its time. Right. I, Ava, I mean, Barbie getting flatlined. <clears throat> it's the Oscars. Um, it, it's not boring to people who uh, actually uh, like movies at all. Like people, people enjoy the Oscars. It's, it's, uh, it's been around for like a century or more. And um, people like to see... Uh, 
all the actors and actresses come out and get awards. Normal people do, not me and you, not us. We're angry and jealous. So we don't like to see it. We go, we see, uh, we see the uh, Hollywood folk and uh, we're just like, like, why do they get little golden statues? Where's mine? Where's my little statue? <clears throat> Boring, pretentious. These people are pretentious. They think that, oh, they're actors and actresses. Of course they're pretentious. That's what they do for a living. Um, but uh, anyway, they shouldn't be having fun and they shouldn't be getting awards for their hard work. I should be getting an award for sitting in a room full of action figures uh, and saying that it all sucks. Where's my award for that? By a movie about an atomic bomb, I found personally quite satisfying. <laughs> uh, because, and also the fact that the biggest star of the night connected to Barbie was, of course, Ken, Ryan Gosling. I thought he did the best uh, show with his little performance, it was brilliant, but mainly because he had Slash next to him, not Barbie. You know, you replace Dumb as a Rock Barbie with Slash, one of the great guitar heroes of all time, suddenly the whole thing works, right? And mm. I'm seeing a sequel, which will be called simply Ken, and we'll have dozens of other Kens who are all brilliantly talented and world leaders in all, their, in all the things that they do. And there'll be one woman, a token Barbie, who's going to be dumb and sits in the corner, and we just laugh at women for the entire two hours. How do you think that would go down? Well, I'm sure that a lot of women will go to watch that, and I'm sure that it will make a lot of very clever movie execs a lot of money. But look, you know, I, I don't really understand why you think I love Barbie or want to speak up for it. You know, what I do care about... You is hate that, What I do care about is that Greta Gerwig is routinely looked over. I mean, she made Little Women a, a few years ago, and that should have been Oscar-nominated Oscar, that should have been <laughs> Oscar -nominated because it's a fantastic not. production. Yeah. Look, it goes to... It goes to why is everybody so terrified of the Barbie movie? Movie. I don't get it, guys. It's like it's like these guys have to just be like, I fucking hate Barbie. I, I hate the Barbie movie. Why was it even made? I, I don't know why the Barbie movie was even made. It doesn't make any sense. I fucking hate it. It's man-hating draw. You know why the Barbie movie was made? Um, because it made $1.4 billion so far for uh, an industry that, uh, you know, Nerd Roddick and Critical Drinker are saying it's dying. It's dying. Hollywood's dying. Well, they should make more Barbie movies because uh, $1.4 billion. And I will tell you, the Barbie movie was actually really, really, really good. It was good. I've, I did my review on it. I know it drove people nuts. But it's man-hating drunk. No, it is not. Fuck, dude. I, I, I can't stand it. Don't you understand? Do you not fucking understand? anything you don't understand movies you don't understand stories it, it drives me crazy god people are so retarded pierce morgan's a retard to show that women are left out of the conversation because a lot of the time men don't think that it's worth their time to watch a quote-unquote women's film and i mean it was it isn't it's not worth our time we produce good content it's okay it's for women i don't understand this obsession with, 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 with Bob, women with should Bobby watch women's cow, shit and men should mind. watch men's shit bitch. she's a rude cow she treats ken horribly i don't understand your, why you're having this totally horrible, agree. horrible plastic person being kind of the echelon or the upper echelon of the ultimate woman it's ridiculous mm. so apart from the fact that she's a horrible character the film was trash they spent more money on the marketing than the actual content production which shows a lot you know this idea that women always have to be nominated or you always have to have some diverse category to show that there's progress it's ridiculous this is why hollywood has suffered so much hollywood has had bad film years in 2001 when halle berry won the oscar it was a pretty slow film year but you could you couldn't argue that the content was terrible now the content is terrible because you can't make anything that you want to because everything has to have some diversity push and even when you do I, okay i want to bring in i want to bring in critical, critical drinker again because it seems to me the movie i just enjoyed going to the movies to watch was Top Gun Maverick. Now, I'm old enough to have remembered yep. the first one, which I absolutely <laughs> loved. And rather like The Godfather, uh, the sequel more than lived up to the hype and was as good, if not better, than the first one. But I took two of my sons, Rite of Passage. We ended up punching the air, shouting. It was like one of the best afternoons out we'd had in a long time. A big cinema, watching it in all its glory. And, and that didn't win Best Picture. And I'm like, well, why, why doesn't a movie like that win Best Picture? Why don't you just, sometimes Hollywood, just sit back and go, we're going to give it to the film that actually most enthralled people. Not the one that preached to everyone, like Barbie, and tried to make everyone hate men, but actually, Shit. or one that was just so worthy, it almost ate itself in syrupy worthiness. Fuck you, uh, Like Oppenheimer, brilliantly made though it was. Why not give it to a movie like Top Gun Maverick, as they used to give it to Rocky One or, you know, The Godfather, these great classic films that stood the test of time? I think uh, the Academy traditionally looks down on these big pop um, pop culture, um, popcorn blockbuster type movies. Uh, and so they, they tend to get overlooked as not being worthy enough of an Oscar. And when you look at things like look, Rocky, as you gave an example, that was a low budget movie at the time. Uh, mm -hmm. Sylvester Stallone was an unknown actor. And so it really was like this, um, you know, right. million to one shot. There was a story associated with that. Ooh, with something yeah. like Top Gun Maverick, 
fantastic movie, a great example of catering to your audience. Was Barbie it, is a great example. It wasn't of an artistic female achievement. Audience is very female it's a commercial oriented, achievement, obviously. Uh, Top Gun Maverick, the exact opposite. Very much um, skewed towards a male audience. They understand what men are looking for. You know, they want to see the technology, the fighter jets, the, the um, awesome pilots doing what they do, um, the patriotism, the sort of pro-America stuff, all great stuff. Um, it just understands exactly I would what the rather, audience I would, wants. I would kill myself if I were space. on this panel. Is it, uh, is it an Oscar-worthy movie? Possibly not. Who cares? No one cares what the Oscars do anymore. They're largely Well, that's irrelevant really interesting. Anyway. Yeah. I mean, it, I mean also, let's talk about the host for a minute, uh, Jimmy Kimmel uh, and Nedroit, because yeah. I don't know, there were some moments, there was one joke he did that hasn't really been picked up, but it was aimed at the German actress who was up for, for one of the awards. And he said this. Sandra Huller, two movies. Sandra plays a woman on trial for murdering her husband in Anatomy of a Fall and a Nazi housewife living next to Auschwitz in the zone of interest. And while these are very heavy subjects for American moviegoers in uh, Sandra's native Germany, they're called rom-coms. <laughs> I gotta say, I thought that was really, that really missed the mark for me. Mm. Uh, and she looked very awkward and embarrassed by that. Am I wrong to be thinking that was actually pretty unacceptably offensive? I, I, I don't worry so much about offense as Jimmy Kimmel not being funny at yeah. all. I think I think his presence offends me as as, as he pretends to be a, co a comedian. As you said, Pierce, have you seen your own show, Gary? To have him there. That one joke. Have you seen I, as? I the worst joke was at the end when when he fell right into uh, Trump's trap and mm. and read Trump roasting him. Well, let's take a, a I'll tell you what. Let's take a look at that because actually that yeah. was a very interesting moment. So he actually gets a message. Jimmy Kimmel is funnier than every single zero on your panel, dude. I hate to have to say things like this. But Jimmy Kimmel, funnier, funnier jokes than as. Even when he's not even trying, he's funnier. Your entire panel. Yeah, I mean that with love, though. All right, what the hell is this? That Trump has, has posted on social media about him, and he reads it out. Let's watch. Oh, maybe Chris. Has there he, ever been a worse Chris host than Jimmy Kimmel at the Oscars? <laughs> His opening was that of a less than average person trying too hard to be something which he is not and never can be. So, Nedronic, I mean, yeah, you know, all right, he's entitled to have a white back, but it felt a bit self indulgent to me doing that. Yeah, he even acknowledged it and he went ahead and did it anyway mm. after he was criminally unfunny the entire night. Uh, and he's just a safe pick. Uh, he hasn't been funny in years. He's one of the worst hosts I've ever seen. All we kept on seeing on Twitter was clips from Oscar shows 20 years ago and people going, remember when the Oscars were good? Yeah. Remember when things were funny? We are so far away from that. They are so far away from their peak ratings. And uh, I understand that, that they want to be safe now after, you know, helping divide our country, playing into it for so long, especially during some strife. And you, you brought up Top Gun Maverick. Yeah, it should win Best Picture. It saved Hollywood. There's a couple of movies that saved Hollywood. Yeah. Let's not forget. Barbie was one of them. 2019 had... Uh, nine billion dollar films since then they've had six yeah barbie yeah, no, was one of those would barbie not fit into that because was barbie not a Hollywood thank you well barbie and oppenheimer well. did very good box office you can't deny that i just right. hated the fact Saved that Hollywood. millions and millions yeah. of women went out and had to hear the word patriarchy 11 times in a movie and were made to think all men are evil well, right? no, look, and i love the fact that last so night look, 10 oh, has the last laugh that just made me laugh yeah look um, i don't like success. white <laughs> it just was funny yeah, i mean that's sort of white the biggest standout star last night was 10 right and barbie is sat there like a grinning doll Doing nothing, winning nothing. Poor old Margot Robbie. Mm -hmm. All right, poor old Margot. She's made gazillions out of producing it. Well done, Margot. I think she's great. Love her personally. Great actress. But the Barbie play out last night was Ken's the ultimate winner. It's all about Ken. Yeah, but it's not even, it's not the sort of feminism that we engage in regularly, is it? It's, it's sort of white feminism, white rich person feminism. Talking about, okay. How way. would you have felt if a naked woman had come on stage last night clutching a little thing over her genitalia and the whole joke was about her fact that she was topless and semi naked? Because we saw John Cena doing it, right? I would have called the police because clearly that's a mentally unwell person. Now, if that had been a woman and I'd say, wow, she looks hot, you would have gone, you disgusting, objectifying pig. How dare you? Why are we not saying the same thing here? I have to say that actually does make me feel quite uncomfortable. <laughs> but, but... Does it? You know, yeah, it does actually, yeah. But do we not... Was this not a thing of the early 2000s? Or are we not doing this all the time? I mean, women were naked on page three in our newspapers. Well, I thought we'd all moved that's... on. This was the whole yeah. point. Well, but, you, you know, know, men are having their moments. Women can draw oh, so we, and we can Men are having their moments. We can regress. No, the truth is, <laughs> Esther, the truth is, that women have had it both ways. I'm sorry, as a, as a breed, you've had this with stuff breed. like... With the objectifying... <laughs> Oh, well, you're a breed, yeah. With the objectifying, with the objectifying, <laughs> with the objectifying debate of nudity, the way that women think is absolutely. Yeah, Pierce, you you might be old-fashioned, but um, that was also done for men. That was done for gay men. Women weren't really talking about how hot John Cena was. Gay men were. It's you know. Absolutely fine to drool over 
semi-naked, naked blokes, right, in Hollywood or whatever it may be. But the moment a man does it over a woman, they have to be cancelled, expunged and arrested. I would completely course. disagree with that because all of the Sydney Sweeney narrative over the past week has been, oh, my God, this woman is so beautiful. The, 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 what is not acceptable is when men are like, I would like to do awful things to that woman. That's but the narrative. But I see all the time with women. The thing is, women That's claim... Paul Dark, remember Paul Dark? Every time a new series yeah. of Paul Dark came out, there would be Aidan Turner with his kids off. And women going, what do I do to Aidan Turner? Yeah. And we're all supposed to go, well, that's great. You know why we say great? Because men don't care. Because it's well, not threatening, the is, is it? Can't, you can't have it both ways. With the whole Sydney Sweeney thing, yes, it's because she had her yeah, boobs out and she looked like she was auditioning to be a wet nurse. But the point, the, the thing is, you can't have it because there were some men that were objectifying her, but everyone Humiliation was Humiliation ritual. Somehow, when it comes to men, it's, it's, it's basically a form of revenge. Women it was, don't want you to say think it, so? But seeing men objectifying men or treating men in the way that they don't want to see women being treated as, it's seen as a form of revenge. And by the way, you got away with it. But here's the secret, Esther. Men don't care. If women want to object, <laughs> yeah. if women want to objectify me, objectify away. You'll make my day. I could right? never do that, Piers. And That's most a hate women, crime. most women I know, whether they want to be admitted or not, like being objectified. If they're looking great, they like men to go wow. But it's context, True. isn't there? There's context to that. Really, what's the context? Well, because if you're out and about and someone, you know, is objectifying you in a, you know, in a nice way, what, what's, yeah, what's that's great. What's positive objection? How do you feel if a builder wolf whistles at you? How do you feel? Fine, fine with that. Is that exactly. positive? Oh, that's positive. When is any woman in history ever but what genuinely upset by a bunch of builders? You don't want to feel threatened by a man, right? I agree. Yeah. No, no, I agree. Right. If it was late that. at night and then a man is wolf whistling at I'm you... I'm talking about purely the objectification debate. Let me bring the guys back in who are being objectified by their absence from this debate <laughs> uh, right now. Uh, let me talk to, to your critical drinker about Robert Downey Jr. and a quip that uh, Jimmy Kimmel made about his drug taking. Oh, yeah. This is the highest point of Robert Downey Jr.'s long and illustrious career. Well, one of the highest points. Um, but... <laughs> Robert has been a... Was that two on the nose or is that a drug motion you made? He, he has so much class, man. About, about Robert, 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 I love Robert Downey Jr. Uh, but He's Downey a real Jr. movie star. And I'm not surprised, really. If, you, if you've come back from drug addiction, and this is your greatest moment as an actor, your first Oscar, do you really want a guy cracking jokes about your drug taking? Yeah, I mean, Robert's trying to laugh, laugh it off there, and hopefully they were going to move on quickly. But it's probably just another example of Jimmy falling on his arse as a comedian and as a host. Like, that was a poorly judged joke. It didn't really land. You could tell people weren't really loving it, and it just felt like a bit mean-spirited considering... You know, this was Robert winning an Oscar that night. So, yeah, poorly judged. I wouldn't have done it. Didn't feel necessary. By the way, coincidentally, this is also the no, highest no, so moment in Gary's career. We've touched on this before, but I well, remember when I was young, when David Niven might hosted or Billy Crystal, whatever. It always felt incredibly glamorous. One thing that struck me last night, I never once felt like I was watching a glamorous event. It was almost like the magic had slightly disappeared from the room. Uh, perhaps never to come back. I mean, is, is it that we know too much about these people now? <laughs> that social media has drained any of the mystique? out of Hollywood stars. What is it that's taking the magic away? Oh, I think you hit it right there. We, we know them now. Oh, uh, God. These used to be a, a, an event. and this I'm was not the trying at all. What are you talking about? Like Hold on a second. Let me yell at my own chat for a minute. So it was. Oh, you get so mad. Oh, my God. People sent this to me and said, go watch this video and comment on it. Maybe you'll comment on it. I don't want to watch this shit. I'm not trying at all. Jesus Christ. You're looking for an own on Friday Night Tights. I can own these guys all day long. I just did. <laughs> we need a puppet show. Yeah, we do. Where's my puppets? Where's my puppet show? I'm just watching this, guys. That's all it is. I didn't see it when it came out. I have no idea what I'm looking at. God damn. You guys are so sensitive about these guys. Uh, excuse me. It's true. There was a novelty there. There was an event uh, here in America. It was called the Gay Super Bowl. Uh, it was an event that you know people would actually sit around. I remember sitting around with my family and my friends watching. You know, as, as <laughs> you know, the first two Lord of the Rings. I know, but I gotta, I gotta, I gotta have seen it. Won. Okay, let me uh, see. But, it. Like, that's when it was fun and things were good. As I said earlier, this is a 20th century model that I just. <laughs> You're think the one crying. Yeah, we, there is no. There I love no the uh, crying anymore. accusations. No that is my favorite thing. That makes me laugh every there time. Used to be, but now it's now it's the intellectual <laughs> Do better and that's even dying right now. So they're they're come on guys. Yeah, I mean. <laughs> Who are the big movie stars? I mean, I would still say Tom Cruise is a bona fide oh, yeah. but movie star. From a different era. Uh, but I wouldn't call him one yeah. of the great actors. I think he's one of the great movie right, stars. Right, right. Yeah. Well, of I mean, course he's he's he is. Different era, but that's the thing. But then I would say Ryan Reynolds and Margot Robbie get, you know, uh, get people to the Ryan club. Reynolds is a movie star, and she is definitely a movie star. I think. I think the general thing is the sheen has worn off of Hollywood because we know them now because they're so overexposed on social media. We know their politics. We know how they fundamentally look down on a lot of people, even if they don't feel like they are. So culturally, people have just disengaged. You know I who we don't know about? You know, he's given no television interview in forty-five plus years, Jack Nicholson. 
fine. Well, exactly. And the reason he doesn't is he refused. I've tried everything. Because he's 93 he years he, old. He believes it kills the mystique. Yeah, people shouldn't see the real you. Yeah. I mean, I could see you at a, at a sporting event or something. He goes to the Lakers. <laughs> I'm often there looking at him, trying to book him across the court. But he doesn't believe in doing interviews about this whole panel crying over Barbie. You say they're overexposed. They're not also underexposed. That black woman is insufferable. Very controlled, and it is quite because you have to look at it from this perspective. You are a movie star. You're worth millions of hundreds of millions or hundreds of millions of dollars. I don't want to hear your politics generally because we don't live the same type of life. No, but I like my women I'm like I like my coffee. Whatever they are, but for us, it's kind of Black and super wait, annoying. You, you play pretend on TV and now you think you have extensive knowledge Hell of politics. Yeah. I, I appreciate that when, you, when you're seeing someone who is living like a billionaire's lifestyle and they're talking about climate change, it's frustrating. But then if you look at someone like Angelina Jolie, who's spent a lot of time with the UN, is that not more you, We know you for playing pretend. We don't know you because you're a doctor. He's a big cry boy. Then you get off of the platform. I'm changing the name of my show. Don't abuse your platform. by. You know my problem with that? Let me bring Critical Drink into this debate because I think my problem is I... It's fine if you want to use your platform as a movie star to opine about world events, fine. But what you can't be is deliberately, obviously ex excluding to ones that are just a little bit too uncomfortable for who your bosses might be. And I've really felt that this award season is that actually I don't want them pontificating about politics particularly at all. Um, but it's been really noticeable. Piers, are you grifting a right-wing audience right now? Uh, didn't you have Alex Jones on to excoriate him and be super rude to him? A little while back where he had to go, uh, 1776 will commence again. Didn't you used to make fun of right wing POVs? Uh, what's going on with you? And now, uh, you're, you're taking your show and you're kind of going, uh, well, you know, where, where even is your show? What is this? Is this on TV? What, what network is this? And now you're like, well, maybe what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab a couple of YouTubers with million, multi-million number followings. I'll bring them on and I'm going to, I'm going to sort of pander to the right now. Is that what you're doing here? Cause I don't remember you ever really being this way. I don't remember you holding these opinions here. They seem forced, man. Uh, he's, <laughs> he's working the grift. Pierce is on the side of good now. Well, I mean, is he? It's on British television. I don't remember any of this. I just remember him like making fun of Alex Jones. I remember him fighting with Ann Coulter. You know what I mean? Like I remember him, you know, uh, during Obama, sucking Obama's dick. I don't remember any of this. And it's just, uh, it's, it's interesting. All these guys who used to be on cable TV, like cable networks are now like, uh, I don't know. Well, like I said earlier, that absolutely no star in Hollywood at any fighting with Ben Shapiro has I made about any that, yeah. comment about the Israel Hamas war. Uh, and that to me has been really noticeable. And then it makes me think, well, how genuine and sincere have been their previous pronouncements about political issues, like Donald Trump, like whatever it may be. If you're not going to go into the more difficult one, because it might harm your career in some way, because you see people getting cancelled, I, I think there's a real like, exposure of a virtue signaling mentality there. I think so, yeah. With the Israel-Hamas thing, it's a much more divisive issue where people are generally split down the middle. If it's something like, you know, I think Donald Trump is the worst president in history, whatever, that's a safe thing to say in Hollywood. You know, nobody in the industry is going to... No, but that's um, my point. It's the same thing to say in that. Hollywood, but it's actually, it would be very divisive. I mean, I remember when I was at CNN debating gun control, for example, and mm -hmm. it would get very, very heated and blew up a few times. Um, but I would have big Hollywood stars mm -hmm. who up, would be and then cancel. We they? have uh, they say, Gary and Critical Drinker on, on the Piers Morgan show talking about the Oscars. And I'm a movie star, and a lot of my Somebody business is in the middle of America. Somebody asked me to watch it and comment like on it, so that's what and I'm doing. I'm just not going to uh, alienate half my audience. And I got, I respect, I got that. I respected that. Um, but what I find it hard to respect so much is that none of them are prepared to put their head over the parapet when it's a little bit too, you know, controversial, potentially damaging to their careers. Well, absolutely, yeah. And it's almost like they don't really care that much about any of this, this stuff. They right. want the superficial veneer of being concerned about these things and being virtuous, but yeah. only so far as it helps their career and it allows them to toe the party line in Hollywood. Uh, if it goes against that, they, they will drop that like a hot brick. Of course they will, because it doesn't help them then. It's about appearing to be good. It's not about actually doing anything good. I think I think you've touched on a good point. Are they willing to make sacrifices for what they really believe in? And that's the thing. They, if you told all these people, these celebrities, virtue signaling about climate change, actually, no more private jets for you. They would shock up mm. tomorrow. They're not willing to sacrifice anything. Talk is cheap, and you never see it more. But not just that. Like, even with Israel Gaza, as Piers was talking about there, you know, you look at Bella Hadid, and she's lost many modeling jobs because she yeah, has Charlotte Tilbury, yeah. Andre yeah. yeah. So, and you know, off the back of that, I think a lot of people are frightened, and that is cowardly. Well, it's, but this is the thing. So they have no convictions. So if you don't have any convictions about things that can actually cost you, why do you talk about anything else? Mm. Shut up. That, <laughs> I, do, I do think there's a point there. Not you. No, I, I heard it as we I just think. 
smart ones, you notice, just don't talk about politics very much. When yeah. you last year, hey, Tom make a, a speech at a, an award ceremony. Uh, watching Pierce Morgan here talking about the Oscar awards. I've which... been listening. I've been listening, so uh, I'm kind of caught up to speed. Oh, okay. Yeah, uh, Andrea watched the Oscars. She loved it because she's a normie. She's just like, oh, I, I want to watch the Oscars. She liked it. She liked watching people come in in their dresses and their tuxedos. Andrea reminds me, like, uh, first of all, she's really kind and sweet and everything like that. She's not angry like I am. She's not uh, jaded. Not she's not jaded down. at all, at all. So I, I always, what I love about Andrea is she puts me, brings me right back down to earth to like what normal people kind of think and feel and believe. And she's often shocked uh, by my passionate, uh, you know, denunciations of things that normal people enjoy. Shocked. Um, you know, so like she sits there and she's like the Oscars, the Oscar parties, she's like, look, they're, you know, uh, all the, all the, you know, homosexuals with the, uh, microphones. So, uh, rah, 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 talking, interviewing celebrities, she loves that stuff. And I think normal people love it. I got to remember that not everybody, uh, wants to set fire to Hollywood. Not everybody does. Some people still like it, you know, and it's, I think most people do. I think we're in a minority here, Shane even though we're white. <laughs> Shane, I rewrote uh, Ebony and Ivory to just be Ivory and Ivory today, by the way. Rewrote the lyrics. Uh, just so How you does know. it go? goes, Ivory and Ivory live together in perfect harmony side by side on my keyboard, piano keyboard. Oh, Lord, why can't we? That's how it goes. Wow. Yeah, it sounds really good. No, I mean, the average guy, I, I, I think people are super jaded. I mean, um, if you're dialed in, I think the average, the average guy, though, maybe they watch one, two shows, maybe a few movies a year. They're not like at the movies every weekend. So, like, I don't know. And now <laughs> a lot of Netflix, other streaming stuff is making it in. So yeah. it's completely different than what it used to be. It's way different. You got to remember, Shane. Did you see this guy, Old Man David, that we're uh, learning about? Yeah. He's becoming a, a people's favorite uh, YouTuber. Good for uh, him. Old Man David. People really like him. Apparently, yeah. he did another video. Hold on a second here. It's ridiculous. I mean, What's this guy you know, doing? Shout out to uh, whoever made it on that show. Uh, I, shout don't, out to I, don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I'm not oh, dialed Morgan. Oh, okay. yeah. I mean, I've seen certain clips of him, but I'm not like, you know. Well, this is old man David here. Who's pissed at me now. So I guess I'm, um, what? Supposed to be thankful to, um, EVS for, um, playing my video on his stream. King of the detractors, right? I wouldn't say that. Well, no, he doesn't care about Eric July. Not the way we do, not the way the fans do, okay? And I'm not, I'm not gonna thank you, EBS. No, I'm just hoping that you're gonna learn something from me about Eric July Universe, Gyra Comics, I saw him, Gooding, I learned how to say it, hmm? Horseman, Horseman, and the amazing Yaira live action. I'm not gonna thank you just because I've jumped up like a hundred subscribers and like people are watching my video now. I was probably going to get there anyway. No, you're just going to sit in your car and film a game video. Jesus Christ. I mean, I was making videos to support Yaira and Eric July. And I mean, I can't say that he's even taken notice or gives a fucking shit. But you know what? He's a fucking businessman, right? Multi-million dollar company. So if he doesn't have time for me, and the support that I give him online, on YouTube, my money, max out my credit card. Bet you guys wish that you were getting the Yaira bundle I'm getting, right? No. You know? I'm waiting for Rainbow the Brute. I'm going to get Yaira Winter in May. Hello. Yaira Winter hello. in May. Uh, Jesus Christ, dude. Like, hello, that's when I celebrate winter is May. Hello. Eric July will notice my video one day. He will. When he is, <laughs> stop, when he has a break stop, from stop, all of his business, stop. right? 
million dollar campaign. The guy's busy as hell working with those Soska sisters. I mean, they got to be reined in, right? Managing all that awesome Hurting art. Cats. I can't expect him cats to be able to see all of us in the Ripa Ascent field area who are supporting him nonstop. Okay, so thanks, EBS. Thanks for playing my video. I'm glad that your detractors are finally able to hear, you and your detractors are certainly fi finally able to hear the opposite side of the story, right? The opposite side of this whole thing is that Yaira is awesome. You guys can't deny it anymore. First of all, the trailer is awesome. And the comic is going to be the best thing ever. Right now, a fight between Ice, um, a fight between Yara number one versus Rainbow the Brute. Who's winning that? It's time of the woman, right? Yara. Rainbow the Brute, old man. Powerful woman. I don't even know what Yara's powers are. I don't know what she does at all. I have no fucking clue of who the character is, why she exists, what her power sets are, what she's fighting for, but I know one thing. She would take down Rainbow the Brute. And get this, he does. Your baby cyber frog. Yaira's number one now in town. What so I'm going to wish you all the good luck in the world. Oh, and thank you for playing my video. <laughs> thanks for joining my... Oh, thanks, detractors. I'm Now I'm going to monetize the hate. The detractors. Because I'm getting the subscribers now. Watch out, EVS. Watch out, all you detractors. Because this is the... This is the Eric July train. And that train doesn't stop. And I am repping... Eric July, <clears throat> sorry, I'm repping Eric July, and he's going to know it one day, and he's going to pay attention to me, and he is going to, one day he's going to say, I swear to God, I swear to God, old man David, thank you, thank you, and I, you know what I'm going to say? Where's your cut? No thanks needed, man, you, you're you hmm. the boss, you're the bomb, you're all of our bosses, we all want to work for you, you're the best, best guy ever in comics, whatever, thanks EVS. Wow, man. Peace. All right, so I believed that for a minute, and uh, you could have warned me that that was a parody. Well, I got something to say to him. Uh, first of all, Dave, I'd like to thank the many, many fans throughout YouTube, Twitter, that wrote cards and letters of support to me, EVS. EVS, Caesar of Comicsgate, Human Sunbeam, while I'd been down. Secondly, I'd like to thank Shane Davis for his promotion, for his support, Cyberfrog and all caps comics, taking the time because I know how important that was. I know how important Inglorious Rex is to the comic book fans. Hmm. With the weight, I got what I wanted. Ethan Van Skyver is going to be the world's indie comic champion again shane oh, wow coming up i don't i don't have to say a whole lot more about the way i feel about my fans i respect them i honor them but you old man dave you have no respect no honor <clears throat> there is no honor among ripetards in the first place these ripetards put hard times on Ethan Van Skyver, his family. You don't know what hard times are. You don't know what hard times are, Big Dave. Old oh, man, Dave. Hard times are where the textile workers around the country are out of work. And they got four or five kids. And they're looking to comicsgate to pay their wages, but they can't buy food. Hard times... Oh, when auto workers are out of work and they tell them to go home, Shane. And our times of when a man has worked hard at a job for 30 years, 30, 31 years in the comic book business. They give him a watch, kick him in the butt and say, hey, a homosexual took your place, Ethan. That's hard times. That's hard times. And I'm telling you something right now. You have put hard times on the comic book industry by taking EVS out. That's hard times. We all had hard times together. And I admit, I don't I don't draw like the man I used to draw like back in the day. I admit that. My belly's a little big. My hiney's a little fatter. But, brother, I am a big, bad booty daddy. And ain't no one bad, Shane. There were two bad people 
bad people. One was John Wayne. He's dead, brother. The other one's right here. EVS. Greatest comic book artist of all time. Emperor of Comics Gates. Caesar. Caesar Comics Gatus. Augustus Brutus Caligula. Human Sunbeam. The GOAT. I'm going to reach out right now. I want you at home to know that my hand is touching your hand for the gathering of the biggest body of people in this comic book industry, in this fucking universe all over the world. Right now, I'm reaching out because the love that was given to me by Shane Davis when I was down. And I will repay Shane Davis now because I will be Comic Skaters Caligula again. Hmm. I will be. And, uh, old man Dave, let me just leave you with this. One way to hurt EVS is to take what he cherishes more than anything in the world, and that is Comic Skate. That is Comic Skate. I understand that. And I took it before. Take it again. Been there twice. This time, when I take it back, I'm going to take it. For you, big old man, Dave. I'm taking it for you right in your face. This time when I take it, old man, Dave, I'm going to take it for you. Let's gather for it. Don't let me down now, Shane, because I came back for you. For that Amen. man upstairs, that man who died back in the 1970s, John Wayne. Never got the opportunity to meet John Wayne. But you, old man, Dave, are going to get the chance to meet EVS. And you're going to be sorry you did. <coughs> Shit, that hurts. <coughs> that sounds like it. Oh, my God, dude. What do you think, Shane? Was that a good promo? Good promo. Great promo. Thank Probably you the much. best. Best in the independent comic sphere, Shane Davis. Mm. You may be the best in the independent comic sphere. But you ain't no Jack Kirby. And you never will be. <laughs> uh, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I got to start doing uh, wrestling promos. I enjoy them. Yeah. They seem like they're kind of rough on the voice, though. They do hurt. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we uh, got a couple of things here. We got Nina Infinity. Oh, oh, we got a um a Sturgis video to watch. <laughs> yeah, it has to do with me, maybe. I don't know. I he did. No, 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 no. This oh, one isn't okay. about you. This is about right. me being caught lying. So hold on. A all second. right. All right. Good. Uh, Leapfrog special delivery is at my P.O. box. I've been notified. Oh, I've read this one. Buddha Bear for trash cat specials. Is there any chance? Oh, I read this one too. Isn't Matt Walsh the guy who aligned with DeSantis instead of Trump? Fuck that fool, says Nostra Dumbass for $10. Biblical prophet of CG says, Blessings, Ethan. I may I inquire of thee, wouldst thou be so gracious to provide for us the chat of sale tomorrow on Cyberfunk merchandise for it being the Ides of March tomorrow? Whoa, Ides of March. It? Is it to March tomorrow? I guess it is, right? The 15th, yeah. Wow. You got to do something. Prophet of that, CG, right? I, I hear what you're saying. I hear it with this, and I hear it with this, and I hear it with this. And I want you to know, Biblical Prophet of CG, that I'm going to make all of that shit happen for you tomorrow. Tomorrow is going to be a day. Tomorrow is going to be the biggest Ides of March since the first one i promise you this i promise you mm. this what do you think of that Shane? good idea or bad idea uh to do i to march a great idea you have a whole thing you know people have expectations you have to live up to them yeah i just want you to know shane davis <laughs> i don't even like wrestling dude but i like the wrestling promos i want you to know shane you're living in a fairy tale you're living in a fairy tale. <laughs> oh, my God. <coughs> oh, God. There were some good ones back in the day. You could probably just get a lot of reference on YouTube. Old 90s wrestling promos. Crypto Ken says, just stop. Would you just stop? All right, hold on a second. Uh, oh, I got to finish reading these super chats, and we're going to go on. 
Uh, 200 Watt Studio, good thing, good that Matt is talking about this. The DEI shills expect and are prepared for attacks by geeks and gamers, etc. But Matt is a new front attacking their flank. You know what the flank is, Shane? Well, uh, sort of. I know how it's used in a term. I don't know if I could define a flank. It's the kind of steak that they use to make cheesesteaks. Oh. Uh, flank. That's not steak. what they mean. Uh, Gray Fox says, why did Griftoverse have a problem with Matt Walsh video? He sounds reasonable, well-spoken. Good way to ease normies into the topic. Well-spoken, Shane. Do you like the term well-spoken? Shane, why are you not with me? Why are you betraying I'm, me? I'm, I get the well, I get it. Um, the well, you're asking me, I guess it can be good. I mean, I, I according Shane, which, to this. Which one of the people on this panel would you say was well-spoken? The black chick. That's right. Well spoken, Shane. Yeah. Um, all right, hold on a second. I'm no artist, but what was up with the proportions on the Yaira in the image Eric showed, uh, shared to how feminine she is now? Uh, I don't know. He just put a, a big picture of boobies in there and said that means she's a woman. But then uh, I showed a picture of uh, Dylan uh, Mulvaney, who also has tits now. And I think I proved my point pretty well, Shane. You know what I mean? Like, uh, I could show as as has tits. You know what I mean? Like, that doesn't mean uh, he's it's feminine. feminine. Yeah. Yeah. No, uh, I mean, you got to have some curves in these women. I, I don't know why everybody's like women. There's if they're strong, they have to be masculine. Like they have to have the muscles. It's like not really. I mean, if they have super strength, that doesn't mean they have like, you know, they're bodybuilders. They just they have the strength that, you know, they should look feminine and sexy. That's yeah. how I look at it. I agree. But the, all the Yaira art's been completely inconsistent. So it, it's like if anybody's trying to talk about her build or something, I'm like, which drawing? Like, it's not on model ever. Yeah. In my way. Do you even lift, bro? Says uh, Osgrade Sage. I do. I, I've been late. You've been on the lift a plate or two. Yeah. Not today, though. Not a plate of pie. I want you to know, Shane. You like when I do dusty roads? Oh, I want you to know. Hard times, Shane. Hard times <laughs> is coming. Hard times make hard men. <coughs> um, yeah, it hurts. Uh, what was I saying? Oh, yeah. <clears throat> I'm no artist. Oh, yeah, I read this one. Yurash Matar says, no, chilled. She wasn't chilled. You're wrong, chilled. That's how you pronounce child when you're from Russia. G Dash says, blood rage, cyber frog as fuck. Oh, action figure. Blood honey comic, blood cameo, Heather action figure for $99 package, please. For the Ides of March or for any reason. It's 40 42 it's 80 80 dollars plus four so they're wanting blood 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 hunt oh blood honey comic oh, okay oh blood, blood honey for the eyes. i get blood it now yeah i'm sitting there doing the math to see if that's like a, a deal that we could offer we could offer that deal that makes sense because it's a a little more be about 130 dollars like normally so we, we do that for 99 dollars. we could do that uh, Con Crumb Gaming says, I'm into blondes, uh, but she was not it for me. Uh, Val says, Saskas are Anita. They will marry themselves too. Uh, Get a Robo Sh uh, Shinwin says, Ethan, I need your email so we can talk. Uh, my email. I'm posting in the chat right now. There it is. Shane, did you see this cyber frog that this guy did? Let me see it. Bring it up. Here we go. Watch. It looks really good. Yeah, I like it. I would watch a whole movie like that. Uh, I would. I think everybody would. Uh, Super Wacky Wabbit says, uh, Vintia is here. Uh, happy Pi Day and congrats on the grandkids' hail, says uh, Strange Signal. $3.14. And the Iron Omega for $20 says, Hail EVS, after three years, the shilling that Gary and Az have done has made me cancel all memberships to them. They literally are John Campion now. 
uh, as actually said that the Yaira trailer gave him chills. Oh, maybe it did though. It's kind of rough, right, to hear somebody talk shit on Dune and say Dune's woke, but they're wearing a Isom T-shirt. Yeah, it's weird. I, I mean, mean I, it's kind of like, I mean, if you're going to be a critic, you got to be a critic across the board. You can't just pick and choose when to be a critic. Yeah, well, um, yeah, I, I talked about this at the beginning of the show. It's just that they support, they're promoting, they're promoting ice on, they're promoting Ripaverse so much they're wearing t-shirts they're talking about it as though this is our friend that's doing this and you should support our friend right but what we know is that they're all financially in bed with eric july we know that because of rip ascent we understand um that uh, eric july will be promoting their books their comic books that they're going to make uh and so for and so it's like a conflict of interest they literally are shilling they are paid shills um, for Eric July now. There's just no two ways around that for Ripaverse. Because like mm. somebody like Yellow Flash, yeah, like he's going to sit there and suck Eric July's dick because Eric July is going to be publishing him or promoting him and, uh, you know, all this stuff. By the way, did you see the page that Yellow Flash posted about John Dillard's art? No. You didn't see that? I, Yellow I, so today and, I, I'll be honest, I'm not trying to, you know, switch subjects, but I've been really out today doing a million errands at physical therapy, all that shit. So I, I haven't really been on Twitter too, too much besides <clears throat> arguing with a few ripetards. I, I just, I kind of turned Twitter off. They kind of pissed me off. I just kind of stepped away. Yeah, I, I'm just, uh, Twitter's weird right now. Um, Comics Gate Drama, which is a really good Twitter page, uh, definitely worth uh, uh, following this guy. Um, he, I, he's pretty neutral, except he thinks I'm a homosexual, uh, which uh, is, I'm not. Uh, comic skate drama, I'm married. Uh, I've never, uh, I've n I'm not interested in men. You know what I mean? Like, I'm not, Shane. Am I, have I ever touched you? You touched me here in the heart. Where oh, okay. Know. I thought you were going to say your dick. I was like, <laughs> I've never done that. I mean, there was that time like uh, we were at a Wizard World Con and I was at a urinal and there was tons of urinals in there. But for some reason, you had to use the one right next to right me. Right next to you. Yeah. Yeah, and that was awkward. Over. I didn't yeah. want to say anything about it. Uh, probably shouldn't have just right now, but, you know. Yeah. Uh, all right. Here's a yellow flash. Diller draws is killing it. And then he's got a page here that you can see. Let me open this up in a new tab here. So this is a little preview look. At a Yellow Flash's comic that's coming out. What do you think? Uh, zoom in on that. But, oh, I'm sorry. Um, yeah, I, I, I opened up a new tab and I didn't share it. One second here. There we go. Hang on. I'm trying to figure out panel one. Is that two? I, I'm, just, I'm having to do the math. That's two robots colliding. Okay, yeah. that I understand. You see it? Yeah, I just didn't understand the anatomy of the robots to to register panel one. I have, maybe it's set up in another page. Yeah. Well, looks good. Uh, Dillard's a good artist. I like his um his um his, his anatomy. Like um, I'm I'm just trying to figure now out. Now you sound robots. gay. Yeah. You know. Just saying, he has like kind of like a stylized animated anatomy type vibe to his stuff. Fun. <clears throat> Pork uh, Flap says, this if this dude is serious, he really thinks Ethan's gay. It makes me doubt his powers of reasoning right off the bat. Thank you so much for that. That is, that's so true. Like, why would you think I'm gay? Like, I'm so clearly like, Shane, uh, these people see me dress up like in a sparkly, uh, glittery costume. Uh, and strut around, mince around my uh, studio. They think I'm gay. Like, what the fuck? You know what I'm saying? Stupid. Mm, I mean, I dress up. That doesn't mean I'm gay. It or doesn't. does it? <laughs> Jay Sim says, Ethan is at least bi. I swear to God, fuck, you're barking up the wrong fucking tree. I am not at all. <laughs> not interested. I am not interested in dudes at all. And if I was, you'd know it, because I tell you, I tell you guys everything. You'd, I'd be like, I'm gay. 
Like, I'd be doing that. I'd be like Eric the Bunks. If I'd you were gay, you would have, like, a pride you would flags. Start a capitalize, you would capitalize off of Pride Month. You would of totally jump I in would. there with your... <laughs> it's just know, another like... grift. I'd be happy to do that. What do you think? It's, like, easier to be homophobic? It isn't. This is a hard <laughs> row I hoe. It's, it's real hard being homophobic. <laughs> you think it's easy? You think this is the right thing to do? It isn't. It's harder. This is a This is an actual thing. You know, when we get up every morning and we use the F slur on, on YouTube, you think this is profitable? I mean, ultimately, is it profitable? No, it is not. It's the wrong way to go uh, in Hollywood. Basically sets you up on the wrong path. If I were gay or bisexual or LGBTQ, whatever the hell, uh, you, I'd be so, Shane, I would, uh, I'd be wearing that little hat with the Superman logo, but in rainbows and everything. And right. I'd be like, mm, I'd still be at DC right now. Yeah, yeah, they'd be throwing tons of money at you. I you mean, think those people at DC thought I was gay? You think so? No, they didn't. That's why I'm not there no more. Uh, the simple as that. It's Ethan Van Biver. Oh, what is this? Ethan that. Man Lover. Oh, <laughs> shut the hell up. Uh, Ethan is a heterophobe. Ethan will have a rainbow beard in June. Who am I, Doug to April? I will not. Wait, whoa, whoa, whoa. What? Now I'm putting it together with Rainbow the Brute. I mean, yeah. maybe that is like... Uh, you know, you're sending out a message. <laughs> yes, I am. I'm taking back the rainbow. Uh, that's one of the biggest things in the world. I'm like, why did they steal the rainbow from us? That used to be so masculine, and now it's gay. Now Wait, it's when some... was the rainbow masculine? <laughs> I forget. When was that? <laughs> you hear people complaining? They took the rainbow from us. I'm like, look, they can have the fucking rainbow. They really can the only time a rainbow should matter to you is when you're four years old and you get your first set of Crayola crayons. That's it. Uh, beyond that, if you're into yeah. rainbows, there's something wrong with you. If rainbow drunk, the brute, by the way. For a pot of gold, maybe it matters, but uh, well, it does lead to a pot of gold, I guess. That's the other thing. You be ever buy into that? <clears throat> uh, yeah. What do you think about this page? Uh, what do I think of it? I don't know. I, I like. I don't know what. Here's what I would. I would say about it because I'm kind. I would say, why the fuck would Yellow Flash show this page? Why? Yeah. If you're sitting there trying to say John Dillard is awesome, why are you showing me this page? I can't tell what it is. It's inscrutable. What is going on here? You know what I mean? This is like one of those in betweener pages. Like yeah. there would be a page over here in which he throws these two robots, I guess, into each other. I don't know what panel two is at all. At all. I don't know either. I was trying to be nice. Like I, I like the figure at the bottom, the human figure punching. Like I'm like, hey, you know, I like that. But I can I still, see what it is. Yeah. Yeah. But I, I don't know what I'm looking at either. I mean, I don't know. Like I get that he's trying to pump up that he's that he's doing a book and he's trying to hide what his character looks like. I get that to some level, but you know, it's it, at some point it's either shit or get off the pot, either put the book out and show me what I'm looking at, or I, I'm not trying to put a mystery together. You know, it's like if you're promoing promo or wait till it's time to promo this i i don't know what this is i mean does it build hype if because it's confusing right so uh, yeah yeah i don't understand like unless i you know comic skate drama posted this yellow flash like a coward has me blocked when he's like fucking uh snuck up on me like a japanese zero and a fucking uh bomb my pearl harbor the pearl harbor of our friendship uh, I was not expecting that. And he is a zero. He is one of the zeros that bombed the Pearl Harbor of our friendship, Shane. Uh, mm. And so I don't know what he's doing. All I know is Comics Gate Drama took a picture of this and posted it. Maybe there's a, a ton of other pages that he's posting of Dillard's. But Yellow Flash, you're a fucking moron for posting this page and pu putting this out there. Like, look at what Dillard is doing. There is nothing on this page that makes me say, wow, you're right, Yellow Flash. He's doing a great job. Maybe put up a page where he's actually fucking kicking some ass and you can tell what it is. Because this is, you can't tell what this is. This is like a page that I need to look at in the context of at least two or three other pages in order to understand it. Because you show this to any average person and they don't know what this is. And that's why Yellow Flash is stupid. He's a fucking low IQ spurg. Uh, this is retarded, Yellow Flash. It's fucking retarded that you put this out there. 
And Comicsgate Drama was right to like take it and post it because Comicsgate Drama knows like what he's doing. He knows people are gonna see this and go, Yellow Flash is a fucking retard. What is he talking about? Nice swastika though. Very well done. I mean, unfortunately or fortunately, that's the one clear the clearest thing on the page is that. <laughs> yeah, I know what that is. <laughs> I recognize that. I mean, I don't know if that's what... The, I mean, that shouldn't be the most important thing on the page, though. That shouldn't be the only thing I understand when I look at it. That That's actually bad. I it, it This is an in-between page, right, on the complicated action sequence. I'm assuming the robots have been established to pages before. That's, it, it shouldn't be out there on its own for judgment. It's, no, of course not. That's the entire point. There should be more page... Like, show me the page before this and the page after this. Because the page after this is the really interesting page because it should be like the robot explodes and you can see like a full figure of your hero and he looks cool and whatever it is. And the page before this would be him throwing the robot, I guess, or punching the robot into the other one. So that would be a good page. Why this page? Why? I I'm telling you, Shane, I'm trying to be patient. Okay, I know it doesn't seem like it. I'm trying if to be I, patient with everybody. If, if I had to guess the logic, it's to uh, be vague as possible because this is supposed to be unveiled at some time. Well, I at that point, I would just say, why put this out there? I didn't that, ask I mean, him to put this out there. I didn't say, I need to see a preview page now. No, he did this. Nobody's asking to take a look. Like, there's nobody who's saying, can we get a sneak peek of your exciting new yellow flash uh, project? Nobody gives a shit. Like... The fact that he's doing this, people are rolling their eyes over it and going, yeah, okay, of course you're going to do one too. Nobody's looking forward to Yellow Flash's comic book. Nobody is. They're just going to buy Dillard it. Dillard is it's... because he'll get paid. Oh, Dillard is. Yeah, he'll finally get paid for it. He's the only one. And he should have been um, paid a long time ago. This is retarded that he hasn't been paid yet. Yeah. It really is unethical. It really is stupid that he hasn't been paid yet. That is another reason why Yellow Flash is a goddamn moron. Um, you know, there's no reason. There's absolutely no reason why Dillard has not been paid. And now we're going on what? We're going on nine months that he's worked without a paycheck on this fucking piece of shit project that was supposed to come out in October. Nine months that he's been working on this for Yellow Flash without any paycheck. Oh, you, you own a piece of it. Right. What are you going to say, Ethan, when the, the project does really well? He gets paid. I'm going to say... The dude starved to death. His family, his house, like, uh, flooded. His house is gone. He lived in the backyard. Like, what is this? Fucking Survivor? Did he ask to do? Like, how, how hard? Did, stop, how, stop, stop, stop. <laughs> <laughs> He's got to fucking survive, and then he gets a million dollars, maybe, or a piece of a million. He doesn't even get a million dollars. He's Dillard's Tom Hanks and Castaway right now. He's about to start. No, because there's no fucking... money. There's no money in Castaway at the end of that. I'm saying, like, you know, you put him on a desert island, help him a celebrity, get me out of here or some shit, uh, naked and afraid or something. It's like, you know, this guy's got to fucking live the uh, wild, wild life, uh, you know, for like a year. That would be funny, though. It, it, in all seriousness, imagine doing a reality TV show. We could do it on YouTube, and we we get six comic book artists, and who can survive until the end of the comic to get paid on the back end? <laughs> yeah, like you can, <laughs> That would be a good show, man. It's like, yeah, look, <clears throat> one to of bargain you, with your landlord not to get evicted. <laughs> that's what Rip, that's what fucking uh, Ripazen should do, man. Ripazen should be like, look, none of us are getting paid. Okay, none of you are getting paid until the book is done. Uh, and, uh, you know, uh, except for, like, the artists. I'm talking about the, the writers, of course, like, you know, a Nerdrotic and these guys, they're going to be swimming in money. But the artists, get it done first because we're giving you a piece of it. You're going you're gonna to have 40% ownership, which equals zero ownership, by the way. And this is the other thing that's moronic about this, um, real quick. Ownership. So he owns the IP. He co-owns the IP, does he? Yellow Flash? So if there's an issue too, he can just say, you know what? I'm not drawing it. Get another artist and still collect his 40% because that's the deal that you just made with him. And Dillard, you should not draw it. You should just be like, I don't know, find someone else. Get Vic King to draw it uh, and I'll take my 40%. <laughs> Get Vic King to draw it. <laughs> Vic King is going to draw the second issue. Uh, so I, I want to elaborate a little bit on that. So um, I knew yeah. a guy that owned like 49% of a Honda dealership, right? Mm -hmm. ran it for years really thought he he had he was the boss of it 
turned out the guy that owned 51 percent of it was able to sell it out from up under the guy right whether he wanted it or not because he outweighed him in percentage and ownership now he would get that portion of the money but you have to understand these legal situations unless it's 50 50 you really have no control um on anything going forward because you're outweighed like in, in percentage mm -hmm. it's just what it is it, that's why when you own 40 percent of an ip you effectively own zero of zero. it zero when it comes to decision making etc yeah. etc but like i said you do own enough of it that you can just refuse to draw it and still get paid for it because oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah. i mean you know <laughs> talking about this tv show can you imagine they caught they're calling up like whoever like it, that they're working for and they're like oh please I, they come and evict me i got a notice on my door and i'm behind in my power to cut. i'm drawn by candlelight right now and hang in like, there draw hang in harder there. draw quicker it, you'll get the money get we gotta get to the end of it the money's at the end of it you know rip a send survivor it's you fucking you have to go nine months without a paycheck but maybe there's like you know 100 200 000 at the end of it but you have to go however long it takes to draw the book uh, you have to figure out another way to pay your bills in the meantime. God damn, that would be your fun. Your credit cards are in accumulating interest. <laughs> <laughs> and you're paying you for everything on credit card debt than you would originally <laughs> if you just had the money. Okay, and this huh. drives me crazy on this, and I I, yeah. would, I kind of feel like it should be voiced a little bit more. But so that industry practice, and I, when I mean creator own, even at image, when you see people working with artists to image. It is a 50-50 deal usually or something like that, but mm -hmm. they're paid some money from somebody's got to cough up some money to pay somebody, whether it's a writer or something, just so they can live. And then they of take course. that back off of their 50% of profit. You yeah, know, of course, of course. So it's kind of like a quarter with a string tied to it. You the, the person that that loaned the money takes it back out of their percentage you know, once the money comes in from Diamond. So, like, even people that do creator own books, like, in the mainstream, know this deal backfires so many times. And, and there's a lot, there's bad PR behind it. It's just a really bad situation. God forbid, like, like somebody dies. Then you've drawn this book that you can't finish and the person can't go to print with it. I mean, somebody gets hit by a bus. You have, like, 30 pages drawn to something that can never go to print and you never were paid for it to begin with. And these guys are always throwing each other under the bus. So it's likely to happen, Shane. Yeah. Uh, here's 200 watt studio who says he doesn't back the rainbow. He takes it from behind. This fucking, uh, Arden Thrasher says gay stall confirmed. Congrats on finally coming out. Ethan Shane is so supportive. Thank you for $5. Treble says Shane is an AIDS dumpster. Davis. Is there a theme going on here? You techno theme? Uh, Vengeance says, oy vey, oy vey, you missed my last super chat. James Gardner gifted five memberships, comic books and cahoots. And thank you for that. Comic books and cahoots says, Shane, is your arm well enough to punch children yet? Um, Yeah. Hey, just the little ones. Like, I'm, I'm in the, uh, you know, somewhere between six to eight. Hmm. Uh, Dark Low Comics says, Curves, Yaira's going to put an arch in your back. Uh, that Apple Pitch says, <laughs> an arch. I forgot about that. Uh, EFAP BTM right now. Old Man Dave is on ripping you. Uh, uh, opinion Nerded says, I rock with Old Man David. Uh, Russell Hall says, Rainbow the Brute is an action figure, but he's also a man, so he would definitely win. Uh, Cars and Dev says, Harmony needs both the white keys and the dark <laughs> darkies. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Cars and Dev. Uh, dark Low Comics says, The Average Gyra. Uh, Jose uh, M says, RDJ drug addict question should have been asked to Gary. Yeah, I said that too. Uh, not your dumbass. Gary's sitting there like an idiot again, just like during that Zack Snyder Geeks and Gamers stream. Thanks for $20. Sport Nugget for $2 says, imagine going on TV with all your toys behind you. Uh, <clears throat> Russell Hall says, to be fair, the Fox conservative boomers are a pretty dim crowd. I constantly hear from them about some random insightful comment from Bill Maher. Opinion Nerded says, uh, uh, at Rob, I don't mind suffering shoddy and red. Uh, she need to come see me. Uh, N-word, Shane, an N-word. How did you get N-word on the shoddy and red can get it, says Opinion Nerded. He likes that uh, black check on the panel. Uh, Dax and Mike says Barbie is better than anything in the Ripaverse. Uh, let me see. Uh, Sport Nugget says, Ethan, I've ordered a bunch of items from your eBay store, and they were all exactly what I ordered. Where are the warehouse mistakes that give me free shit? 
I don't know, man. I guess you're just not unfortunate like everybody else. Uh, thank you for $10. Apple Pitt says, would Gary ever debate you or is he truly afraid of you? Debate me about what? I would debate him about uh, something like Barbie if you wanted. Uh, and I, by the way, I would win the debate, but everybody would boo and hiss me. It is a really weird thing, the Barbie phenomenon. Uh, Main Struck Happy Davis says, radical idea here. Leem Anime Arena story. Uh, opinion nerded, $5. Look, wait, so how come... The early Yaira drawings and promo look all fly and ship, and now in her own book, she built like John Cena. John Cena! I think you you put that out there, and it makes sense. Is um, They started filming that, past that girl, and then all of a sudden now she's built like a dude. A brick shithouse? Well, yeah, I was about to say that, but yeah. Um, <clears throat> I mean, that makes sense. I, I can't stand when characters are drawn inconsistently. Like, I'm OCD with that shit. Mm -hmm. Like, it drives me nuts. Yeah, I don't like it either. It's gay. Crypto Ken gives five memberships. Uh, John Metzakis says, Ethan, quick random question while I'm working on it. Oh, this looks so good. Does Rumblebee and his clones use weapons other than the pistol and the sting? Uh, no, just that pistol. And, John... If you finish that sculpt and it's good, uh, you know, we're going to, I'm going to borrow, I'm going to buy it from you. I'm going to turn it into the uh, Rumblebee action figure because I like it a lot. And I, everybody else that I've asked to do the Rumblebee sculpt, they've been like, can I do something other than Rumblebee? You got it right. Oh, but fix the, uh, we're going to have to fix his bumble butt, uh, his thorax. Um, I think, uh, I think it should be a little bit more streamlined. Um, Enrique, the scroll says, wait, so when Yara said adopt or die, she was talking to CG. Yes. Is the rip verse mm. a blood soul deal with Satan says Pilgrim media? How empty are these guys lives that they're investing all this energy into someone else's thing? I like cyber frog, but I'm not going to proselytize for it. Says cars and dub. Um, uh, dude, I, I've had nothing but these concerned trolls coming at me saying, oh, your project looks interesting, but you're not saying enough about Eric or you're saying the wrong thing or whatever. You need to step away from Ethan Van Skyver. Like, the, I'm no bullshit. I, I, for two days, I'm eating this shit. That's how and it is. It, it's so gay. Mm -hmm. It's so gay. It's like, dude, if I don't like the product and I've gotten it now in my hands and I've went through it i'm not gonna support it this shit started also a couple of months for me anyways where people are like why aren't you doing videos on alpha course success it's because i don't want to because it his numbers are going down well what is a success anyway shane i well i t so a to success me, is like a good comic right yeah yeah for me i mean not every if you historically went through like the icv2 numbers and you were like what's the top selling comic what made the most money sometimes they're the greatest comics and sometimes they're not sometimes the greatest books and the greatest runs are actually like on the sales chart like in the middle mm -hmm. you know they're they're not at the bottom you know but they're not number one either you know so like i i just this this the number is the quality of the book thing is just super gay. I, I don't. And it, and and that's their argument is is the number. That's it. That's the argument. And and it's weird too. Like when people were bragging, I saw a clip and they were bragging about the success of it. I think it was Friday Night Tights and Gary and As and Eric. It, it's like nobody saying any character names, any moments. You know, they're acting like the Ira is such a big deal, but nobody knows a fucking thing about the character, really. It's it's like, it, it just it blows my mind. I mean, we're they're talking about a company and a book from a man who's three books in. People will keep using the excuse, well, it sucks because it's his first book. No, this is his fourth book. And, you know, the third one wasn't great either, and he's hiring, like, trained professionals to do it. I yeah. promise you I could have hired Joe Bennett and I could have hired Chuck Dixon and produced a better book than that. Yeah, well, and you could have hired them too because they are, they're available uh, yeah. for work. I hired Chuck. I got something off of Chuck, uh, you know. Um, I didn't hire Joe Bennett, um, but R.T. Bear did. He got a cover off of him. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm I, The whole phenomenon, 
I, I even called it a phenomenon. It, it's fucking weird. It's gay. It's like, and, and, and to have riptards run up your ass on Twitter about it, it's like, in, in all of it's like, well, you're misguided. Well, you need to promote. Why don't you say nice things about Eric? Oh, it hurts me. Hurts my feelings that you did a cover for Eric and now you don't like it's like if I had to I'm gonna be honest and anybody can clip this and you know this. I had a lot of issues with Eric when he kind of said shit about crowdfunding. Mm -hmm. Like that rubbed me the wrong way. And yeah. the fact that I've never really seen an apology, I just see denial and even his backers pretending he didn't rubs me even more the wrong way. So whatever, you know, like I, I don't care. I'm not here. My my purpose isn't to support him. I mean, I did him a cover. That's it. You know, I don't owe him anything else. He doesn't owe me a fucking thing. He doesn't owe you anything, Shane? Well, maybe he does. But, um, you know, it is what it is. It is. <clears throat> uh, okay. Hold on a second. Uh, Ethan brings Shane on the show to make us appreciate Ethan. Says so being nice. That's not nice. Why is your name being nice? A uh, hundred dollar cover. Says uh, Santa Metal. That bothered Shane too. Um, here's Blue Boy Comics, who is a homosexual. Says uh, all the kings are sucking Eric's dick for a cover job. It's pathetic. They put their good work on shit books. Blue Boy Comics. I thought you were like a ripetard. Or is it you just hate me? I don't. I can't tell anymore, man. I think it's just uh, some people are like you know what I hate Eric and Ripperverse, but I also hate you. And I'm like, wow, dude, what are you doing in the chat? But who do it. you hate less? <laughs> yeah, like who do you hate less? Like hopefully you hate me a little less. Uh, Sheila Alien says Shane is being coy. Shane, are you being I don't coy? Think so uh, she misspelled gay. That's all. Mm. I think pretty sure. Um, all right, who cares? Yeah, you didn't get any copies, Shane. You no. Got no comp copies. No, I bought a book. copy. Uh, no, they sent me one comp copy. That was a... They sent me zero comp copies. And I had to ask an employee of the warehouse to get me one, so I don't even know if he just gave me one of his. Hmm. Uh, Blue Boy Comics says, no, I love CG. I love EVS and Shane. Oh, you do? Oh. Okay. Are you gay, too? I mean, I don't know if you're gay. Maybe I was wrong. We don't think of someone else. Nice Godzilla. Yeah. I take it back, Blue Boy Comics. Uh, Ten Letters says, uh, what you said about drinking, encouraging Super Chats is true. I'm not only a customer, I'm a client. Shug Shungite forever. Cheers, buds. It is. Oh, yeah, guys. Drink up and send me money. Yeah. Shane, that is how... Uh, that is why people like to do live streams on Friday and Saturday night because everybody's drunk and they just go into the night and then people are like, here's $300. Woo! And what I gotta read your comment for three hundred dollars from Aubrey. Uh, woo! Thank you for three hundred dollars. Woo! Three hundred dollars. <laughs> and and uh, it is a good time to sell comics. To be honest, yeah, it is. It, it, yeah, it it's is. a good time to sell comics. Where is Deborah Carita? Says Rothgar the Dane. There are only four YouTube videos about her since her announcement. The main one is in Portuguese, but shows her work, but not uh, Yaira. Uh. What the hell was I talking about? Never call people gay again, says Awazaru. You shut up, Awazaru, homo homosexual. Uh, hold on a second. Uh, where is Deborah Carita? Here's where she is. This is my opinion that may or may not be informed by actual employees of the Ripaverse that are speaking in my ear, despite the uh, conflict of interest, Shane. Shane, mm -hmm. you know, there are some people over at the Ripaverse who, who uh, like me. Did you know that? Yeah. Yeah. They're uh moles, you got a mole on the inside. A few. We like to do that. You know, we keep them paranoid. We got we got moles on the inside everywhere. I mean, look at PTP. We still have moles in his riot press room. He doesn't even know about it. Yeah. Uh, you know, we like to know what people are saying at all times so that we can laugh at them in private. No, you are gay, says Jay Sim. What the hell was I talking about? Oh yeah. Here's what's going on. Uh Deborah Carita. Uh, is not a comic book artist. She is a pinup artist. And there's a, a big, wide... Shane, the difference between drawing a nice pinup and then telling stories, how vast is that fucking chasm? 
So for a pinup of a one character, you have to draw one face. For a comic book page, you're going to draw like maybe five, six varying sizes, multiple people in a panel. It just compounds, you know, and you have to know how to lay out. You have to know how to break things down and get a story across and uh, still do a money shot when you have to. It's a different skill set. Right. Yeah, you got to be able to be like, oh, um, okay, so uh, Brian Soleri and a prisoner with a shaved head are sitting at a prison table, interview table, uh, when suddenly they hear a noise uh, coming from their left and both turn to respond to it in shock. Panel two, they can't believe it when uh, Ricky Retardo and uh, the other chick from uh, Alpha Corps run in the room and warn them, oh no, Yaira's free, she's out. Um, you got to know how to draw that, right? Some people, like it sounds easy, but it isn't easy. Like not everybody can draw comics. It's just not easy. So I think that she found herself in that spot. And I think that, um, you know, she may or may not have finished drawing the book. Um, but I will say this, whatever, uh, the book is being redrawn and, uh, they're going to be, they've got Joe Bennett on it and they're inking it with an eraser and then redrawing it. And, um, it's not finished yet. So I don't know if Deborah Carita actually finished the book or if maybe she's not going to finish the book or somebody else is going to finish the book for her, but it ain't ready. So, uh. There you go. That's and uh, I've heard people say, that's not Joe Bennett. I don't see his name. Why would he do that? You throw enough money at somebody, they'll do it. <clears throat> There's tons of Jim Lee artwork that um, is from All-Star Batman that's on products. And I was the guy that went in and redrew all the faces because he had stubble on. So they could use it for T-shirts. And Scott Williams had done all the rain running through Batman. I had to go and patch up all that and then add legs. Because yeah. DC Comics was mm -hmm. like, hey, we're short on your contract and we'll make it up, but we need you to just go over these. And I, it was a really big payday for very little work. I mean, it is possible that that situation is happening on that book with Joe Bennett. Yeah. Um, and the thing about it is, is that yeah, people don't understand. It, Shane, people don't understand how great you and I are. Like, they really don't understand, like, how amazing we are that we can do what we do. They don't get it. You know, it's like we have to remind them constantly of our greatness. Uh, oh, we can draw comic books, you know? It's like, that's not something everybody can do. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, you know, I mean, it's... telling a story just with a blank sheet of paper. I mean, when you think about it, pretty amazing feat. You have to be a very a talented individual. Mm -hmm. Very talented, very talented indeed. Oh my oh, God, uh, Eric DeBunks is here. Hold on a second. Uh, let me see if he's in. Actually, there he is. I was told that I was. I was. I was told you thought I was copying your beard color. I will not be silenced. Well, uh, Eric DeBunks, we watched a video on you that made you look like you were one of uh, FBI's top ten most wanted uh, from Rip Reverse Gold Posts, complete with music like that in the background. Well, they said Eric DeBunks lets everybody know he's queer. Uh, and he has written some unhinged messages back and forth uh, with uh, Eric July. He will not debate Eric July. It was pretty cool, man. I liked it. And I didn't watch the, all of the Rip Reverse Gold Post video, but I will soon. Uh, I really liked that a lot. Uh, you look deranged, dude, so Sashiel Free. That is true as well. You did look deranged. But listen, he didn't get final edit of the documentary. Like, It's not like you get to choose. It's not like you get final cut. Uh, of your own hit piece. Like, that never happens to me. I never got final cut of my own hit pieces. Not once. You know, so it uh, just seems like... Uh... Oh, there's Eric DeBunks. I love that video. I am gay. I am homosexual. I love men. It is my entire personality, lol. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I know. Uh, Rodimus88 says, is Ethan gay? Uh, no. Uh, I am heterosexual. Uh, and that is uh, my entire personality, too. Straight and white. Straight and white, Shane. Like these teeth. Yeah, it's really hard being a straight white man today. We need, yeah. I think we need a month. I think we should claim a month and just make it straight white <laughs> heterosexual month. Yeah, I agree with you. Uh, I agree with you. I always have, though. I mean, you are probably one of the nicest, <laughs> smartest guys uh, in the world. And I, uh, I admire you, Shane. 
Right. I appreciate that. No, same to you. Uh, what were we even talking about? <laughs> the girl uh, got picked to do interiors. <laughs> <laughs> doesn't matter. Talking about this thing. Ivory and ivory live together in heterosexuality. You don't like it? I'm not. It's a high key, Shane. I won't. No, yeah, that's going. really good. I appreciate it. Got yeah. me uh, to sit up straight. Dude, I got... I know I'm, I'm not trying to change subjects, but I just gotta get this out. <laughs> I cringe the same brown. <laughs> we all know that... Hold on a second. You gotta be... What? 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 Everybody's mad at me? Drop the octave? All right, hold on. Let me try again. No? Uh, Eric DeBunks, here's Epic Mike, says, with all the hate for Epic Verse, I guess it felt personal. Epic Mike, why don't you come in here, too? Why is everybody afraid to talk to me, Shane? Because you'll get swarmed by Ripa hard on <sighs> Twitter. Ivory and Have, have you been ivory. keeping up with that? that? What I'm saying is really a thing. Like, Keep writing people. the song with me. Right, right, right. Live together in heterosexuality. Let's do that. Uh, Simon. Can you guys help me? Like, what is the next line from that? I think that would be good. Uh, Ethan, that's why you don't get invited on Pierce Morgan. Shit. Everything I do is wrong. Everything I do is wrong. All right, what were you going to say, Shane? Sorry. No, there's this whole thing where Ripetards are trying to so division like they're trying to bully people into being uh either take a side against you or just not be around you like i literally am seeing like people in twitter saying shane needs to quit being around ethan you don't need to be in the shadow you need to separate he's toxic he's radioactive blah 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 stuff like that like so if, you know that's going on if that's not on your radar i'm just letting you know Are you telling me that annoying people are going to be, uh, are not going to want to be around me? Shane, you tell me that there people are saying people are trying to get me or other people not to be around you. Oh, well, uh, it's everybody's choice. No, I don't think that people understand, uh, who I am and what I represent. Uh, I am not somebody that's begging for acquaintances. Quite the contrary. Now, Shane, I need you, and I need John Malin, okay? I like you two guys. I like a few other people. I like Mandy, too. But honestly, Shane, I am somebody who would live quite comfortably in a bomb shelter. I've written a song about it. Uh, you ever hear my song about a bomb shelter? No. I've heard you talk about it, but I've never heard a song about it. You never heard me sing a song about my bomb shelter. Are you serious? No, I, 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 you look. I've seen a lot of live streams. I don't. I do not recall you ever singing a song about a bomb shelter. Shane, I want you to listen. Want to hit? Hit go. Okay. Here it goes. Everybody in the chat is cursing me for bringing this up. Catchy tune. I mean, I'm feeling it. Oh, shit. It's 1230 in, in the morning. Just saying, I think Shane hates the chat. I, I mean, some of you that hate me, sure. Shrebbles, wooden shot. Yeah. You can live without them. Yeah. 
It, uh, uh, all right, hold on a second. We got a lot to do. We still have stuff to do here. Uh, old man David just made a video just now not thanking you. Uh, will Yaira have the same accent in the comics as Enrique the Squirrel? That would be hard to do. Uh, is Starlight Cats and Inglorious a shared universe as opinion nerded? Um, <clears throat> I, I dream one day that I would have like just a fun one shot where these multiple characters get yanked together in one universe for a fun one shot. I, I dream of that one day. I dream I have, of that. I've one written day. it where that could happen, but it would just be a hokey kind of like pull to another universe to fight something type one shot. But it would just be a hokey pull to one side of the uh you and Wong. <coughs> Twenty dollars. Thank you for that. Speaking of throwing enough money at someone, I know for a fact that a number of us would pay EBS a fair fee to review comic books we made in private consultation. We just want to improve our work. Ethan, how do you feel about it? Shane, I like it. How do you feel about it? Um, I don't know if I would have an issue with it. I've seen certain people kind of do stuff like that. Um, Sean Gordon Murphy did that to buy a house. I don't know if you know that story. No. So... It was like an apprenticeship. He only took 10 people. He just bought a house. He needed some money. And he basically had just moved into this house and, and had these guys come in, pay him X amount of money. They lived there, and they all worked on a comic together that eventually printed. Um, I think it was only like 10 people. Maybe it was two weeks. Something How much like did they that. pay him? 10 people paid him. I think I, this goes back years, way before he was doing crowdfunding. So, like, I, I'm, I'm pulling from memory. Somebody could go look it up, I guess. Um, but, yeah, it was something like that. Yeah. So. Let's say you're buying a house. Let's just say you're buying a small house, $300,000. So, 10 people would each have to pay him $30,000 in order for him to be able to do that and buy a house. Just doesn't seem right to me, Shane. They want to see CG Survivor Island. That'd be funny. Uh, Sean Gordon Murphy only cares about money. He has his original IP has zero people talking about it. Oh, the zero people are talking about his IP. Why won't they talk about uh, Isom? The zeros, none of them have talked about Isom. Uh, Margaret Merkel says, "Is the future so bright, Ethan? Is it is it so bright that you need to wear shades?" Scott Start says, Ethan, man lover, you missed my chat. It's a man lover. <laughs> uh, what? I didn't miss your chat, did I? A Vengeance says, you missed again. I said, get your vid maker to parody a nerdrotic Friday Night Touch review of the Ira trailer using sound bites for their criticisms of the MCU. Oh, that would be good. Um, Scott Start, I read this one. I want a hamburger right now. How, I mean, seriously, how do you have an issue with the MCU and not tear into that trailer? Uh, for real, I, Shane, I really don't know. Uh, I see that trailer and it sets off so many alarm bells. Uh, I mean, about how are you going to talk shit about Batwoman, which I've seen episodes of? I saw at least three episodes and not yeah. talk shit about that trailer. It's fucking weird. It is weird, Shane. Uh, Look. You want a sandwich? What do you want? Baconator combo? No. I have a salad right here. I'm actually what? trying to drop some weight this week. So, no. Shane, a Baconator is a half pound of fresh beef, American cheese, six pieces of crispy applewood smoked I bacon. digest that. I'm actually on some medication. I can't eat shit like that. Are you serious? Yeah, I, I, I'm on, like, the doctor gave me some steroids right now, so... Uh, J.D. Kirby says, transcended past participle, go beyond the range of limits. I'm a cosmic being, 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 be great. And you stink, Ethan. That is all, slaves. Why do I stink? Ethan, let's get Shane wound up. Pull up the tweets. What tweets, Jasper, plan on? Uh, um, just... What tweets? What tweets? Oh, people uh, uh, telling Shane that he should stay away from me? Shane, uh, could you give Here's us an update one. on accent level up? Uh, looking forward to it. Ethan is gay. Uh, all right, Shane uh, accent. Oh yeah, it's um, it's coming along. I I have like one more page I got to draw on it, and um, 
it's coming along guys you can go check it out on nine lives comics or you can you know uh back in glorious rex volume two which is coming down in two days um so i would i would highly suggest bringing that up um before extend right now but um this was one of the this is type of shit i was talking about oh sure this is attack of the mo this individual here is a manga fanatic an anime anime maniac who uh, I uh, have been telling to go fuck themselves for a long time. They say that they met me in a Target in uh, Marlton. That's never happened. I've never met a fan at a Target in Walmart, um, um, Marlton ever. It's never happened. Uh, and they go, Don't you, I've met you three times. Are you going to fuck with me? You met somebody who you thought was me, uh, but you never met me. Now, this individual threatens me all the time. You keep talking shit about Manga Ethan. You see what fucking happens to you. I'm going to turn 4chan's manga fans on you. You think you can fucking... You think you could talk shit about Japan? You don't know nothing. You don't know nothing about Lollicon. Uh, you think that, like, you're going to stop me from... And I'm like, what the... F Just shut the fuck up! And that's what I say, but I don't say it. I, these people are involved in a, a war against me that I am not participating in. I don't know what you're talking about. So anyway, this individual reaches out to you. Now, this is part of the war. How can I, a creepy, weird manga fanatic, uh, convince Shane Davis that he should separate from Ethan? Shane, dot, 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 I'm not going to judge you or tell you how to do your business, but you need to get out of VS's shadow. How do you get out of my shadow, Shane? I don't think you can run that far. No, you cast a big shadow, you know, you, you big guys, big shadows. It must have been cold there in my shadow to never feel sunlight on your face. He's one attack away from damaging whatever cred CG has left. Forget Eric and save yourself. You don't need EVS mailing. And you, wait, you don't need EVS. Malin and you are the last true CGs. Don't fight EVS's wars. It's good advice, Shane. And why did you not, the, the worst part of it is that you click like and retweet on that. I was like, the fuck? Like, yeah, is, I, I tried to undo it before I shared it, but you know, <laughs> you yeah. know I just needed to let, uh, I, it's, so weird it's like people trying to manipulate me into not having my opinion on the situation and and look me and you disagree on things like i i mean it's not like i'm sitting here agreeing with everything you know you say but it's like there's some issue that i'm not on board with or i'm not sitting here endorsing everything eric does i i don't understand that I'm not out here expecting Eric to endorse everything I do. Why am I expected to endorse everything he does? To the point I've had people on my YouTube comments saying, why aren't you doing more coverage of Eric July? It's like, I don't know, because it's not interesting. Well, uh, you know, you and I know uniquely, and so does John Malin, uh, how badly he sucks. And this is the problem. Other people don't yet realize that. We do... Uh, and uh, we know what he's doing. We know what his game plan is. We know what he's uh, doing behind the scenes. Other people might not know that, but we do know it. And so that's one of the things. Uh, there are still some people who are going to go, what can I get off of this situation? I want you to understand that after I did that cover for uh, Ripaverse, they had the fucking audacity to say to me, there could be something in here for you too, you know. Shane, they wanted to they wanted to subsume me and have yeah. me go work at Ripaverse. These people are crazy. They are fucking their their egos are out of control. You think I have a big ego, Shane? No, I so I I don't you ain't think seen that's crazy. Ego. Well, I mean, I this do. is where I disagree with you. I don't think that's crazy. I think that's a desperate plea of necessity. Like they're going to for to sustain the hype. Like, he's going to have to pull in, and he's already trying to pull in more talented people than, like, Cliff Richards and stuff. He's going to have to eventually pull... Well, what about in. Bart Sears? Bart Sears. What about... Uh, I, I want you to know, uh, in the chat, that everybody that Eric is that could possibly hire, we've already... 
we, we've already, you know, and the, the one kind of like, there could be a wild card out there, like Mark Brooks might do it just to say to me, um, I, I couldn't care like that. It wouldn't work. I'd be like, um, but I mean, we've already been through all these people. We know who uh, is available to us, you know, all this stuff. There's no, uh, Shane, am I, am I talking out of school? No, I mean, like a lot of these people have been approached. Um, and a lot of these guys, the, the, I'm actually trying not to talk out of school now. I know it's hard, man. It's hard to speak not out of, it's hard to stay in pocket, isn't it, Shane? The biggest problem he has with reigning in talent, right? Yeah. Is they really don't have to have a ginormous campaign on their own to make more than working for him. And that is a problem for him. What it is, is Shane Dumpster Diver Davis wants to, dump, Shane Dumpster Davis wants to EFAP Sturgis's latest video. No, I don't. I don't. Maybe. I, if you uh, want to okay. pull it up. I will. I was going to do the Sturgis video about me being a liar. Uh, no, but do that. Do that. I, I don't want to get riled up. Um, Because somebody asked about Extend, um, and, and can you uh, let me pull this up for a minute? Sure. Yeah. There's only two days left on this, and we have officially gotten... It's not Extend. Not Extend. Buy Inglorious Rex. Buy yeah. Inglorious Rex. It's coming down in two, two days. We are supposed to be... Um, the files are going to the printer next Tuesday and next yeah. Tuesday, we, sh at the end of the day, we should have an estimate of when we'll have the books in. So everything's looking good. If you guys will please go back to this campaign right now, we have hit $303,000. Now that is the magic number that glorious Rex one did hit. If we hit $46,000 in this, whether it's a main Davis t-shirt or a comic, everything in this campaign gets a main davis trading card stats bio all that shit on the back really cool matches all the other trading cards so guys please go check this out i think it closes saturday night in two days that will be saturday night so definitely go check it out no in demand we are going to the printer so please consider backing a beautiful book about monsters hitting one another there's more to it than that but uh you guys will find out when you get the book and uh Thanks for all the support for getting us to three hundred and three thousand dollars. Seriously, it's it's really been a big thing for us. Um, that's twice we've been able to do that on this on this IP. So it means a lot to me and Yanzi. Uh, it means a lot to me that they're doing that for you, Shane. Yeah, Shane. What and I've done is I've uh, ordered Wendy's. Uh, I have ordered. Are you ready for this? Hold on a second. Uh, not for you, unless you want some. No, hell no. Don't get excited. <laughs> Thank God. Okay, yeah, no, it's for me. I ordered a pretzel baconator. Uh, I ordered french fries, <sighs> and I ordered chicken McNuggets. Not chicken McNuggets, chicken nuggets. I'm really hungry. I have not eaten anything all day. All right, really? no, Shane. No, all day. I haven't, all day. I have not eaten anything. You didn't even day. eat breakfast? No, I haven't eaten anything. How do you I'm get up and not eat breakfast? Like you I have so to. much to do. I, I'm fucking time. I got so much to do. I got people yelling at me. I got to do. Uh, I got to get Dark Harvest done. I got Rainbow the Brood. I got to ship things out all day. Then I got to do. Uh, it, yeah. It's a, it's a it's a fucking nightmare. And then I got to keep this show going. And then when I do this show, people think this is all I do. And they go, "Look at him. He's live streaming all day long when he could be doing the books that he owes." Shane, it's a nightmare. But I know they're doing it on purpose. The same people. Uh, who are driving you nuts are trying to drive me crazy on purpose. No, I didn't get a frosty. No frosty. Yeah, no, why stop there? Add the frosty. No, no, no. I already ordered it. I don't want a frosty. I don't want one. I'm going to drink water. I, I really just want that hamburger. Wait, really you're going to eat all that and then top it off with a bottle of water? Yeah, my water. I don't want it. I don't want the sugar. I got chicken yeah. nuggets. I got, look, check this out. <laughs> you start with an appetizer of chicken nuggets. 10 of them, 10 piece chicken nuggets. Then you move on to French fries and then a big hamburger, big meaty hamburger. That's what I want right now. That's what I'm craving. And I'm going to give into my cravings for once. And a lot of people are saying, you know, Ethan. Uh, yeah, you've never given in to cravings. No, I never do. Before. I'm very. Never, never. Just this one time. Of course. Of course. Like, why would I? Uh, all right. Now, hold on a second. It's all fat uh, and carbs. That's what we're going for. 
I heard a nice on number two cover sold for a thousand dollars on eBay. It says Phil T. Koontz. That's not true. Was it graded? Uh, no. It wasn't. It was USDA graded by this hmm. man right here. This hunk of beef right here. That's the other thing that drives me crazy about the Ripaverse people and the Friday Night Tight stuff. And I'm not really trying to get in and, and dig in on those guys. But if Marvel and DC put out a book called Horseman, either yeah. company, yeah, everybody would have done videos on it. Yeah, they would have made fun of it, of course. Yeah, on announcement, Horseman could have been the new, whatever, new warriors for DC or Marvel. Like, that would have been the thing that everybody would have been laughing all over YouTube about. But somehow it's given a pass because it's Eric. You get it? Like, that, more, that shit, none of that shit sits right with me. It's like... Yeah, an ISOM cover sold for $1,000 on eBay. Maybe if it was a 10. Horse man. I don't know. That's just where I'm at. Chat says, Shane, you are correct. Go with that. Yeah, but it's like, so... I don't know. Like, I wanted to do a video on just how crazy it was. But at the same time, out of respect for Chuck, I was like, no... I guess not. Would that have been wrong of me if I'd done that? Probably. Why not? Let me see what I got here. Nothing I can hold up. Buying glorious Rex guys. Get it. Get it. While the getting's good. Get so a I had to go to the bathroom cop. real quick. Did you're you back. ever know that you're a zero? Uh, Scott Sir says, uh, what it is is Ethan Van Zero skipping chats it is. No, I, I got it. I, I Thank you for $20. I didn't even realize it. Uh, John uh, W. Smokes Jr. says, choosing sides is what Wokies do. Ethan Gay. Uh, Attack of the Mo. Manga sucks. Come get me, says J.D. Kirby. Uh, how is the gay initiative guy the coolest one? Lol, says Unfactual Facts. Taco Bell, probably safe for Shane, says Tuna Watt Studio. Shane, like King Kong, EJ ain't got shit on you, says Travis Parrick. You know what uh, that's from? What, what? What's that a quote from? Uh, I don't know. Training day, Denzel Washington go, King Kong ain't got shit on me. She. she. He's, the, he's, he's there at the end when they're, everybody, the hood's turning on him. Yeah. Uh, hi, Uncle E. Who do I contact? Uh, Bull Rush 4570 about a question regarding one of my orders. Shane, very excited for Inglorious Rex uh, too. Thank you. And you guys are ordering a hot and ready book. I mean, it took a while to make. It. I, I've probably spent more time on this book than ever. But uh, it is ready to go to print and hopefully we'll get it turned around fairly quick. Uh, we're going to get my mother in over here for fulfillment. Nice. Alright, Shane, uh, Cyberfroghelp at gmail.com will rush. If you All guys right. will, if you guys do back, it will, um, we can really splurge for her coming over, poke some holes in the box for air, you know? Why would you do that to your, don't do that. Like, let her sleep in a bed somewhere, or at least on the couch. Shane, we got a video to watch here. Uh, yeah. Here we go. Let me get this. Uh, let me get, I'm not going to watch anymore. Oscar. By the way, people tell me, like, uh, uh, will you please, like, um, uh, EFAP something? And then I do, and then they say, stop EFAPing this. Like, listen, I don't, I'm here to serve the customer. Make signals, am I right? Yeah, it is. All right, it's the Sturgis Show. It's the Sturgis Show. It's time to watch Sturgis. It's the Sturgis Show. The Sturgis Show. The Sturgis Show. It's time to watch Sturgis. Suck off, Eric. Suck off, Eric. Suck off, Eric. July. I love you, Eric. I'm the greatest, blah, blah, blah. I'm the best. I'm talented. Notice me. Notice me. Haters because they're jealous. Notice me, Eric. I'm a success. I don't use 3D assets, blah, blah, blah. Something, something. Bullshit. Eric, I love you. I love you. My are all jealous. I'm a comic. My haters, blah, blah, blah. Something, something. Bullshit. I'm the greatest, blah, blah, blah. Are you ready? Mm. 
It's a Sturgis show. All right, here we go. Hello, everyone. I'm Reed Now Zero, and I cannot believe I have to be making this video once again, talking about how Eric July has never downplayed the importance of crowdfunding a book. But of course, people in the indie comic space seem to get this weird idea that he was attacking crowdfunding, which is something he's never done. Even people that have disagreed with me have agreed that no, Eric hasn't downplayed crowdfunding or attacked crowdfunding. And I can't believe I have to really do this video to talk about this nonsense and show you the nonsense that is being said currently. So of course, yeah, I you know what? I wonder if like, if he, if this were like comic book survivor, do you think Sturgis could like chew down a tree with his own face and, and teeth and like build himself like a dam to live in? I think, uh, yes, I think he would get all the pussy on the island because he would be able to, to, to chew through wood and build, um, you know, shelter. Shane, he would be all the pussy on the island. Trust me. <laughs> he would be all the pussy. He would be. Uh, He's so like, uh, I got myself. Uh, yeah, no, I, I don't. I, I, I don't really find the guy. Evidently, says he buys my books. I don't know if he does. I, I don't know. This is like again something I've been having a lot of riptards coming at me with. Like, hey, I bought this book, or I was thinking about buying your book. You should say what I want you to say. Yeah, I, uh, I believe it. You know. I just think Sturgis, like, does Sturgis live in Portland, Oregon? I feel like he does, man. There's something about him that just strikes <laughs> me as, like, Portland. In Portland, they have a lot of, like, uh, giant water rats named Nutria uh, that look like that look like him. You ever see a Nutria in uh, Portland, Oregon? No. Uh, yeah. Okay. Hold on. Let's find here. Pull one of these up. Yeah, Nutria. And they're like, nah, 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 nah. And uh, they will... Uh, they build dams. They chew things. They have like you know they're dirty oh, yeah. and everything. You've seen yeah, these, yeah. Uh, and they're they're large. They're like the size of small dogs, you know. And they will. Uh, anyway, that's I just wonder. Looks like like um, yeah, all right. Yeah, if we uh, if we were actually doing the comic book survivor thing, I think he'd be all right. He he would survive. Uh, rats usually do. Number one is at one point one million. Over one point one million. Now, if we hit two million. It will get the Yara statue. Of course, Blade Devil 2 is fantastic. I can't wait to get it. It looks great. I've read Blade Devil number one. If you want to get in on it, you get on it here at this campaign. Now, we have Shane Davis. Obviously, he is spewing the same talking points that EVS has put out because Shane doesn't know. By the way, why would well, I haven't put out any talking points about this? I don't care about this. Uh, it is a fact that uh, Eric July did denigrate crowdfunding. Whether you want to admit it or not, he denigrated crowdfunding by saying, these people sit on your money for three years, and then they they sit on your money. Our books are ready. They're done. Shane, is it, was it like that? Um. And by the way, I'm the only one sitting on your money for three years. It isn't like right. everybody is. Here, it's uh, just here's me. it in writing from him. This is an Eric July tweet. What's it you say? Know, Launch with the product complete. We go the extra mile of having prints done prior to our launch of pre-order. But that's not a requirement for reasonable turnaround. Customers are parting with parting ways with their money going in my pocket. And that should be taken seriously. Not for granted. A lot of these delays and lack of fulfillment are due to creators being undisciplined. Some are selling you a proof of concept and not an actualized product. And because they are already have your money, if they don't have the drive or respect for their customers, they have little incentive to hustle to get it completed and delivered. That sounds like he's denigrating crowdfunding. He's trying yeah, to say that it his definitely version does. is better. Yeah, no, it definitely does. And, and, and that's not even him from a video. That's... In writing, I mean, there are videos of him attacking and saying people don't have discipline. And once we get the money, we don't even know what to do with the money. We're just drunk with whatever. And we don't have discipline. Here's the, my fucking issue with that. And 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 it is. Discipline gets a level of artwork. It gets a, a level of artwork achieved, right? There, there was a discipline. Of course, there's discipline to complete something, but there's a discipline to just get your skill level up. 
Like that doesn't just happen on its own. It happens from multiple, multiple, multiple drawings, right? And trying to get better. That is a form of discipline. So I, the word discipline just being thrown around because, oh, it's done. It's, yeah, there's a ton of done, done bad comics. That, there's tons of done bad comics that you don't one. have to pay shipping for. Go to your local comic two. shop. They're drowning in them. Alpha They're drowning form. in them. Those are done and they suck. Yeah, Shane, yeah. There's a lot of this uh, again, and and people just kind of like, um, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna write a comic book. I'm gonna hand it off to some Brazilians, uh, and I'm gonna get a project. I'm gonna get a product to you. Uh, in the time that it, it it's gonna be a piece of shit. Hold out your hand and let me shit in it. You can have it right now. Uh, that is essentially what uh, he's doing. Shame. And well, and, and this is the part that really bugs me is them trying to say or pretend like I'm wrong. He's never said this. Look, he he fucked up. He fucked up. I get it. He fucked up. He didn't fuck up once. He fucked up multiple times on that note. And and the reason why I'm going to say he's fucked up. Yeah, he's making a lot of money and all that. But there was no reason to shit on crowdfunding except you have your books printed. And that was your one angle to be like, hey. I'm better That's, than them because my book's point. already done. But you didn't even need to do that. Like, he would have sold to, you know, his fans anyway. Yo, no, he didn't need to do that. Actually, he did need to do that because he has really poor quality books, so he had to do that. Oh, they wouldn't have known that until, you know, the books already came in. No, but when he when did he do that? He did that around, like, after two. After oh, he put I don't out remember. Two books. He'd already, he already kind of blew the vein, so to speak. You know, people already saw the, the quality of the product. So now oh. it's time to double down and start attacking their products not done. Mine is. And that's why you want to buy my product because it's already done. The problem <laughs> with attacking crowdfunding, and I've, I've kind of been involved with people in crowdfunding going back since like 2010, is yeah. like crowdfunding is a way for a lot of individual comic book creators if we're only talking about comics, but it could, it, this could, crowdfunding encompasses everything from fucking pillows to headphones, skateboards, whatever. Is it, it basically gets rid of gatekeepers. If the product's good, if there's a demand for the product, if there's interest in the product, some guy can make a product possible. Shitting on crowdfunding is a really bad idea, especially if you're trying to, it's like, you're a wolf shitting on sheep, but you're 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 also trying to hide in sheep clothing. Don't don't. I mean, why you're you have a counter? Why are you, you know, why are you shitting on crowdfunding when you literally have a campaign crowder? Why is your books called a campaign and, and, and have a, a you're counting money, trying to hide people, but then you're shitting on crowdfunding? Like, why would you do that? You're yes. literally trying to look like you're crowdfunding, but you're not because your books are already printed. It's, I don't know. That's my issue with it. Now, if he wants to make a video and says, this has never been said, I just read a goddamn tweet and that's not the countless fucking videos of it. Hmm. Uh, I, yeah, Shane, I agree with you. Um, Oh, did he post this after I uh, revealed his text? Oh, yeah, he did, didn't he? Remember when I went out and I said, this text Eric sent me, uh, blah, blah, blah? I think uh, this happened it's after prop, that. It's so I don't see the time and date, whoever sent this screenshot. Yeah. Interesting. And I get that that's a counter of some sort to you. Okay, and I, I've been I've had this argument today. And, and again, this isn't me kissing boot hills or licking boots or whatever here's the fucking thing if he has an issue with you put it in fucking writing be direct when you go out here and you take an aim at crowdfunding you know that's splash damage you're just taking innocent people out shitting all over a crowdfunding you're turning on your platform with your half a million subs and acting like they're not responsible with money you're taking a risk and shit like that it's like if he has an issue with you have an issue with you not everybody in, in crowdfunding, not any and not everybody in crowdfunding, but everybody that's going to eventually be in crowdfunding. There's people probably with a project. They got four pages. They got the money to, to you know, to, to get some artwork done and whatever. And this guy's out here saying, no, nope, that's proof of concept. That's not a real product. 
bitch, proof of concept is what makes a good product. If you had a better concept, you'd have a better product. That it's not product isn't just fucking paper stapled together. It's the fucking concept is the product. That's it. Hmm. I, I I that's my issue with this. And I'm sure this video is just gonna piss me the fuck off even more and say this never happened when there's fucking tapes of it happening. But that's my situation with it. That's me. I, and I don't need to be tied up on fucking Twitter all day over this shit either. Right. You don't have to be. Let's just make fun of uh, Sturgis now. Oh, that EVS is spewing lies. So, of course, he's going along with said lie for I don't know what reason. But Stealth Observer says, no, I was interested in a Glorious Rex, but not anymore. I'm not supporting someone who will compromise the indie scene just to get in bed with EVS. It tells me that you have no integrity and you are not an ally. To which Shane exactly. says, I've never Stealth attached Observer. crowdfunding. Your partner did, remember? Who is Stealth Observer's partner? If you're talking about Eric July, you're incorrect, you're wrong, you're factually wrong, and you need to stop. That's compromising the Sturgis, indie scene. Go fuck See, yourself, the thing is, you Eric is over retard. there doing his own thing, like making millions of dollars Shane, on comics, while your partner... You're factually wrong, Shane. You just proved that you were 100% right. Stealth Observer is, uh, you know, another one of these kind of, like, concern troll, like, uh, you know, internet guy. Like, there are a bunch of reply guys uh, who chase us down. Uh, and I will tell you this. Like, the reason why this has become, like, a real big problem is that Eric's, Eric has guys like Stealth Observer. He's got this retard here. Uh, he's got many other people like this who he sends after us. Uh, and all day long, I mean, you know, all day long, every single fucking day, uh, these guys are in your mentions. In uh, Like, whenever you're mentioned on the internet, these guys are there. They're saying the same thing. I used to support them, but I don't support them anymore. Bunch of guys like that. Uh, Eric July does what people say that I uh, did. Uh, they yeah. say that, you know, they like, Ethan weaponized his fan base. And I'd be like, I did? I didn't do that. Eric does do that. He actually literally does do that. Yeah. Uh, well, he did it thing. from the beginning, though. And at first, I was like, that's kind of smart because these people, hey, people he, didn't really hey, know they were. The verse. They didn't know they were employees at the time. They were just people in the chat, you know, trying to pre-hype Iceland before it launched. And it kind of seemed like smart in a weird way. But now it's just like every time I get attacked by one of these people, I assume like they're somehow working with they have to be why would you do this every single day on behalf of one individual i i have to assume i have to assume they're on some kind of a payroll i have to because it's the same shit every day on behalf of eric i gotta think somebody's paying them because so i mean they're making money somewhere so uh who's paying who's paying these people to sit there and harass annoy irritate denigrate who's paying these people to do that um, it's really weird. They're all, they all have like fake names and everything like this. Uh, stupid. It just does seem like, uh, Eric did say he has PR. Oh, that's interesting. Hmm. That is interesting. So, uh, all right. So it's the same guys every time, same guys. And then Sturgis pretends that like stealth observer is just some random fan. Now Sturgis, you know who this guy is. You know who these people are. Same uh, eight or nine uh, people uh, irritating us all day uh, long on behalf of Eric. And by the way, if uh, it doesn't make me happy, like people are like, uh, you know, Ethan, you should stop uh, talking about Eric July. Well, um, this is not going to make me stop. I'm going to continue with this. This phenomenon is going to be uprooted. I'll talk about it all year, Shane. I feel like this is going to be a Netflix documentary one day. It's, it's, it could be, I guess, but it'd be really boring. I mean, no, it will be, but it, it won't ever be about the books. It'll be about the whole rise and whatever. I, I don't know. It, it's, there's just uh, something here. Like, it, it, it doesn't make sense. Spooky. Dr. Ben says, Imagine your PR guy, is Sturgis. <laughs> Eric head pats him. He head pats him. And that's all Sturgis is looking for. He's just, if it's not money, it's. Eric, tell me I'm doing good. Tell me I'm doing good. And Eric, every now and then, will be like, shout out, shout out. And that's all he's looking for. And Sturgis, for some reason, thinks he's in a position to say, you need to stop that. 
You need to stop that. That's a lie. To somebody like Shane Davis, you think Shane would make this up? I mean, I would, Shane. Like, that's me. Like, I would completely make up a whole thing about how uh, Eric July. Uh, but you wouldn't. You have uh, integrity. You know, you're in, you know, you you witnessed this happening. And you and uh, Yancey both, like, you have been really, really good at keeping your ear to the ground and knowing which way the, uh, wait, which way the wind is blowing with your ear to the ground. That doesn't make no. sense. I wouldn't be the ear to the ground, but no, I get what you're saying. Are we finger on the pulse, maybe I, I don't know, but I, fully I, aware. I mean, in the end, I, I care enough to not care at the same time, though. Like, I, I mean, I'm kind of like hitting it, and then I'm going back to whatever I'm working on. I, I just shit gets. I, I don't want to get wound up on it. Uh, this is the news right now. Um, uh, Brian Dunham says, Ethan, Nick Riccata is look better. He is live right now. Uh, hey. I mean, that's nice. Uh, we could take a look at uh, Nick Riccata and just make sure he's doing okay. Smile on his face. I would love to see that, man. I, I am concerned about him legitimately. I know people are being, uh, especially, they're bullying Nick Riccata, uh, which I think is really weird because he's a likable fellow. Um, but... Oh, uh, don't know him. He is running right. for Congress down in Tejas. Make sure he does look good. You are a Texan. I know you can't watch this show. His eyes still have circles right under them. They're but, a little, uh, if little you are purple. a Texan and you have, but he looks like he put on to, some uh, weight to help out his campaign in any way. Well, I guess you don't have to be Texan. You can retweet his stuff. You can follow good. him. You can watch what he's talking about. He is stirring up some shit down in Texas. Again, a good dude. Solid, uh, solid man. He looks sober. Who has, he uh, sounds really sober. Good ideas and also loves your Second Amendment rights and his own, of course. Go check him out. Shane, he doesn't him, have a whiskey uh, glass. Retweet his stuff hmm. and uh, let's let's start making some alternatives. Uh, or some heard him talk here. about rattling so we're not ice. just selecting the same old fucking idiots that we keep like seeing Nick, over though. and over. Like Nick, I, uh, guy, let's he's, some these he's a super guy here. Holy shit! I feel uh, like Rob everybody Price else says, feels he, what he drinks Herman too much. John Wilkes Booth have in common? They both shot someone in the back of the head in a theater. Damn. Damn. Yeah, Brandon, it has been too long. I'm going to hit you up, brother. I've been, uh, I've been like, really uh, pressed lately. Okay. So I haven't done a bunch of uh, outreach, but I we got to talk, man. Let's, um, I'll, I'll, rem I'll remember to hit you up uh, tomorrow and we'll, we'll chat. Maybe we can, maybe we can do a show or something sometime. Uh, or I can like promote your, can't Please take it. care of yourself, Nick. What, Please. What, what do people even do anymore? Uh, driver's seat says, "Here's to Fanny working at uh, Rolls." All right, hold on a second. We got uh, 2024, dude. An Eric July video here called uh, "Let Me Clarify Some Things." What's up, y'all? I'm just checking in with my channel and other forms of social media since it's been a crazy launch for Yaira, number one. We've hit a million dollars in 24 hours, which broke the ISOM number two record, and I'm so grateful for that. With that being said, before it gets too crazy, I have to clarify some things. For starters, we're getting through the benchmark goals that you all breezed right through. One thing people are excited for is the Yaira statue that gets unlocked should we hit $2 million. Now, Shane, I, I uh, had a PVC statue for Cyberfrog that got unlocked once we hit a million, I think, a million dollars. Cyberfrog 2, Rock Planet. Remember yeah, that? but people got it with the book, right? Isn't that what he's doing? He's no. Doing, uh... I, think, I think he's just unlocking the fact that he'll make a statue. What? That he'll <laughs> sell. What? Who gives a fuck? What are you talking about? No, I... I don't think people are getting this. I, I might be wrong, and maybe I'm misunderstanding. Chad, am I right? The statue is like a pre-order, I think, that he'll do at a later date, is what I heard from another video. It's not tied to the campaign. I I don't understand. Like, I, I okay, and I might be wrong. They're saying, yep, I'm right. Okay, so let's pretend I'm right, just for argument's sake. From the video I saw, it this campaign hits $2 million, then he will go forward to do a pre-order for something that doesn't exist, which is a big deal for him, I guess, on a statue. So, like, he somehow... Now, I don't know if some people misunderstand that, like you just did, and they think they're getting a fucking statue with this book. <laughs> but that's not what's happening. He's not doing what you did. By the way, Ripperverse Goalpost says that's what it'd be. 
I know you're trolling Rip Reverse Gold Post. I think I figured you out. Um, and by the way, keep that information coming. Uh, uh, anyway, I'm pretty sure that you're trolling full time. This whole like, that's what it be thing and that funny video and the funny video yesterday. You're not, you're not really a ripetard, are you? I think you're probably a normal person. Uh, holy shit. All right, so um, if you get Eric July to $2 million, mm -hmm. he's going to decide to make a statue. Why doesn't he just make the statue anyway? Why wouldn't you? Why do you need to get to $2 million in sales on this campaign in order for him to make a completely separate campaign in making statues? I don't get that. I could take a stab at it. If I had to like run, you know, process of elimination on his thinking, it would be that he didn't go, he didn't go into this knowing if the hype was really going to be there. If, um, you know, cause there had been talk about his projection standard attrition, whatever you want to call it, how every campaign was going down. Why would he have a Yairus statue? If it's, if you're looking at the numbers that it was possible that Yaira would come in under a million. Oh, so like, oh, I don't have enough fans to make a Yaira statue. Like, yeah, like, what if he felt like that? Which is odd, because he could hit $2 million on this, commit to doing the statue, then people get the book, decide they don't like the character, and now you're stuck selling a statue. Oh. Now he's got an interesting way of doing business. 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 All right, here we go. Dollars in sales. This is not something that we already have ready. Though we've had some interesting conversations about this, do not anticipate that this would be added to the campaign and shipped with the campaign item. He has had some interesting conversations about this, Shane. With who? <clears throat> He's had some interesting conversations, I, you know, um, about this. Conversations. <laughs> All right. Do conversations involve uh, asking somebody to do some work, uh, and then just kind of being like, uh, eh, "Never mind. I'm not gonna fucking get into okay. this." You know. We're just saying that we would commit to putting one out, and it's something that would be delivered at a much later date. I'm not. What the hell are you talking about? What is this? What is he talking about? If you get me to two million dollars, look at yo, what's the head back? How do you who talks like this? Shane Davis. <laughs> Shane Davis, how are you? It's me, the Van Skyver. Shane Davis. Who does that? <laughs> why is it always why does he talk like that? I don't get it. I don't know. I don't I don't know. I don't know. I don't this know. is his ripopotamus face. This is one. Imagine like, if I went out there and I was like, guys, if you get me Inglorious Rex to this number, I promise to sell you another Inglorious Rex project product or project. It's like people are nuts. I, I mean, I guess it makes sense, but I I would still wait to see what people thought about it before I move forward with something that risky. I mean, when you did cyber, when you were campaigning Blood Honey. And you, uh -huh. you're hitting numbers and, you know, first day launch and all that shit. Were you like, oh, boy, oh, boy, guess what, guys? Stretch goal, I'm going to make action figures. No, it was like you you had the book in people's hands. They kind of knew the product, right? You were yeah. in Wreck Planet. There was a lot of interest in the character. And you're like, okay, I'm going to crowdfund some action figures. Yeah, but exactly. He, yeah. It wasn't, like, uh, it wasn't like I was like, well, it depends on how this campaign does. I felt some energy for Rec Planet. I knew when we launched Rec Planet that it was a million dollar book. I said that. I said uh, I can feel it. I can feel that this is it's really good. We're and then uh, Rec Planet was so successful. I was like, let's go ahead and do because uh, I mean you never know. You don't know what's gonna happen. Um, let's get the action figures done since uh, there still is that buzz out there. We did it. We did the action figures. Thank God that we got that done. Um, you never know. You never know that ever things don't last forever, Shane. You know, my next uh, cyber fraud campaign could make like five thousand dollars. You don't know, and it probably will after this. After trash cast, it probably will. Uh, but uh, no, you don't know. So uh, you know, strike while the iron's hot, as it were. Um, but I, I can't imagine saying, 
if you give me more money, I will I will commit to eventually making more things for you to buy. Okay, how do you feel about that? Well, what if I don't give you any money? Well, then I will not commit to giving you more things to buy. Well, that's fine, asshole, because I wasn't buying him anyway. You see, you see how this conversation might I, go? I, that's why it kind of struck me as weird. I would just say I would do it. I don't know if I would go out there saying like, hey, like, yeah. I just either would do it. I wouldn't tie it. Like, imagine like it, your stretch goal is to make another way to take your money. Yeah. And people like this. I think they're, oh my God. Uh, do yeah, they I like can't. it? I don't know if people are into money. this. I mean, why Why would you is be hyped gonna, for is, a statue of a character that you have yet really gotten any information about? That movie trailer really makes you want that statue? No, the movie tra uh, trailer makes me want to end my own life. Um, the movie trailer was really horrible. And it made me just go, I don't know what <laughs> we're doing. That. There have been a few moments in Comics Gate, like in indie comics, where I'm like, this is just a fucking, all of it's a grift. I got to, you know, this is bullshit. I got to stop. I got to get away from people. A um, few moments like that. A few moments where I was just uh, overwhelmed with depression because of the product that other people were putting out that I supported. And I'd be like, uh, I got it. I got it. I, I quit. Uh, that was one of them. I seen that trailer was just like, uh, this sucks, man. Um, but a uh, statue could be good, I guess. I hope it doesn't look like that actress. What if it looks like the actress? What if he's actually going to get somebody to carve that actress? Because that sounds like something he would do. Uh, Maybe you should mention. just do a Yaira doll where you pull the string and she says, adopt or die, or it's chilled. Adopt or die. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I mean that would go further. I think you know maybe a button on the statue with sound bites. You know. Mm -hmm. All right, let me see. This is a short video, fortunately. Not going to say that the pre-order for it couldn't possibly be announced before this campaign ends, but we're not promising that. But whatever what, we do, what put do up for sale. <laughs> what did he just say? I don't know. That's my. <laughs> Give it a go. Oh. For it couldn't possibly out and it's something that would be delivered i hate that look to the side it's something that would be delivered i hate that look. we're just saying that we would commit to putting one out and it's something that would be see that look to the side i don't like that putting one out and it's something that would be like delivered at a much later date i'm not going to say what does that mean much later date we could all none of this makes any sense at all dude just make something as a gift Make something as a gift to the people who are paying you already. If you get us to two million, we're gonna add a little, you know, ISOM figurine to your orders. Why wouldn't you say that? Keychain something. Yeah. Nah. If we get us to this level, then we're we're gonna probably commit at a later date to. Dude, you might not be here at a later date that the pre-order for it couldn't possibly be announced before this campaign ends but we're not okay the pre-order could be announced before this campaign ends not promising that but what... we're not promising that we're not promising that there'll be a pre-order for the statue before the campaign ends what ever we do put up for sale is gonna be legit. Secondly, I want to clarify some things about the Yaira number one campaign trailer. It's not a trailer for an upcoming show or film that's in the works. This yeah, no kidding, dude. Can you imagine if this was a show that was in the works? Oh, I think I know. I think he leans in on the Mr. H shit here. Yep, was done specifically to promote the comic book and build some hype around it. It was shot on what is effectively a shoestring budget and it only took us a day to shoot. There were a lot of favors called in to make... You know, what if like, uh, what if this was widely... What if people were like, uh, wow, like that was incredible. That, what, that was amazing. Would Eric still be like, yeah, you know, running it down? Like just kind of like, yeah, well, uh, what do you call this when it's like... Uh, you're sitting well, there it's like kind of defensive and mocking anybody criticizing it in a weird way by bringing up a shoestring budget like uh, and stuff like that. It's like I don't know why. I mean, why would it was done on a shoestring budget in a day? Well, what you're telling me is that you spent no money on it. You did it real quick. You rushed it out. Why? I would say you're better off with just taking that money and buying a shoestring. Uh, like, 
Yes. Why why uh, do this at all? Why would you make this if uh, you weren't going to even try? And it's one of those things that's like, uh, you know, um, it's cope. This is literally cope is what Well, he's is. making an excuse. It's cope. Yeah, this is yeah. coping and seething right now. Oh, I, I didn't even try. Like, we didn't spend any money on it. And if you're making fun of it, that's what... Why, like if nobody was making fun of it, and by the way, Ripaverse uh, Studios, their their Twitter account, they pulled this down off their Twitter page. They pulled the. Uh, tra Why would you pull this down? Why would you do that? Coping and seething. Like if you're making fun of us, like don't even bother because we didn't even try. We're only pretending to be retarded. You know, like we didn't. Uh, you know, this isn't our best effort. Why would you say that? this happen and to put this into perspective it costs only a fraction of what we've spent on our animations some people so it's like uh we didn't waste any money on this if you're worried see that again it's another way of saying this is shit uh and uh we hear you saying that it's shit so heads up like we didn't spend any money on it anyway and no time we didn't even really try and let's just pretend it never happened it's kind of like you lose in like a game or something basketball or something you go i wasn't even trying yeah, I was tired and like, uh, you know, I my foot cramps. hurts, cramps, <laughs> yeah. And I wasn't really trying and I didn't want to play anyway. I was just, you know. I have helping. the flu. <laughs> Whatever. Jesus. People have mistakenly assumed that this is a glimpse of something that's going to be longer form. But this is a... Eric, nobody assumes that. Like, you're, maybe Sturgis might assume that. Sturgis might have assumed that this would be a glimpse of something longer form. And by the way, I don't put it past you. I do believe. No, 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 no. I, I, the logical person that watched this and you get to the after credit scene before you see the character in her costume, it, it makes, it's, it, that was the one thing they did that had a correct effect. It made you think there would be more because you never premiered the character in her costume until the end credit scene. I could see why people would think that. Yeah. And to say that they're wrong, then no, that was crafted to make people think there's more. That's bullshit. Yep, I agree. A trailer for a comic book, not a trailer for something longer form. We go about this completely differently if this was a film or a show, regardless of the budget. I love for us to do longer form animations and live actions and run it through our upcoming Ripperverse app. We have a lot of ideas in that regards, but at that point, it's a different ball game because then we're not making something that's for comic book hype, we'd be making something that's a little more self-contained and meant to stand on its own. Some people have said, if Hollywood put this out, you look at it differently. Well, yes, I know I would. This is cope. All of this is cope, man. How embarrassed are you, Eric, of this? And you should be like everybody who isn't like, you know, um, blowing you is making fun of this. This is all huge cope. Oh, you know, listen, if we, if this were going to be a, it's not, le it's not going to, but if it were like, you know, we would have approached it completely differently. We would, why would you, uh, why would you, I would have tried if I knew it mattered. <laughs> Shut up and let Eric cope, says Awazaro. <laughs> All right, keep coping, Eric. This is fun. Like, this is, this is precious. I love that you know that this sucks. I love it. Considering the context, a more accurate comparison would be, well, other comic book trailers. I've seen some comments say that this was like CWS from people that enjoyed it and maybe some that didn't enjoy it as well. It's a compliment either way for us because that's a network connected to a billion dollar corporate entity and multiple billion dollar corporate entities. What we pay to make this happen, though, probably doesn't even cover the catering budget for one of their shows. Don't worry, guys. How is that a compliment when you talk shit about Batwoman every fucking episode? Uh, you get it? Like, you, you get, like, that's what I'm saying. Like, how, how is that a compliment? Like, you know, like, it's, it's clearly a, aimed at you because you talk shit about CW shows. Yeah, and, and, sir, like, let me just say this one more time. Eric, you are as far away from, in terms of, like, scope ability, talent, like, you know, storytelling, like, actual, like, uh, effectiveness at storytelling, um, you know, like if, uh, CW were the moon, 
you and your thing would be a marble. You understand? You are nowhere near your talent and ability. Uh, that The production value on that, no matter how much you spend on it, is nowhere near CW. Nowhere near. And neither are your comics. Shane, I had to say this earlier today because these guys dunk on like Mags Visaggio. And I had to say, Mags Visaggio is a better writer than Eric July. That's... And everybody in the chat went, dang. You want to know why, though? Well, go ahead. Tell them why. There possibly could be more talent there, but there's somebody at a company telling Mags to some level what they can and can't do in a script. And Mags is listening. Mags is actually taking classes with Scott Snyder. Mags has written uh, many, many, many comics by himself. Uh, he has uh, created a bunch of different titles, and he's he's writing them. He's listening for advice. He's trying desperately to get better. Um, Eric's just trying to get rich, you know? So, I mean, they, you know, and that's fine. That's like a fine thing. I support that idea. But, you know, the idea that, like, uh, Eric could look down on Mags, I mean, only socially, uh, because Mags is a much better creator than Eric. Much better. Either way, it was a great experience. I learned so much about everything from stunts and how to actually run a set. I've been kicking some ideas around in ways that we can and will improve. We're ambitious and we want to keep pushing the boundaries, trying new things, actually giving it a shot. You all see that and that's why all- I, I know and what's terrible is people are gonna pay you and let you hey, give- hey, Hang yeah. on, he fucked up. He said we gave it a shot. You just said it didn't, you weren't even trying. He's coping. This is no, no. Cope. He said two different things in this video. He said he wasn't even trying. It wasn't real. It was a shoestring budget. And then he's like, "But at least we gave it a shot." Look at the micro expression here. Look at the pain on his face. <clears throat> uh, you tried and failed. And the the funny thing is, the the best thing is that you released the making of video because you probably shouldn't have done that. Yeah, you weren't like, trying when we see all those people standing around, more people behind the camera than in front of the camera in a crowd scene. It's like, that wasn't, you know, you weren't, you know, there wasn't guys hooked up to cables and cutting divots in the car frame so it would buckle when they fall into it. You weren't trying at all, were you? Mm. You, you didn't have like uh, safety pads for people to land. I mean, that. That was legit. Those were real cameras. You know, the every the Saska sisters wasn't your way to they know how to film something, so at least it would get filmed whether it was good or not. That wasn't trying at all, was it? It's I, I just don't like this is that double speak that that I can't stand from his base. Just like, mm. oh, he didn't attack Ralph, but he sure as shit did in writing. I can show you. And that's not even that's the video. It's the same thing. He did it in the same video. Like, I wasn't really trying, but at least I gave it a shot. Those are the same fucking thing. Like, or yeah. completely different. I mean, you, you, if you're given a shot, you're trying. Everybody got free Subway. So that's good. Uh, Alfie Ortiz says, show us then. He already did. Showed it at the beginning of the uh, segment here. I'm saying All Subway right. loved it. Yeah. I meant to say that this was like CWS from people that enjoyed it and maybe some that didn't enjoy it as well. It was not CWS. Oh my God. So, it's a compliment either way for us because that's a network connected to a billion dollar corporate entity and multiple billion dollar corporate entities. What we pay to make this happen though, probably doesn't even cover the catering budget for one of their shows. Either way, it was a great experience. I learned so much about everything from stunts and how to actually run a set. I've been kicking some ideas around in ways that we can and will improve. We're ambitious and we want to keep pushing the boundaries, trying new things. Eric, you'll never improve because you're not interested in learning. Wait, he just, again, he said, he said they have no intentions to do any live action stuff. That's not what this was. But then he's like, I learned a bunch of stuff and I will improve on yeah. what? Making film? Yeah, he's going like, to keep doing it. Yeah, of course. Yeah, it's like the double speak, the lie. We weren't trying. We're not doing that. But I learned a lot about filming and stunts and we'll improve when I do this again or Yaira live action is a thing. Like, just fucking be honest you're i mean why go out here you're asking people to buy the fucking book be honest yeah like there, i mean you know being a salesman doesn't mean being a liar 
I mean, you could be an honest salesman if your product is solid. You just say, mm -hmm. my fucking product's good. Go buy my product. Look how good it is. The guy that's a dishonest salesman has a shit product. And look, he, the guy's like, lie. I mean, two or three lies in this already. Actually giving it a shot. You all see that? And that's why all of our releases are like these big events. Of course, whether you like it or not, you're free to criticize. Seeing people talk about this that have never really shown interest in comics, newbies. He is something else, isn't he? I'll tell you. He, he is absolutely extraordinary. Those people, you're free to criticize. It's, that's good. We're cool. I'm cool with that. I'm cool. But people who are criticizing have never shown interest before in comics or movies. They're all newbies. They don't even know. It's personal. Like, they're after me. These people don't even know what they're talking about, the people who are criticizing. He is a fucking wreck inside. Were Why people you... free to criticize Isom? What a fucking nightmare, dude. That's awesome. We hope that you stick around. But if not, that's fine too. I just didn't want people to get their hopes up and think that this was part of something that's on the way. Again, guys, thanks so much for the love that you have shown. And I can't wait for you all to read Yaira number one. What's up, Yaira? That was extraordinary. <laughs> yeah, that was like, that was amazing, Shane. That was a yep. lot of coping and seething there. There again, um, that was a big difference between people criticizing his book, right? You're free to criticize. Mm-hmm. You're free to criticize. And, you know, listen, a lot of these people, they don't know what they're talking about. They're not even fans, you know, blah, blah, blah. I mean, just go through there. The double speak, the, the way he talks is infuriating. I don't like him. Uh, boy, I really don't like him. Uh, let's critique his critique, says Apple Pitts. Yeah, this is just a critique of a critique. I found your critique wanting. I found it dog shit. Uh, he was devastated inside, says mind and body. That was crazy, He did man. say he's moving differently. Maybe you're seeing it. Yeah. I am seeing it different. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know what to say. Yeah, so that's the first time you saw that? Yeah. Isn't that... That's a weird concept right like let me as a stretch goal give me money and once we hit another level i'm gonna come up with a new way to sell you the same character you've unlocked another way to purchase yeah of course yeah, what a I, I mean I, I don't i i it part of me is like yeah no that's i guess good business in a weird way i guess but again like crowdfunding and and I, this is what I tell people is like so important about crowdfunding is we are giving you more the more money we raise. The more money we raise, I mean, like I think Rec Planet was like a kind of a benchmark that a lot of people can never surpass with the the Cyber Frog PVC that you gave with just a single book backing. I mean, like it was insane when you look back at it. Hmm. I don't know if anybody will ever do anything like that again. Um, <clears throat> but I mean, this guy. Instead, it's like, I'll make a $200 statue you guys can buy. Congratulations, guys. Now you can buy a $200 statue. Yeah, it's like, uh, you know, it seems like more of a gift to himself than anyone else. Uh, let me see some super chats here. Uh, uh, Black Riding Hood companion book, Dark Horse Man. So is uh, Angus Fungus. Uh, John W. Smokes Jr. If you make your Gary Rod Frogs book... 20 bucks will buy or both uh $50. Also, what's up with Devil Snuffleupagus book? A uh, elephant. Yeah, wait and see. Dark Low Comics says Sturgis always says, even those who disagree with me. Val says there are two things worse than the Yara trailer. Isom number one and somehow two was worse. Isom did shit fast though. Still felt like it got scammed out of $5. Dark uh, Glow Comics says Eric, proof of concept, these nuts, ho. Uh, P. Callen says, Eric's band of retards fear me on Twitter. Uh, Rothgard the Dane says, they believe that the money earned on a campaign is all profit. They need to learn some economics. Wolf Rose says, send Nick a Baconator. I would love to. Uh, Izzy Mass, hail from Malaysia. Question to Shane. I know CG Triple Threat is Malin's campaign. I backed the trip to combo. It does the Indigo Go Volume 1 book have Supplemental Volume 1. Hang on, Triptych Combo does IG Volume 1. 
No. Um, if you're wanting any of the supplementals, especially for Inglorious Rex, um, we do have it as add-ons on this campaign that comes down in two days. If you go, it's in the add-ons though. So once you've already grabbed your item in the checkout, check the add in the add-ons. We have very little of volume one supplemental. They're almost out. So if you're wanting to grab one, grab it now. So there you go. Nice. Um Okay. Uh sorry, it's fungus. Will the neighbors allow you to erect a full size UVS statue in the front yard like Venus as a water feature? Because that is crowdfundable. Wow. Rashma Tarif says a fraction of means nothing. Seven eighths is a fraction. Two hundred watt studio pull string on Yiradol. Adopt me or die. Thanks for the hats up. Tanks for the hats up. Took it like a chomp. Chilled. Uh, Two hundred watt studio. Um, uh, pulling a string. Oh, I read that one. Hold on. Uh, Joseph Fazio never thought Ed Wood could be topped as the worst. Eric Wimberg. E, you still going? You legend. Yeah, I'm almost done here. We're gonna go. Buddha Bear says, can we get some fire tonight to mange merch? Um, maybe Shane wants to do a sale tomorrow with me. Uncapped Turtle says, sent you an XDM with a video clip that explains why Geeks and Gamers Friday Night Tights won't criticize Eric Do Lie. The Warehouse Zone. Uh, one, uh, 90 seconds. Uh, Uncapped Turtle, I'll show it tomorrow. On tomorrow's show. Yeah. Uh, um, we've been going for five and a half hours. More than that. I can't believe it. It didn't feel like it at all. Are you going to stream Saturday? I don't know why. Uh, because I'm closing my campaign Saturday. I was gonna pop on with you if uh that was cool. Um, Saturday. Yeah, dude, I'll do it specifically for you. All right, cool, 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 cool. But I'll definitely be on Saturday. I actually have some some work happening in the house tomorrow, so uh, I don't know how noisy it'll be. But you usually stream at night, so it won't be too bad. Yeah, I'll take care. <clears throat> Shane, watch I'm this. actually, I'm actually. It looks so good. It's not fun. It looks good. Yeah. It looks like uh, the background, like his colors really mesh well with the background and everything. That's um, really tricky to do. The 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 um, rim lighting, reflective light, you know, getting the background and the main figure to fit together. Yeah, yeah it works for a while. Looks great. It actually kind of reminds me also of Kyle's color palette, which is really cool to see That's that. That's a good thing pulled into 3d you know what i mean yeah all right everybody we love you we'll see you tomorrow with another video have a great night just sit right back and you hear a tale a tale or a painful stream the start the from this just to show a poor time she the captain back some of his friends and somewhere a little beer the old dance happy on the floor and mad came a poor and Matt came aboard. The weather was getting bad that night and Matt was start a fight. The captain lost the string control. The ship sank and broke. The ship sank and broke. The fight continued the shore of the shark shattered the stream. With Matt back and the sky grew The leader and his the youth to win and a group of funny old good sins here on my five They're fighting me. I, I'm not fighting Matt. And I had to tell him a million times, I'm not fighting you. You understand? I'm not fucking fighting you. Not at all. Like that. And he wouldn't listen. He keeps doing it. I just want You're peace. Asking me these I just want peace. How hard, hard is it to just like, sit well, in a... Accuse me of fighting... How hard is it? You're fighting Anna all the time. Fucking starts with me. So don't let's hear you see the time you can survive. You probably got to start to die when my son survives.